Kiss 206, XM 103. The show is back. With that, we say good morning to Jim Brewer. Good morning. N nice and early. I like this. Huh? I like it. I know. So. You know. Yes. I saw Chelsea Handler during the World Series, and I didn't know it was her. What do you and mean? She was, she was sitting. I got to my seats. Yeah. And then right in front of me was uh, a cute woman. Yeah. And uh, I was kind of look at her, and she looked right at me, and <sighs> she went, hi, Jim. Oh, wow. And I I thought, no, I was with my wife, and I went, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice. Cute <laughs> woman. <laughs> this cute little fan. Right. And then, uh, <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. And then, and then uh, my wife turned to me. She's like, you know that's Chelsea, right? I went, who's Chelsea? She went, Chelsea Handler. I went, oh, oh, shoot. Now I feel stupid. Yeah. Because I looked at her like, I did one of those, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. You recognize me from something. <laughs> <laughs> but she was, re she looked really. She's pretty sexy. She was really cute. I didn't see her. It was freezing out, so I only saw her little baseball hat. And I, yeah. She, she was, was really pretty. She has uh, nice tits. I'm sure she does. Uh, the only reason I say it like Are that. Are they real? She brags about it in the Chelsea Handler show that I finally saw on Netflix. But on her Instagram, she shows them all the time. I know, and she brags. She brags. She goes, I know I have nice tits. Are they real? Yeah. Yes, they're, they're real. Lovely. And they're, they're lovely. She, uh, huh. I was going in a cab yesterday. It's funny. Passing, like, the Viacom building in the, in the 40s. And that, the, all the Times Square is is these giant video screens now. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty cool. Like, ones that I haven't seen, you know, and I, and I Big Apple. <laughs> so uh, I, I just haven't seen that some of these are massive, and yeah. it was, they were showing Chelsea. Yeah. So I'm li literally looking at a 70 foot fucking version of Chelsea Handler. It's just kind of promoting her. Sure. And she looked good that big. Yeah, they're pretty Very much sexy. just taking over every side of a building now. Yeah. It's not even billboards. There's just the whole side of a building they're making into screens. It's, it's really weird where it's heading. It's like, wild. Everything is going to be a screen sooner or later. I'm, just, I'm waiting for that technology for your home. Yep. Uh, imagine just taking one of your walls <laughs> and, and making that your TV. Why, what are we waiting for? Well, one of your walls. The other side will have cameras. Your other side will have cameras on it. So you can just flip that switch, and all of a sudden you have no wall. You're just looking outside because mm. you have a, a camera. Is wow, there, that's not so. That's what's going to happen. Is there private companies that can like set up your wall as a TV? Just... Not yet, but I think they're getting there, and they're going to do it on planes, so you can see the outside. So it's like, it would be oh, that... come on, yeah, yeah, eventually, sure. That's crazy. Sure, if you want it. That's nuts. Yeah, I'm Good working man. on a company that does that. Are you? Wow. I have a driver so far. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I, did. I had a nice. driver. <laughs> so I noticed on Twitter, uh, a lot of people saw the first episode of OJ versus the people, or Pe people, the people, versus people, OJ uh, people versus OJ yeah. Simpson, and uh, some didn't like the first episode. Sure, I, I got to tell you, you got to hang in there. It's great. You so got to hang in there. No, no, no. It's about. It's just a. It's a, it's, it's based like on actors. Every, oh yeah, yeah, but it's it's very good, and it's all the behind the scenes stuff. See, I'm out. Why are I, you I thought, out? I, I thought I would be too. I thought I would be really? too. Really? Yes. You're not a big fan of uh, pop culture or something. No, no, I am, but like something. once I, I know what OJ looks like. Well, it's. Uh, uh, I, I lived it. I don't need to. That's why it's so cool because it brings you right back, and they're using some old footage. Like Tom Brokaw and uh, Peter Jennings and uh, some Larry King on the TVs in the background and everyone watching, like the, the Bronco chase. Here's what I want to know. Who gets the cast for all these shows? Well, uh, The actors? Sure. FX? Sure. So it, does, like, Nicole Kidman's family get anything? No. But oh. then again, she, uh... That's a good question. That's the part that bothers me. Like, what, uh, so let, let's say your family, someone in your family's murdered. Jesus. Now Hollywood's doing a show on it. Oh, this is a great story. Let's make it ten... Let's let's all make billions of dollars what? off this chick getting slayed. Well, I, we talked about it yesterday. They don't even show Ron Goldman. They, it's this this whole miniseries is barely about the Ron Goldman, who was also murdered. But it was day. all. I, I tell you, Cuba Gooding's answer was very it. interesting, though. And he, I think he was right. He said that they 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 are not doing any backstories. He said they're only focusing on the trial mm -hmm. and the events surrounding the trial. They're not doing Ron's private life. He said they didn't. That, he said that would be. They thought that would have been explained. still. But imagine Jimbo. Imagine you're. Your your mother, someone getting slayed, and now Hollywood's making a show on it. You yeah. don't think you're worth at least 
fifty percent of that money? Yeah, because it's your life, I, and I'm now you sure got to relive. You got to relive watching someone get slayed. I might, just need to clarify one. Yeah, thing. please. Oh. This is what I want to do. Nicole Kidman was not murdered. By oh, I didn't catch that either. Jesus. Yeah. Whatever. What, what, Nicole whatever. Brown. No, Simpson. Nicole <laughs> Brown. <Simpson. laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't even know the person's name. <laughs> oh, he he knows what the fuck I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> don't make me come down there for you, ain't it, tough guy? <laughs> but you're like, you're yeah, they need respect. The super across the way. You got it, punk. None of us caught that. No, you're fighting the cause for Nicole. I just kept going. Oh, yeah. She had to fuck Tom Cruise. <laughs> right. She That's deserves right. millions. I was just gonna say, if you ran all of the... Ireland, all of Australia, <laughs> we've all heard the rumors about Tom Cruise. And... Eric and I are texting back and forth. Do we say something? Do we yeah, not say, say something? Why wouldn't you say something? What's the question? <laughs> It's, a, it's very me. rare that we can throw Brewer on the She's spot. a great actress. <laughs> and she's alive. Why wouldn't yeah. they pay her? <laughs> uh, it's uh, ridiculous. Uh, Fuck Hollywood. Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. plays OJ. He, he plays him very well. He was in here yesterday promoting it. Yeah. And, uh, I, I mean, John Travolta is uh, Robert Shapiro. When he first appears, it's a little strange. I'm not going to lie to you, but Jimmy said he likes. Love you now him. like his performance as uh, Shapiro. I love him. I love everyone in this, and I can't believe I do. I'm just I, for some reason it got me. Sometimes the series gets you, it doesn't get you. Knowing it's ten episodes only helps mm -hmm. because you can commit to something knowing I see the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm I'm bummed that I'm actually on episode six. I wish there was more. Yeah. I really love it. Supposedly they're going to release more uh, on the media site. So, yeah, I, I, watched, I watched all six. There's Travolta and Shapiro. It just brings you back, uh, Brewer, because we all lived through that. I don't give a shit. If I'm at, <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? If, if I'm at a red light, yeah. some fucker put. <laughs> Wow, dude. What what year is that Lamborghini? It's a new one. I just got off this new series about fucking OJ slaying that chicken shit and make billions. That was my sister, you fuck. As Travolta flies away in his plane, fuck him. Maybe they gave maybe they gave the family some money. Maybe. Well, that's all I want to know. Maybe they're sharing they, in the profits. If they did, I'd take it all back. I doubt they did. Mm. Let's I did, be honest. I, I doubt. It's a crime story. Yeah. And it's about mostly the attorneys and, and OJ and the trial. Those so are, I doubt it. The, the lady that plays Marsha Clark, I should know her name by now. She's Paulson, wonderful. Sarah Paulson's Paulson's great. Great. Yeah. She's wonderful and, and Darden is amazing and and the guy plays Johnny Cochran perfectly. But don't forget that every story, like whether it's 9-11 or World War II or Vietnam, there's so many tragic stories that are made into movies. It, like I, I, the, the fact that they're not exploiting and implying that Ron was fucking Nicole, like they're not getting seedy with it. They're legitimately, I think, trying to only stick with the trial. Yeah. Uh, I would love to have seen the behind, believe the sleazy or God, I would have been, I would have been, you would have, been yeah. You would have been uh, all in with yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I like it. Uh, some of the people on Twitter didn't really dig the first yeah. episode. I, w I would suggest you definitely, uh, you know, give it two episodes. And we're not we're not getting any money from this. <laughs> we just like this well, that's one. That's not starting one. I'm like, oh, we just, shoot, maybe they're sponsoring. No, it, we, we just like they're this throwing one. Some cash. No, no, I'm getting something. They're, they're sending me a little something. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm getting something from getting the family. A shirt from the family of the victims. They're paying me actually. So <laughs> <it's odd. laughs> I, I, I think the reason why I like it so much it just brings you right back because that whole thing was just nuts. It was everything. That that trial was on TV every every single moment of the day, remember? One of my favorite comedy bits ever written. Do you know, and sense. Jim knows Rick Chrome. Oh, yeah. Rick, I didn't know you were going there. Rick Chrome. Did, is a, he was a host of The Cellar for many years, and there's a piano there, and Rick is a, a great writer of musicals. He's really a talented dude. Yeah. But he sang a song about O.J. Simpson, and it was uh, I Need My O.J. Cause the trial was obsessing all our lives. It was so fucking great. I actually made him give me a cassette tape of it. Really? It's one of my favorite things anyone's ever done. Is he still around? Rick, yeah, I saw him the other night. He's yeah, he was, he's teaching classes. He teaches one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. He's, he's, he's yeah, really yeah. good. But, I mean, it's, um, I can't believe that's 20 years ago. It's more, well, yeah, but even more, I guess, at this yeah. point. But, yeah, I, I, we like it, whatever. And, and you know what? They're making the lawyers, this is what I like about it. All the lawyers are just guys doing their jobs. Like, Marsha Clark's doing her job. And they're showing them as people. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Johnny Cochran I always hated. But then when you when you see him in this light, you're like, all right, he was just a, a lawyer who was a prosecutor and then became a defender and he fought for black causes and this is how he did this case. It was, it, there was nothing there, hateable about it. Uh, who who among the lawyers thought that O.J. was guilty, you think? I'm sure Shapiro did. I, remember he Kardashian, walked, definitely. Kardashian must have. 
What, what, what about, what about uh, like... Um, Anthony Bailey probably Anthony did. Bailey I'm sure Dershowitz knew. I'm sure fucking... Uh, Cochran. Johnny Cochran. I think they all did. They all know, but well, of course... That's the question. You yeah, have plausible deniability did. to yourself. I'm sure. It's your job. Yeah. And if you fuck around, though, but if you... They, these guys have to do it. If you don't do it right, the, the judge will... Uh, you know, you, you'll have, I guess, get sanctioned by the court or whatever. There's a problem. So you have to defend them well. I uh, Someone uh, hit us up on Twitter yesterday saying we should have pushed uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. on uh, whether O.J. was guilty or not. Why? He decided not to answer the question on our show yesterday. He didn't answer? What did he say? He, I don't I don't. It was an answer about... No, he yeah. said that in playing him, he didn't want to make that decision because right. he wanted to, oh. he wanted to keep oh. all play options with both open. motivations, he yeah. said. Yeah, but I, I, I wanted to ask him as a human being, do you think O.J. was guilty? And he didn't really... He well, didn't, he sort he, of answered that. He, he, he said, hinted, I guess, but... Yeah, yeah I've been like, spending seven months working on it and seeing all of the... the uh, I wonder if it's okay if you're black if you could admit that O.J. was guilty. I guess that's where I was going with right. that. Because this was such a black-white thing. Yeah. I mean, you remember when uh, the verdict was read, the, you know, the black people were cheering. They showed this on TV. I remember. And the white people were really mad and, and destroying things. And when, cause we weren't to... destroyed. This. We weren't like when... Huh? That, that's this, the white people don't do not that. Not destroying things. No, just walk like, around, they they just walk around much, bummed out yeah, for a day. They were pretty much. I didn't mean it like that. You're 100 percent right. I meant right. they just their reaction was just throwing stuff right away and just mad. Right. This yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. You're, you're right. I, I understand the. <laughs> then we went right back to helping. That. Right. I this made, is our rate. I made it sound like we were turning over police cars and <laughs> setting them on fire. No. Right. I meant that their reaction was just quick yeah. and over the top. Like what? Really? Fuck. Yeah. I, but it was amazing. I've never seen anything so polarizing. I've never seen uh, a black and white split so uh, down the middle. And people learned a lot about each other. People who th thought they understood coworkers mm. and thought they all knew uh, how each other felt. And they were surprised to see, like, oh, my God, these black people are happy that he got off. Yeah, pause this for a second. So there's a video online. We'll tweet it out. It's called The Look Back at the O.J. Simpson Verdict. Different reactions from different people. They show one room where... A whole bunch of black people are just holding each other's hands right, and just right. waiting and hoping. <laughs> right. That's crazy. Well, it, it became about something completely different. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't about Nicole or right, Ron getting killed. But, right. I mean, after seeing that trial, I mean, uh, well, then there was the glove that didn't fit. And Furman and saying, Furman. nigger. I mean, come on. And he had that history. <laughs> and in this, they're showing you that Darden didn't want to put him on. Right. Darden was smart. He's like, do not put him on. Do not put him on. And fucking Marsha Clark... So it's stupid Muppet hairdo, just bumble through and put him on. <laughs> so just because I was, just because I'm white, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry sure. uh, just because I'm white, I you're right. I uh, I, I saw that I, uh, he was guilty as hell after seeing that trial. I just saw through some of the the missteps of uh, you know. The, the prosecution, but in the end, I'm like, holy fuck, this guy did it. Most black people saw that he did it too. You it think? Was, yes, it was. It was more about just the system and, and like right. when, when he was all of a sudden acquitted and everyone knew he did it. It was almost like, do you see? Like this is how it feels when the system sticks it in your ass, and, no, and, no. and it's that obvious. Interesting, right? Right. You, th you think definitely most people knew he was guilty, but didn't care. Yeah, or just kind of pushed it aside, or, or maybe even like you, know, you convince yourself sometimes. I'm guessing. I'm just going by the conversation that I've had over over. We, the, we, I mean, there was fucking screaming matches at the cellar every night. We were all. It was fun. I mean, it was it was like a great, you know, little mini trials as it was. <laughs> mini trial. <laughs> it's always dissolved into your act stinks. I don't know how that would always happen. <laughs> they would attack your act. Oh, of course. that's hilarious. We would always. Uh, but but you know, you you talk about it, and you hear enough of the same shit from enough of the same people, different people. Yeah. And you're like, all right, it is about something different. Let me let me see just a little bit of this with this video, and we'll tweet it out. Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles, in the matter of the Fingers people crossed, of California, holding hands. Mrs. Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA 097 211. We, the jury in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of <laughs> Wow. Yeah, black people were going crazy, They're crazy celebrating. Going nuts. They just won the Super Bowl. Yeah. They're going nuts. 
But hands in the air, screaming, jumping up and down. We, we, we should, horses. They scared the horses I, outside the courtroom. I, well, the horses didn't believe. They were like, you think he's not guilty? <laughs> Even the horses fucking knew he was guilty. We should edit some of Brewer's Mets videos. In this. <laughs> the Familia! The Familia! <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I, I, I get annoyed now even watching this, even though, and the white face is being all sad. But I, I, I'll say this. I, I can't, pre I don't know what it's like to be black, but if I was black, seeing that fucking sad white look would have brought me great joy. I think you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those fucking disappointed faces. What's the matter, stupid? Now you know what it's like? I, I, that would have made me happy. Uh, the rumor where it's uh, black and white people is really interesting. The white sure, people are the just The prosecutors holding... are sad. The defendants are happy. <laughs> they're just just—they're holding <laughs> yeah. their faces, and they can't believe it as black people around them are jumping up and uh, down for joy. I was mad at the time. I was like, what the fuck? Couldn't believe it. No. They're shaking their heads. Yeah. And and, and people were shocked at the at the reaction. <laughs> when people went tough for marijuana laws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget Bob Grant on the radio. And it, but people, oh, he was such a racist. Him say Bob Grant going, they will never convict him. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Grant knew it. He was fun, Bob Grant. Marsha Clark's hairdo. I, why do I harp on that? I feel you feel bad for Fred Goldman in the daughter, though. Yeah, she, oh. she's just losing her mind in yeah. the courtroom after the verdict was read. The uh, Marcia Clark when she changed her hairdo yeah. to try to look a little softer and sexier, yeah. and it it barely worked. Well, then they show you the beginning of when they were doing these like little tests and focus groups. And Marcia Clark, they just hated her. They hated her. Cochran was was a very yeah. smooth, good lawyer. Crazy. Anyway, I uh, uh, I uh, I like uh, I like the OJ. Ah, oh, reaction just annoyed me people, all over again. People versus OJ Simpson on uh, on uh, FX. Make it a little warmer in here. It's fucking it's cold. They're cold. Yeah, blowing on my little nipples. You getting old, Jimmy? Yes, I am. That's what happens when you get old. It is. You know. Like, a, where's my sweater? <laughs> <laughs> See how I sit by the heater. Uh, TMZ recently covered Nicole's death, probably because this this miniseries yeah, was just coming got out. Let's say hi to Frank in the Bronx. Frank. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Oh, Frank. Hello. I hope Dad's doing well. Doing all right, buddy. Good, good. Uh, I heard that TMZ just made an announcement that Nicole Kidman's dead, and uh, you <laughs> started the rumor. <laughs> uh, Nicole Kidman. I mean, it's blowing up already. <laughs> outside, the, the paparazzi's going to be outside. The <laughs> I just, I, we just didn't pick up on that. So, um, <laughs> oh, God. Real, real quick, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy, I, I, I used to date a girl, and, and we used to fool around a lot. And every time we were done, she'd sit there and follow my girls for like two hours. They'd say, you know, why do you always do that? She goes, I really miss mine. <laughs> Wait, she would do what? You didn't hear him? She'd, she'd always play with my balinis, my balls, at the end. For two hours. And I'd say, why are you playing with them all the time? What's put you in the you know, infatuation with them. Wait a minute, why, why was she... Hold on, how come you oh, were sitting there... For, wait a minute, no, 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 I don't, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm right. a little lost. I'm following this You now. were sitting there and you'd play... She would play with... We you. just we just finished it, right? And then yeah. for like two hours after, I was <clears throat> playing with my two boys. And I'd say, why? Hey, I've been dating you for six months. Why are you playing with these guys? She goes... Why I are you? you? <laughs> 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 all right, that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Frankie. It was funny listening Frank to him change the, the terms for the boy Bellinis. Eh? Bellinis. Playing with my... <laughs> but it's funny he called his boys ball his balls boys. I, I've read a lot of dirty reviews. There's ads, yeah. and, and there's a website that reviews escorts and stuff. And uh, a lot of times the guys use those terminology. Like, yeah, I laid back, and she was playing with the boys. The boys. The balls. Yeah. I used to don't like to call them balls sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, I haven't I haven't talked to her <laughs> since the mess thing. I just came back from the Mets camp. I heard. Did you really? Yeah. I oh, really like the Mets. What? Like the... it's not even just that. It's it's baseball. I love baseball. The fantasy camp you went to? Yeah. Mets fantasy camp. So you oh, get to in... play a, and everyone there is like, can we, can we make a video together? Like, <laughs> together. I'm like, together? Well, you know, yeah. Oh, no. It's kind of got to like the, like this guy. This guy's a cop, retired cop. He's like, I want to make a video. And I thought he would talk. He just stands there. And he's staring at the camera. He's staring at me. He's, he's just staring at the camera with his mug. Like you're gonna make me famous. Oh, Today was our you're first a much nicer game. person than I am to have done this. By the way. Huh? Oh no, I loved it. I, you talking about the video or this in general? These videos with these fans. Right. The only one I really wanted to make was at the end of each day, uh, which really, 
What are you doing? Start Here's from the beginning. beginning. You, you show Start up. Start from the beginning, yeah. You show up. You, you got to like baseball a lot. Play baseball. Okay. Because you play baseball. Where's fantasy camp? Uh, Port, Port St. Lucie. Okay. Oh, a lot of teams have them. Yeah. So you show up. Most guys are 50s, 60s, 40s. Oh, they just want to play baseball. They just want to play baseball. <laughs> you, get a, you get a couple guys that are really quiet, and they're really there just to slay everyone. Like, they play in their leagues. You know, they, you know, they're in the corner going, yeah, I, I can tell you right now, I'm going to lead the, this week in strikeouts. I'm going to strike out everyone, which is not hard to do because there's a couple, like, you know, there, there may be like a little guy, a little off. <laughs> okay. is, yeah. You know, he's all, he's just off, and he come here every year. And then there's three guys in a chair and a crate, and there's like three chicks. I kind of, I was there was one. All right, so I'm getting ahead of myself. How long is so when you show camp? up? It's a week. You show up a week, and it's like you're a ball player. You show up in the actual locker room, and you share the locker room with ex ball players. So next to me. If you're a Mets fan, I had Turk Wendell. Okay. Remember Turk Wendell? Sure, I did. I, I remember had the Turk. Guy like, had a shark tooth and all that. Yeah, you know, happy jerk. Turk. You know, Turk, happy yeah. Turk must have been to get you. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, you know how like a brewer. You know how fucking bummed out the other guys must have been instead of the kid that's <laughs> fucking off. Yeah, Bob Apodaca has a guy with one leg and his fucking <laughs> sideways Cincinnati Reds hat. That's right. It's a lot. That's so, right. And that's then right. right behind me is Dwight Gooden. And oh, I'm, wow. I'm leaving nice. them. I'm leaving them alone because. People are asking, and they're very patient. I gotta say, yeah. people would just come up there like, "Remember, remember, in nineteen ninety nine, you were you were pitching <laughs> against Griffey, and uh, it was June." Yeah, dude, I remember this. So, what has it? They start telling these cool stories. Like Gooden told me, he was so funny. He's going, you know, man, he's got a lot of kids. He's like, yeah, I think I think he said he had nine kids. Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> if I if I remember nine or five, I think he said nine. nine. <laughs> so, yeah, so he said, the average for those people. <laughs> <laughs> Athletes, I mean. <laughs> so, yeah. How many different mothers? But one of the coolest things, that, which is just funny, makes him human. Yeah. And here's Dwight Good, and I told him, you don't understand. When you pitched, it was like going to watch Tyson fight. People were counting the days. The, the stadium was always packed. So he said, you know, the only time my kid ever sees me pitch is the old-timers game at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. He goes, so this year, my t I think my 10-year-old went to go, he wanted to start pitching. So we're in the yard, and I'm telling him, like, you know, son, you got to, you want to lift your leg higher. And he looks at me and says, Dad, what do you know about pitching? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, and he goes uh, I couldn't believe this kid, Jimmy. I go, no, no, Dad used to pitch. He goes, you mean with the old farts at Yankee Stadium? <laughs> Jesus. And he goes, no, 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 Dad used to pitch. He doesn't He doesn't realize who his father is. So now they start the first game. And the kid is, you know, he's walking some people, whatever. So Doc, is, he said, I, I'm losing my mind. Watch, I can tell by his mechanics. So I, I can't help it. I pull him aside. I'm like, listen, when you're doing this, you want your shoulder. He's Dad. The coach told me how to throw the ball. I think the coach knows what he's talking about. So, I mean, just the humanity of that. I was yeah. howling at that. And then we talked about uh, how they used to fight because the Mets hated the rest of the league and the league hated them. And uh, Turk Wendell never drank, never smoked in anything in his life. I thought he was, I thought he was ape shit nuts. Yeah. Nothing. But he used to have this routine. When he get on the mound, he would look at the outfield, and he give this weird stare at the outfield before he'd pitch the ball, and he'd he'd wind his arm up, and I thought this guy came up. He's like, "What's the routine? <laughs> Why would you do? Why would you stare at the thing? Is that like a superstitious thing?" And he and he goes, "No, I was just making sure the field was ready." <laughs> <laughs> He goes, uh, one game I pitched and the field wasn't ready. And the yeah, center fielder yelled at me. So I always make sure the field is ready before I throw the ball. Because all these years you thought I was superstitious <laughs> staring at the outfield? <laughs> no. <laughs> so you're like, um, so you hang out with the guys and then you pitch. Now you have games and then the games lead to the two best teams. And then the two best teams play in the championship. And then, uh. My team made it to the championship, but we lost. What what other players are down there? 
from the um, Gooden's a great one. That Gooden's, Gooden's a great one. Of course, that's Turk Wendell's a great one. I mean, he was I love Turk yeah. Wendell. Edgardo Alfonso. Yeah, not a big one. Um, any like uh, Felix Mian? I was going to ask any real old timers. John you? Stearns, Ron Swoboda. What about Grody? I like Grody. Um, or Rusty Stop. Grody wasn't there, and uh oh, I, I heard some things about Grody. I, I, Jerry Grody. Just, What's the thing? I'm just saying, like, he hasn't been there, and it's just weird. There's this weird silence where you're like, where's Jerry Grody? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> What's that about? Never, never mind. Uh, I guess, okay. I just how it's dying to see Jerry Grody. <laughs> <laughs> what did Grody do? I, I. What, what's, what are you hearing? I don't what's know. What's the word on the street with he Jerry was, Grody? He wasn't a um, tremendous, uh, um, he wasn't very. Light. Engaging, okay. <laughs> Let's just say that. Right. It wasn't very engaging. Maybe so uh, invite him back. The camp wasn't his thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> from what I hear, like he would be. He probably punch the kid or something. No, from what I hear, he, you know, he'd be the game be playing because they're your coaches, and he'd be on the phone. Yeah. And just be gone the whole time, and they're like Jerry, should we? Put, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make your own lineup. Wow. Yeah, just, I, just he, didn't, he didn't take it too seriously. Yeah, you don't have to take it seriously. And that's the only thing. They bust your... The, the best part of that was at nighttime, the dinners. Oh, do you remember... Uh, oh, God, what's it was there? Remember Anthony Young? I do Butch not. Husky? Butch Husky, yeah, sure. Yeah, that is, Butch yeah. Husky. Um, Anthony Young. Anthony Young was the guy who pitched, like, 24 straight games and and lost. He, like, broke a record for... Jeez, I don't remember. But all his games all. he lost was, like, 2 nothing, one nothing. Okay. Anthony Young, there he is. I sort of remember his face yeah. now that I, I, I'm i looking at him. Yeah. All I'm going to tell you yeah. is i very uncomfortable in the shower with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> very, very all, uncomfortable. Wow. You guys all shower together? Very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, stirred up a few feelings. And I it? literally <laughs> wait. <laughs> That that that's yeah, that's frightening. That's really? frightening that women can handle something like that. <laughs> really? yeah. Yeah. Wow, okay. absolutely frightening. So wait, you the, the same players I, stay the whole week. Same players stay oh. the whole week, and usually by day two, half the camp is gone because they can't. They're they're injured. They're done. They when they leave. Sh- they don't just stay. Well, some they'll stay, but they're. They're Some not of participating them rip anymore. their Achilles. They oh. pull their hamstrings. They get really hurt. You you rip your rotator because these guys. Like, I haven't played baseball since junior high school. So, I, I, I literally started training in October. I, go, I, got a, I literally got a trainer, uh, weights and all that jazz. And these guys show up, and they're playing like they're in the World Series. They haven't, jo- they haven't sprinted, let alone jog, to first base in years. In, in years. And by the second time they're doing it, they're, they're being taken out by stretch. So, so wait a minute. Where, where are you staying? You get in there. What time do you get in? What time do you get up every day? I wouldn't enjoy fantasy camp. Because no, you wouldn't. <laughs> well... Every day you you got to be there by eight o'clock. It opens up at seven. Wait, you got to be there. You have breakfast at seven. What the fuck? Seven fifteen, like eight fifteen. There's a meet team meetings at uh, eight oh, thirty. Team meetings. Ten, ten o'clock. You're playing your first game, uh, and then there's a lunch, and then the afternoon is your second game, and there's double headers all week, and then in the end you play the uh, campers. There's a story. Remember Hojo? Sure. Oh. So there's this guy, this is a camper, has been going to 12 years, strikes out Hojo. Struck him out. <laughs> so all the Mets are just ra- railing him. Oh, you fair, you struck out to a camper, blah, blah, blah. This guy's a great pitcher right there. Okay. Um, Who's that guy? Is he just a, he was on my team. Is he a fantasy guy? Yeah, he was on my team, that guy. All right. Oh. So uh, Hojo waits a whole year. And he wasn't going to come to camp. He comes to camp because he, re- he realized this guy was coming back. Yeah. He waited the whole year just so he could face that pitcher again. And the first pitch he hit over the center field wall. <laughs> so he could, that's how pissed he was from striking out a year before from one of the campers. But how old is Hojo at this point? Uh, you know what? He's 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 like maybe my size. I saw, there was an 86 Mets reunion, and I saw him. He's, I don't know, he's like in his mid, maybe late 50s, 60s. Yeah. Okay. That's funny. So you're up and you're playing. You, you, the camp goes until what time? What time is the game over? Again? You're pretty much done at 3, 4 o'clock. And then, you know, you get ready for dinner and they have banquets at night. Oh, okay. So it's a lot of ball busting. They have, ball, they have a night where they call the uh, kangaroo court. 
and basically what they've been doing, they have people are on every field watching what you're doing and videotaping. So, and then they call you out in front of oh, everyone. That's oh, right. And I, that that was that's hilarious. Kind of, that's funny. I think the name for the segment would be just joshing. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> And so that's the deal. And then you... Uh, you you got to really love baseball. you got to love baseball. And if you like the Mets or whatever team you like, it's so, pretty It's pretty. So then, I loved it. So, I, re- I have been, not, I won't say traumatized, but when I was in junior high, there was a couple kids that sprouted a lot quicker than me and in high school. Sprout. And I didn't make the team. And I was oh. afraid. I made the team, but I didn't make first string. And I was afraid of the ball. So when I played first base and when it bounced, I would turn my head. Yes, was, yes. I was petrified of the ball. And I was also petrified of fast pitching. Yeah, me too. How fast did he pitch? That was the first question I would always ask the, uh, when the pitcher was out there. I think the fastest pitch was in the 60s, maybe 70s. That was that was the championship pitcher. This guy, I wanted his birth certificate checked because you have to be 30. But he was he was throwing heat and curveballs and all this. Wow! But everyone else is like fifty. It's you know it's like playing wiffle ball with a hard ball. Right. I mean, the guy in the mound is sixty years old trying to strike me out. I'm drilling the ball. It's awesome. Do they move the bases in or is it? No, uh, no. You're playing. So let me tell you're you playing something. on a major league field. You hit a ground ball and it takes twenty minutes to get the first. Oh fuck! How you know? about the mound? The mound is the proper length. It's all yeah. I wanted a pitch, but my arm was. Demolished before I even showed up. Yeah, I would have no shot at pitching. I loved it though, man. I freaking love. Are you gonna love... go every year? Oh hell yeah! How I'm many guys? It's how many guys in the thing. outfield? Three, it's regular baseball. Oh, it's regulation. I thought Three guys. Ten guys out there. No, 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 no. How no. many are at the fantasy camp? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably about a hundred. It's probably a hundred. It's in maybe the locker room at the same 12, time? 13, Yeah. And do the outfielders move way in for certain players? Yeah. Way the fuck. Way in, in for certain players, but there was. And is everyone's getting nude in the showers? Not everyone. Well, you have to shower. I, I, would, I, would, I would fucking go. I'd wait till I get back to the hotel. Fuck that. Really? One I, yes. one day Why? I took a shower in there. Like and I was fucking, st- I'm still traumatized. I don't feel like <laughs> pulling my hog out in front of others. Just shower. And, and then you got Anthony Young with his big giant. Holy dick. crow! <laughs> the thing was. <laughs> That thing was. I, th- I thought I was going to call a reptile service. <laughs> I thought I'm something just, escaped. Yeah, just showers. Yeah. I could do it. I, yeah. But I mean, if if I have a little downtime, I'd, I'd go back to the hotel probably. I d- ninety nine point. That's what I did. Yeah, I did. I would do that. Just but to they relax would, a little more. But they got me good. Take a bath. Th- 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 was soak a, night- a little bit. <laughs> wow. You know, light some candles and I like I like baths. Read a book. I have no problem admitting I like a nice bath, a nice soak. That makes me feel less gay about the things I do. (laughs) (laughs) The hotter, the better, and I'll just... Especially if you're at fantasy camp, you're going to want to soak out some of those injuries. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And I tell you what, there was a night when we go out and everyone hangs out. The ball players hang out with the campers, and you're 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 drinking and hanging out. That's probably part of it too. They're like, you can't just leave and go to the oh hotel. God. You got to be a part of it. You know, so the players don't just fucking leave the fantasy and, campers by themselves. Any any ex players have a bit of a problem at the bar? Um, or you're like, uh, oh no, boy, I cannot. I can honestly doing shots with everybody. No, I can honestly say no. However, ball players, even ex ball players, yeah. I saw Butch Husky there and Anthony. Oh, Young. sure. First of all, they're like six, seven. They walk in a bar, and it's literally like lions walking in the Serengeti, just staring at the wounded Impala and just <laughs> waiting to snag him up by the neck as they pull him away. And their little paws are right. just they're trying to escape. They just, they, they literally just making signal, and it, and it just. They walk in, they size up the room, and they zone in, and boom. Did the, any of the eighty-six players break out eight balls? <laughs> no, I will say Dwight was in bed early every night. <laughs> they, they loved their coke back then. I, dude, that I went to a team. Loved. Yeah, they were coke. they were very naughty. I just saw. I went to the eighty sixth reunion. They had something on Long Island. Nice. Out of all the guys there, um, oh god, oh no, Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> yeah, so well, Strawberry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that's gonna be thirty years. I'm trying to remember the guy. That's gonna be thirty years. They, guys. It is thirty years. Um, well, yeah, Mookie uh, later Wilson. on. In, no, Kevin Elster. Kevin Elster. Kevin I haven't thought of him Elster in a while. was 
hammered. He was so funny <laughs> because they're just trying. You know, he's sitting next to a Strawberry and uh, and Kevin Mitchell. Sure. And you can tell, like, Strawberry's, like, you know, he's sober now and all this stuff. Yeah. Kevin Ellis was sitting there smoking a cigarette indoors, hammered, <laughs> just telling all the stories you really. This guy was real bring in yeah. seven whores. We're doing lines. <laughs> Let me tell you so One time, they're all trying to shush him. He was great. <laughs> he was great. It's like, shut the fuck Kevin up. Kevin Elston was hilarious. That's and great. And they're all into, like, they don't mind taking pictures or no. you're hanging out with. That's kind of yeah. fun, man. If, if you're a huge fan. Well, if you're a big fan of uh, the Mets. That's the 7 a.m. thing would stink, but. Sounds great, but uh, but the any team they I think the Red Sox have it, the Yankees have it, but I hear the Yankees aren't engaging. Like the I, that's what I heard. Like the you go there, but they're not having the banquets at night. And they're not there, okay. but I don't know that for a fact. Oh, I just know there was a cut. There's some guys who are at the camp that've been to every camp. How did, really? How, how long did it take you to get over the the loss, the World Series loss? Oh, like, I got I, over right away. I was thinking about you, and then you got to. No, it's got to be exhausting because now you got to start all over again. I'm ready. As a fan. Holy I'm ready. Fuck, you're this close. Dude, I, now... just, I try to explain to you how exciting this team is. I know. I, I started watching near the end. I'll watch more games this year because of you. The four horsemen. <laughs> the four horsemen. Kicking Metallica, Harvey DeGrom, Matt's Syndergaard. And then you got the fifth horseman waiting, galloping in the wings in Wheeler. This is a hot, hot team. I this know. is, And I tell you, you what. Give me that speech. I'll, I'll definitely be watching more this year. I tell you what, the Yankees are hot, too. Yeah. The Yankees are, are silent. But they're frightening. They're they're silent and frightening. I want to go to a game this year. I keep saying I'm going to, but I want to see the new Yankee Stadium. I want to go and you just gone root, root, root for my team. The, I, they... <laughs> you hate sports, right? No, no I, you're a football no. guy. You like the Cowboys. Uh, yeah, but I don't really watch, and I don't really watch baseball anymore. But I, I would go. I mean, I still, I, 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 I do want to go. I've heard the stadium's great, and I want to go with uh, it's some awesome. Of the the stadium. I want to bring you to a Mecca. I want you I'd to go see this game, City Field. Yeah, I, I want you to see this Syndergaard and Harvey or Harvey pitch. I would go. Hey, hey, this all started with that video. Now, can we see the video? What video? Where you were making videos every day at Fantasy Camp. The last one. The last one was the... Where you were cheering. When we lost. Lost. I want the one where the guy wanted to make the video and didn't say anything. Yeah, that was Bob, uh, Let's ex-cop. See, let's see Bob's video. If There's don't... three of them, and I... And I, and I, and I you know, people like, give us updates. Right. Like, All right. Be Actually, update. before we get to that, I'm sorry. We, we found a different OJ uh, reaction video. What do you mean? There's really? A different, yeah, it might be worth playing. All right, let me see this. <laughs> okay, hold on. Wait a minute. What? So that's one of the reactions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they put, they put Brewer in the middle of these cheering OJs with Brewer. <laughs> See, that's him to make you look like you're acquitting the murderer. You're, you're cheering the acquittal. Hey, of the I've been framed. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, we'll tweet that out. I tell you why, man. Those, those crazy <laughs> videos. Yeah. Oh, people I'm... showing up at all the shows with met. Hats and Dude, I did Washington. I hope to God it will torture you to madness. <laughs> <laughs> I will ride that wave, Jimbo. Yeah, you should, man. You're getting a million views of video. They were freaking they uh, were fucking viral. These damn things, one yeah. after another. It was on nuts your on your Facebook. It was nuts. Let me let me hear this from <laughs> Fantasy Camp. Hey, this is when we just lost. Says, this is the greatest team ever, right here. <laughs> the New York. Hey, look at my arm. What, right, baby? Oh. It looks like Jim stopped at a hospital and gave everybody met you before. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? No, it goes on. And, and, and I'll show you the picture is... that beat us. Do you right. travel with your uniforms, or are they waiting for you when you get there? No, it's all there. Oh, it's all there. sizes and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get, you use your sizes, show up. They they hang up everything. And I like my T-shirt washed before I wear it, though. I don't like to they, wear an unwashed T-shirt. They'll wash it for you. I appreciate that. They wash it every I day very for you. very gentle skin. You would like the training room. Why? You go in there, pretend you got an injury, and you got males and fe you got females, Female, you got males. And they rub you out. And whatever you, you need nice in there. Down. Whatever you need in there. They, they, got, they got everything. Yeah. 
Nice. What, yeah. if you, what if you pull your groin? I didn't know you got to help uh, pull it back. That body right. stick fucking, you know, some, some guy. Oh, that's uh, that's Henry Oaks. It's some guy with a weird O-C-H-S name. He's 68. <laughs> Been with the team since 52. <laughs> fucking puts two fingers in your asshole and it's totally non-sexual and he's comfortable doing it. <laughs> he's one of those guys that could just massage a man anywhere and feel nothing. Because those guys... Those sports, uh, those you're, you're, those team doctors, they don't give a fuck. I mean, no, no. They, all they do is massage men, and they're used to it. Yeah, yeah they don't rub anything out for yeah, you. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. I think some fuck. of the campers too were just like, look, you know, they got a. If I heard this one more time, you know, they got a, a hot tub in there, and they and they got a cold tub too. You're gonna do the hot tub? I I can't do. I can. I just can't do hot tubs. They're like grown men. It's just, I, just, I, don't I wouldn't mind in a sporting. I, normally, I wouldn't. But with a buddy, I could. I could sit in a hot tub. Yeah, yeah no, I can. It's Talk. late at night in Colorado. Yeah, a little man yeah, to man comparing. You're at fantasy <laughs> camp. You're at fantasy camp. You guys should all be bonding in the hot tub. Yeah, some of them nuts are hanging really low. They're <laughs> hanging on top of the water. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see the rest of this video. Right. Watching us, Jimmy. That's right. That's right. We have no shame. That's right. We Everybody try to keep our spirits up. Let's see, we got a little chick on the team. Let's go. Let's go. All right, now I'm going to show you the other team who won. And there's this one pitcher. He's like in his 30s. This guy's throwing rockets. It's a pain in the ass. This guy was a pain in the ass. But look at the eight, you know. Like this is, you see the ages? These aren't kids you're losing against. No kidding. So if you, if you think you can't hit or whatever. This guy. I want his birth certificate. Right there. Wow, he yeah. looks like a younger kid. He well, doesn't look 30. Uh, yeah, very suspect. Very he, suspect. He was throwing hard, huh? He was throwing hard. Even it, You know what's sad when you see? <laughs> and some of the guys on our team were a little, were a little like, dude, that ain't right. We had a, we had a chick on our team. A, a mom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. She's maybe maybe 5'3". Okay. And she's probably, you know, in her mid-50s, and Jeez. he's just throwing heat. <laughs> <laughs> What I think one of them decked her. She had a she had a deck out of the and you know, like <laughs> our guys like come on man seriously you're trying to strike the chick out she has a pinch runner every time up does she we just told she walk every time she made contact every time and were you bummed when you got the chick no everyone uh, no Did not every, at all every matter of fact have... she was huge on our team right. she was she got a walk almost every time or a hit. Because right. everyone play in, and then she had a pinch runner. Yeah. So we put a fast guy in. All right. Fair so, enough. What, but look at, that, look at him, Mark. He's actually come to see me in Maryland. Was he Now, was he taking it easy on her when he pitched? No! <laughs> That's great. And you can tell he pitches in a league. He's got the whole, like, uh, the guy on the Dodgers, that lefty. Uh, oh, God. Uh, Hideki Matsui. <laughs> you you guys <laughs> say so. Yeah. But, yeah, he's uh, kid's a monster. Let's he's a up. monster. Play the rest of this. And he also hit it to the fence. We didn't win, but that's right. We played good. Man, Brewer, Brewer really likes doing this. I love it. But this is your first it's time? obvious. Huh? First time? Yeah. What do you do if there's a rain out? If it's a rainy week? We had a rain out. We had to play two triple headers. Triple headers? I The, se the second triple header, I... I pulled my oblique. I pulled a groin. My hand was killing me from hitting a ball. It was a mess. How many How many games did you end up playing in a week? You usually play about ten. I think we only played six. We played two days of triple headers. That was we it. had the blizzard. The blizzard knocked out two, three days. And then rain knocked out two what days. What do you do during the day? When you, when, meaning when there's no game. Go you... see movies and stuff. Or hang out with the play, you know, oh, players. So will call you and like, hey, man, you want to go somewhere? Hi, Doc. You want to get some popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fucking players must hate that. Everyone's knocking on their door. Doc, you want to go down for pancakes? <laughs> <You wanna> go... <laughs> uh, let's play ping pong. Yeah, yeah. the lobby. Down. Give me some tips. So you had a shitty uh, week of weather. Yeah, but I didn't care. It didn't matter. I didn't care. That's how much Brewer loves the Mets. I don't care. I I had a, listen. I got three kids. I had, I got a lot of work stuff coming. This was a nice, nice break in the nice action. break. I was away from the snow. It was awesome. All right. And then when it's over, I think they all play at City Field. Sometimes the whole team does a reunion at City Field. Really? Yeah. You Wait. play. At, you play at uh, the Met Stadium there. When? I don't know yet. Probably in July or August. All the teams yet. play. Um, is, is, is the actual like the eighty thousand people who came disappointed? It's not the real Mets. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, wow. This ain't no Matt Harvey. What the fuck? Who's that old guy? <laughs> Why is there a chick on the team? Why? What's going on here? <laughs> All right. We, uh, we should take a break so we can eat some food. Jim Brewer's here. We couldn't be happier. Uh, Brewer, what are you promoting? I know you got that, that album coming out soon, man. I just We're listened. I just listened it. the whole thing. Happy? It, yeah, I'm very happy. Good. And then um, the Paramount. I get, I'm filming. The Paramount again? If, if you put, I'm doing three shows. Holy shit. That Friday. Yeah. February 13th and 14th. Yeah. So it's and next then, week. Right. And then there's Boston this Friday. Wilbur Theater. Uh, and then Saturday, the, the Saturday Count Basie Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey. Nice. That's local. Yeah, I don't think there's, there may not, I don't think there's tickets for that. I think there's a few tickets for, like, scattered tickets for the Paramount. But I'm shooting the, my video for the first single at the Paramount at the end of each one of my sets. Oh, wow. So if you come into the all three shows on February 13th, at the end of it, if you want to be in the music video... Uh, I literally finish my set. The band comes out. We play the song. That's cool. And then uh, we'll be shooting the end of that video. What the video will look like towards the end. Man, you're taking this very seriously. I did. I love I'm it. I'm coming out swinging. I, I love it. I'm coming out swinging. Uh, I can't half-ass this. It's going to be released possibly in late April, right? Your metal record. Uh, looking at probably end of May. That's, end of May. That's what they're saying. Okay. Now. Well, I will be at the uh, in Kentucky this tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, and um, then I start my tour in Chicago, Michigan, and uh, Milwaukee the week after. Yes. So, oh, uh, you play? Jimmy's playing the Royal Oak Music Theater. That's a you've been there, right? I've never been to. Uh, oh, to... that is a great venue. Oh, good. Great crowd. I love the Royal Oak. And I'll be shooting. I'm, I I I don't play heavy metal. I do have an accordion. And I've been playing that in the middle of my act. <laughs> nice. Not an old musical man. I'm, gonna, I'm doing that Louisville one too. I just did. I think I'm. I'm just doing one night though. Maybe That's my, I can't. I, I mean, I, I hear it's a great room, this Laughing Derby. But I'm so happy it's my last club for a while. The club schedule is fucking. Even though you travel, club every is day, hard. Club, you're doing multiple shows. You're yeah, in the it's... same place. You got to kill time. Fucking theaters, you do one. One and out. You one. drive, either drive at night. I'll drive four or five hours me at too. night. Get there, sleep, yep. wake up. Me and Kenny make love. We eat lunch. There you go. Me Perfect schedule. I agree. When you're at Wilbur. I'm at Wilbur. I got two shows. One is sold out and one is not. Uh, oh, February I 19th. I don't sell as well as you in Boston. I only got one show. I'm still trying to get tickets. Look at you. Two shows. I'm sure you could have done more if you wanted to. Mm. I should have done another one. I do one at the Paramount. It's sold out. I should have done more than one, but Paramount. I don't that's a great I'm only doing it. Brewer suggested it. It's awesome. I'm doing three. Yeah, that's amazing. I did a 5.30 show. I said, screw it. Yeah, it's yeah. a 5.30 show. Why not show? split them on different nights? I didn't want to work on uh, Valentine's oh, Day. Okay. So then after the third show we added, then they said, how about another one now on Valentine's Day? And I went, they wanted to do two. And I'm like, relax. Let's, let's see how the first one goes. So, so yeah, I'm might, up to four shows. So you the, might have five. Oh, you are doing four. Yeah. So, oh, okay. But smart. two days. Okay, smart. smart three right. one day, one three on Friday, Valentine's one Saturday. Day. I got you. And and we'll actually be three Saturday, one Sunday. Oh, okay. Three Saturday, one Sunday. Because Monday's a holiday, I think. Five thirty. Yeah, show. President's Day or something, yeah. right? All right, uh, Jim Brewer's here. Yeah. Wilbur Theater this Friday for for Brewer yes. up there in Boston. We got uh, Stone Stone Cold Steve Austin coming in today. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Zach Wild. Yes, I I wonder if he'll. But. I wonder if he'll talk about the sketch show we did. All right, I'm sure he will. We did a sketch show. He was he was at a different time in his life. Yeah, I think I told you that story. We came into a. Uh, we we met at Shun Lee in New York City, yeah. and he was getting hammered, <laughs> yeah. and the Asians were ho scared for their lives. <laughs> They'd come over shaking, I mean, over the chow mein. <laughs> they didn't know if they were going to get eaten or kidnapped. He had the big bandana, like the big American flag around his hat. And, right. and um, he's talking, everything. He's like, fuck it, fuck, fuck it. This is what we got to fucking do. Like, oh, gosh, easy, <laughs> easy. Yeah, he's, easy. Zach's not a good whisperer. Easy hammer. <laughs> and this is, this is, and then we, we filmed a sketch show, and I, f I forgot the name of it. He showed up like an hour, hour and a half late. Stumbles out of his truck with Heineken's falling out. He's he grabbed his 
his manager mm -hmm. with a big, big chain, like a big bike chain wrapped around his neck, start choking him. <laughs> I swear to God, he was like letting out a fucking gorilla. And he's going, is it the kind of sketches we're going to do, Jimmy? And I swear to God, the guy's tapping his fucking leg. And I'm like, Zach, it's okay. It's a, let go of him. I get it. I get what we're doing. And then uh, he ended up, he ended up, just like get in a car, we got in a car. He, we went to a strip club, to, to, and we couldn't escape. We stuck there. I'm like, what the fuck? You am stuck I, with Zach Wow. Like, what am I doing? He's what holding you hostage. For what the are day. we? What are we doing? So, um, it, yeah, he was. The sketches weren't that great in the end. <sighs> the ideas were great. Yeah. The whole concept was a great idea, but I think if he was sober, it would have. We would have done a, a lot better. better. Yeah, would have okay. done a lot better. And we got uh, Judd Apatow coming in shortly, I think. Yes, his new, uh, at 9 o'clock, his, his new series on Netflix is called Love. I saw the first two episodes. I definitely liked it. So we'll talk to Judd as well. All right, stay there. But they've been running the media for a long time, and I tell them right to their faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> One of my uh, favorite people in studio today, Thanks, Jim dude. fucking oh. Brewer. Of course, Jimmy as well. I'm... Well, we don't get to see Brewer a lot. We do not, no. Um, What's the name of the song you're doing, if you can not say? Which one? Well, Let's call Old School. Old School? We heard Old School. I, I think it's one of my favorite. I, basically, all I did was reference every title from every band I loved growing up. Mm -hmm. So it's like Megadeth, Black Sabbath, Ozzy, Zeppelin, Priest, Maiden, Metallica, this Except, Scorpions, Crew. This uh, this project's gonna surprise a lot of people. I don't we, know. We heard I, old school. It's it's amazing. And then I heard. Uh, uh, I guess you. Talked I don't about think. It. I think you I talked only about Brian Johnson. Just, I talked about, it, but I don't think you heard it. I think I heard it. I think I heard it. I mean, and, I, and he's I'm got on, Brian Johnson on his album. I guess if you're standing, we're all standing. Jesus Brewer. I just I just want to stand. That's uh, all. Uh, all right. I, I feel like I I hit a couple dribblers in my first hour. No, that's I wanna, fine. I want to. I want to. I, I, I'm I'm addicted to home runs. No, that was fun. I'm yeah. addicted. Anthony Young. So I, Anthony Young's dick. That's your home run. Exactly. <laughs> he could have used his dick to hit the home I think run. The, I think the Nicole Kidman accident that was, was also a home good. Run. Run. <laughs> that was that was an inside the park homer though. <laughs> uh, I'm obsessed with the George Washington Bridge, and I gotta tell you why. People are fucking jumping from this thing all the time, and the city's trying to keep it quiet. And we had two yesterday. Two. And the only reason I bring this up, because it's so fucking weird, they had divers in the water, the Hudson River yesterday, looking for someone that jumped earlier in the day. Why? And as that, as they were looking for the one body, yeah. a woman jumped while the divers were in the water yesterday. <laughs> oh, my God. That's how the story goes, right, Eric? That's what it is. Isn't that crazy? And how many, uh, the, how many bodies this year already? Oh, yeah. let me see. I mean, it's only been a month, but... Well, let's see in the last year. In the last year. And the city keeps this shit quiet. Well, same with San Francisco. The Golden Gate. They don't but, tell you. But everyone knows about the Golden Gate at this point that a lot of people jump from there, but they don't know that it's happening right in our George backyard. Washington. It happens a lot. Twelve? That was in the first half of last year. There were 12. So there's. So they're doing about, about one a 25 month. a year. I mean, two, uh, two a month. About two a month. Every three and a half days. Is that that's what they're saying? Yep. Every three and a half days, someone's jumping from that bridge, and the city keeps it fucking quiet. <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, budget cuts because they they don't want to put up that big fence because you know it's it's beautiful when you're and up there. And that's what it. They just don't want to put up a fence. No, it's beautiful, and the guardrail's really low. It's kind of creepy. It's yeah, a very me, it's I, very easy to jump off that fucking. Let fence. me tell you something. I I I was in San Fran a couple months ago. There's Zach. Wow. Oh boy, I was in a, I was in San Fran. I don't know, uh, springtime, summer. It was the first time I ran a bike, and I went right across the thing. I was I was petrified that if if I hit, yeah. it's small. It's it's narrow. small lane. It's very narrow. If I hit something, I'm going over the rail. You, it's yeah. very easy to go over that railing. Yes, especially on a bike. Yes, and my the guy that opens for me. <laughs> <laughs> he, I'm sitting there and we're riding back because I was scared to death. So I'm, I'm just got my head down. I'm pedaling, and then when I reached the end, I turn. He was gone. He, he apparently hit someone and went head over and uh, tried calling. His hand, his arm was mangled. What, he, he got fucked up riding a bike over he the Golden Gate Bridge. Fucked up, and his, it, it looked like a cartoon hand. Like so, 
You know, like when a McGillic gorilla would blow on his thumb and yeah. <laughs> blow the thing up. <laughs> <laughs> and all I remember is we were walking around Little Italy, and I kept looking. I was too lazy. I didn't want to go to the hospital and do that whole process. Of course. You keep coming. You think it's broke? Nah, it's fine. It's fine. It's all black and blue. <laughs> you don't want to waste six hours <laughs> when you can be checking out San Francisco. Yeah, come on, man. Step up. Uh, I uh, I try to take my uh, my inline skates. Some call them rollerblades across the Golden uh, Gate Bridge when we were off the air. I was out there, and I wasn't allowed to because the the bike groups are are oh they're aggressive and mean. You know. They're politically connected, and they actually told me I'm not allowed to do that because yeah. because the bike uh, groups uh, bought the bike lane. Oh wow! So, and they don't want any fucking rollerbladers or inline skaters, whatever the fuck. The bike groups are. Obnoxious. They literally told me I wasn't allowed to do it. I'm like, that's funny. And I started going like, you're who are you? And they're like, no, we're dead serious. Yeah. They, no. We we pay for these lanes, and we don't want anybody <laughs> except bikers on them. So how they stop you? Like how, how did I, they, they just physically stuff? This is literally uh, when we were off the air, so 11, 12 years ago. I, I sort of remember that, okay, they're they're serious, and I just did just not do off. it. Yeah. But at first, I'm like, oh, that's funny, and because I thought someone was just fucking with me. Right. And then, uh, no, it was, it was obvious. And supposedly, they were very political with their with their, with their groups and all that. Out there, they are, yeah. Well, I mean, with the bikers, yeah, though. Yeah. You, would, you would never think that. No, they're not so out there. They're crazy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm scared to death, and they're just flying by me. Left on your left! Right. <laughs> but, yeah, you don't understand the protocol. Yeah, all right. I'm exactly. sorry. Right? How about a you. stick in your spokes? What do you think of them? <laughs> <laughs> Watch your fucking jaw skid the next 40 yards. <laughs> Brewer's, Brewer's just Dick. riding a bike, just trying to check out the scenery. And these guys wanted. want to exactly. knock you over. Why don't you put the seat back on that thing? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you do uh, Alcatraz? No. Oh. Nah, I did it once. Uh, Oh, my. oh, you I did, did it once, once though. Okay, yeah, you know, I've done. I get it. I did it twice. I fucking loved it. I loved it. it. Made me think more of the Clint Eastwood movie. Like, did he? Did they? Did they die? Yeah, they had to die. They died. You know I why? Because that water's so cold. Your well, body would never endure. Well, it's like English said. Uh, and if the water's so cold, it will numb your arm in a matter of minutes. Remember the movie? Yes. And you're, just telling him, you're right. There's there's no way. I love the spoon. He goes, guard, can I get another one? This one looks like it's been digging in some guy's ass. <laughs> <laughs> We're sticking in some guy's ass. Remember when you needed the second yes. spoon? <laughs> that was incredible. i got to watch that movie again. That was a great movie. I love it. They show Clint Eastwood's cheeks in the beginning. When he gets there and he's walking through the jail. Wolf wanted to get friendly. Oh. I didn't. Remember fucking Wolf? <laughs> I'm looking for a new I, punk. How were the, how were the cheeks? Uh, amazing. The they cheeks were amazing. Were amazing. Yeah. yeah. Good Clint Eastwood cheeks. Yeah. I love Wolf. But um, I gotta watch again. I don't remember a lot of it. Wolf wanted to get friendly. I didn't. Remember that? And he fucking, uh, Wolf tries to fuck him in the shower. And Clint Eastwood pump beats him up. It's amazing I how they right. remember yeah. that. It's, a, seen it's amazing how many movie lines Jim Norton knows. It's crazy. Yes, but when it comes it's to intimacy, I, sw I strike out every time. <laughs> <laughs> but swinging a miss. But Jim, Jim will we were reference. just talking about you yesterday after yeah. the show about the, you and your movie lines. It's it's nuts. Yeah, it's, it's nuts it. how many you know. But like he, he'll talk about movies like Goodfellas, and it's like all right, everyone sees Goodfellas. But then the other I haven't day, seen that. But it's a, never, never, no. <laughs> but then, like, but he, it's a movie that we reference out of nowhere, and right. he's got five or six fucking lines in the movie. But then he referenced Carbon Copy the That's other right, day yeah, with, so with Denzel and George, the, Siegel, George yeah. Siegel, and I have not heard anyone mention that movie in f like forty years. And not only is it mentioned, he knows some lines. From <laughs> I know, genius. Uh, There's a good movie, by the way. It was it was when, I think it was before Denzel got his teeth fixed. I like when he was really young. Yeah, he's like a young, uh, hungry actor. He's great. Mm. All right. I watched a lot of movie channels growing up, as we all did. I'm sure. Yes, we did. Yeah, but we don't remember all the fucking lines from every single movie. Yeah, it's like, uh, what was it? You know, Frank Whaley. Yeah. He was in. Uh, he was in the Doors. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. No, no, he's an actor. He was in the Doors. Um, no, he was. <laughs> oh, in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but he was the guy. He was one of the guys in Pulp Fiction. He was in Swimming with Sharks. But in Swimming with Sharks, they, there's a line where he's like, "Yeah, I always associated things in my life with movies. Like, like I remember what I was doing when I saw it. And I guess that's kind of, you know." I was always like that. Gotcha. But when it came to real in interactions, I'm no then it's, it's, back a, to you then. it's a little different. Yeah. Uh, you had the GWB story up there. This is again. a different story from last year, from last March, where two people jumped within seconds of each other, totally unrelated, about 70 yards I, apart. Well, that's nice. The only reason I bring this up, they tr they're trying to fucking keep this extremely quiet. It's happening all the fucking time. Yeah, but do you 
talk about it, and then more dummies come and do it? I or now so. people are sitting there waiting for it to happen, like having coffee, know. like, should be any minute now. So, oh, you know, this looks like a suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Jump, stupid! Let's yeah. see if the numbers have gone up since we talked about yeah. it. Anyone above, <laughs> <laughs> anyone above 150th Street damning the rise of the hanky, and you're like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go across the bridge. Beautiful look. You know what it is? Good. And they all regret it as soon as they jump. Supposedly the lady that jumped yesterday, she's screaming for help immediately. She's like, fuck, well, that she's was a over. Wait, did she land or she's dead? She's fine because the divers yeah. were in the what? water. She oh. broke her leg. She broke her leg. She would have been fucked, but the divers were already in there trying to find another guy that jumped earlier. See, yeah. my head, I always thought, if... If I, don't you go through the scenarios where you're on a bridge and you go, okay, if this thing goes down, I'm I'm gonna make it. Mm. I'm gonna, I'll be okay. Uh, I'll be in the water and then I'll open the window. Or if I ever fell off, I go, I'm gonna make it. Yeah. I'm gonna fall exactly the way I'm supposed to fall, and then I'm gonna survive. No one ever falls. No, no one ever falls. Think of a belly flop. How painful a three foot belly flop is. Right. Three feet. You get pink belly. Now you're dropping from hundreds of feet in a truck. In a truck. Yeah. It's it wouldn't I don't know. The airbags might help you out a little bit. I'm a little and bit. And then supposedly I guess you gotta open the windows before you hit the water. Okay, but like some of these guys, I wonder if someone goes I wonder if there's any jumpers that go, I wanna I wanna just see if I can make it. Right. I, I I doubt that exists, but there has to be some. There has to be one dummy goes, oh. two jackasses go. Dude, I'm telling you right fucking now. I used to play basketball in high school. <laughs> I got a great fucking heart. I can make it. Well, then jump, dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then he jumps, and you're not thinking your leg breaks and your br well, bones break. It's too boring around here. Niagara Falls, they try that shit with the barrels and everything else. Yeah. Retards. The yeah, best one it was the guy that jet skied over the fucking falls. <laughs> he didn't want to make it, though. I don't think he wanted Oh, wait. Did he want to make it? Did he have a parachute? I... Ah, where's my buffalo people? When I was living up there, a guy did a jet ski. Over the falls? Over the falls, and I think... <laughs> Uh, I think he had a parachute. I think, it, and the chute didn't open, and he's he's wait. You know, he did in, not make it in his head too. Nineteen ninety five. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. wanted to draw attention to the plight of the homeless. Yeah. <laughs> what an asshole. Give me the headline again. How about you jump over in a sleeping bag? <laughs> uh, Californian uh, killed in Niagara Falls stunt accident. Parachute Niagara fails Falls. to open for rider of motorized ski. So he had a jet ski with a fucking parachute, <laughs> and he thought, you know, he'll let go of the parachute. Uh, Wiley Coyote. The yeah, exactly. The jet ski Wiley and then the parachute. Wiley Coyote. Yeah, he was in, um, it was uh, Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> and he wanted to bring attention to the homeless. It's a hell of a way to do it. But that guy thought he could do it. Yeah, I, exactly. If he made that, he'd be a fucking hero. He'd be a hero. And then there's guys, too, where he probably thinks, like a car. You know how you, th you watch it in the in on the movies where the car will go, like, 20 feet? You don't realize, once it's over the ramp, it's going straight down. Yes, yes. Same thing with the, the jet ski. He probably thinks, oh, yeah, I'll, just, I'll probably jet out about 40 feet. You right. really go... Two feet and you go a 90-degree <laughs> angle to you plummeting to your death in yeah, my face. Yeah, they make you look a little different. In, uh, right yeah. into the rocks. Yeah, you go. Mm. Like, all of a sudden, a car will go off a road, and it's, all of a sudden, it's got lift and off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Oh, out of nowhere, it's just the, the wind lifts it up and gets it across where it needs yeah. to go. It you, doesn't do that. You don't jump a bridge. Like, if you try to jump on a, a, an open bridge, you're not going to get that. You're going to just go st off and then straight into the other end and be <laughs> right. expelled immediately. Right. Yes. All right. Well, that's the GWB. Oh, wow. Two people yesterday alone. I'm ups I, I really am obsessed with that because uh, there's just too many people doing it. Wait, it's wait. Nuts. What? What is that? What is that video? Sir Zach? Which one? That's the vi That's crapshoot sample. Look I don't at know the what size of this guy, bro. Yeah, we got Zach Wild later. I don't think that's worth. Is that worth playing right now? I want to play the Super Bowl don't thing. Play that thing. The commercial. Yeah, let's do the Super Bowl. What's I think that's when he stood on his truck and he pissed on the window. Oh, really? This is the type of stuff I'm talking about doing. He was pissing on the wind. He was nuts. He was nuts. So what? Uh, there's a commercial being banned, but every year there's a commercial being banned for the Super Bowl. I think they do it. They do it on, on purpose. purpose. Thanks, Jimmy. Because yes. it gets attention. Yes, because then everyone's talking about it before the Super Bowl and, pl and playing the commercial. Yeah. They they had to have known that the Super Bowl or CBS wasn't going to allow their 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 uh, spot. Yeah. What? Which one is it for? Scores. Yeah, they're not going to allow a, a scores commercial during yeah, the Super Bowl. That's stupid anyway. Yeah. Even think about that. It's... And then we all play our part in this, like, oh, my God, they banned this commercial. Well, let's watch this commercial, and they get all their exposure. Suckers. Right. Well, we're going to be suckers right now. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at least we're admitting it.
Let's uh, let me see this. <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna lie. Yeah, they're not. And, and it's New York. Live.com. Now you can experience Scores Girls Live online <laughs> at scoreslive.com. Choose from hundreds of the hottest live girls and start your one-on-one -on -one private experience. Go to scoreslive.com and enter promo code good. SCORES and get 10 free private minutes right now. Ooh. What are you waiting for? Ooh. Log on now at scoreslive.com. That's smart. That's not that bad. It's smart uh, as far as uh, they, they know they were never going to accept that. Yeah. Your one-on-one -on -one experience with a with a with a stripper. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna show that during the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. dun, 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 dun. It's Next on NFL, <laughs> the Super Bowl. And now a quick message. Yeah, the scores. Da, 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 da. That's that's all bullshit. They they knew they just wanted to be the commercial this year that was banned by CBS. Don't you think? Even to, did did you think the uh, remember the Sony the movie with the North Korean thing? Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Did you uh, buy? Interview. Did you buy that that really was hacked? I oh yes. It, really? Uh, the, from uh, from, was there was Sony hacked? Yeah. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because of the implica because of what happened to a lot of upper management people, and the amount like that's where Charlie Sheen's HIV status came from was those hacks because really? somebody referenced it in an yeah. email. Oh and, yeah. And people got fired too. Oh dude, and there oh, might wow. be lawsuits. Yeah. That's a hundred percent legit. Really? They got fucked. I don't, I don't know if it was North Koreans or just, I, I think it was an ex-employee who was unhappy. Of course. Them, but, but it's real, yeah. It didn't help the movie in the end because they really had to yank it out of the theater. Yeah, you never watched it. Yeah, a bunch of people it, saw it on demand. They, wa they watched but, it on demand. But it's still bad when you're, when you're a part of so because we had Seth and James Franco in here together. I remember. And they the look, vibe of it, like Seth is always uh, loose it, and fun. Yeah. And you could see he was, he was uptight. He was upset. Oh, they look scared. And, and James Franco, these are actors, man. They're not used to, like, comics get yelled at on stage. We're not You're used right. to international scandal. You're but right. we are used to people talking while we're on and going, and, and then, like, it gets quiet. You know, this guy sucks. Like, we, we're used to hearing un, unpleasant shit. You're right. When you're a loved actor and all of a sudden there's a fucking leader saying that, you know, we have to do something about this, it's like, ugh. You're I, right. I don't think I'd handle that well either. Why am I comparing a whisper at the cellar to, to, <laughs> to Kim Jong Un wanting to no, kill but me? No, but you're right. Being on you, his you, radar. You bring up a great point with actors in general. You, the, comics were so used to you suck or this and you ain't like so and so and yeah, this nastiness. That's all we hear is nasty. What so we're used to it. Where these guys, they're just used to like, ah, I didn't care for the movie. They yeah, were, they looked very distracted. That yeah, day. and Seth is they so open bothered. and fun. It's like it was weird to see. I don't know James Franco. Uh, people say he look alike. Uh, that's for you to decide. <laughs> but, uh, for you to decide. <laughs> but Seth was definitely. Oh, by the way, I finally saw Steve Jobs. Fucking Seth was great in that. Yeah, he was. Oh my God, was that a good movie? Like, even though there was a lot of long dialogue stuff, I I enjoyed that. I like that movie. Being a dialogue guy myself, I enjoy it. <laughs> but I, I thought it was so well acted. It, it, huh. it played. A, it was like a play. Yeah. Did you it see was a three act play? You see the De Niro flick. The um, bad grandpa yeah. or dirty grandpa. Dirty whatever. grandpa. I want to go see it just because I read with De Niro in that script and really? and Zac Efron. Did you really? But I I wasn't really up for the part. They said, "Listen, you're not really up for the part." But hey, if you blow them away. But there's a part in that movie where I play the drug dealer guy, and I really wanted that part, and so. Of course, I went to go see it just like, well, let me see how this guy did. I was a little disappointed. Was he good or no? No, it was. It was he made, Was it a big part? And who it got, was a decent part, yeah. Who got the part? I, I honestly. You don't know the person? I don't know the guy. But you know he did better. You just know. I'm not saying. I, I'll say it for I, you. It's just I'll frustrating. I'm like, damn, I could have murdered it. You felt like you killed it. He might have known someone who might have been the same agent as De Niro thing. You never know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> that was your fucking part. It's basically what you wanted to tell the world. Yeah. It was really... But it's it's funny when you read something, and then, and now I want to go see... Here, another movie was uh, um, Sex Tape. Sex Tape. Yeah, that's with, a comedy with Cameron, with Cameron Diaz. Diaz. Oh, right. And, uh, that's Brendan Fraser. I was... That's a lot I, ago now, right? thought, I, I wish I still had the video, and I would bring it in here. I, 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 damn it, I should have brought it in here. I auditioned for Rob Lowe's part. Rob yeah. Lowe played an executive for like this toy company. Right. But when they went to his house, it said he's blasting like death metal and he's on something, but you can't figure it out. And I'm like, I, 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 I watch, I watch. I was like, oh, this part's mine. This, I'm gonna murder this part. Yeah. 
Yeah, I sort of freaking Rob Lowe got it. Oh, like, oh, but yeah. Rob Lowe is Rob Lowe. Yeah, I mean, political man. The guy's a monster. If they the guy's get, a monster. If they could get Rob Lowe. <laughs> how, how about that? Uh, <laughs> my bar. But if, if you get Rob Lowe for your movie, I mean, it's tough to I, say. It was all right. It's tough I was to able to sleep no. better. Okay, I was able to sleep true. better. Like, like, right, oh, do we get Brewer for... Twenty eight dollars. Hey, we can put Rob Lowe in, and we're gonna make an extra percentage. Hey, this guy's did good. This guy's good. You? Did you huh? remember you? I mean, you you did SNL with him. Even the, that's that's probably his he, only time walking out live. I th he must remember the moment. I think he did. Mm. He he wasn't like, hey Jim, how you doing? He we were we were all in the room already, and then he came and he sat. As soon as he came in, we just started immediately. He sat down at the end, and then we started reading. He the doesn't script. wait. However, of everyone reading there. There was a, a black guy who played a gay guy in it, and he got the role immediately when he was. They were laughing so hard at him. Was he good? He was good. He was good in the room. He was really good in the room. Mm. Okay. Which is tough to do, right? Which, I mean, a gay black guy? Boy, with De Niro in the room, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a thing where I, I was. I, <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I had a thing where but I was. But he was good. And, and I, I had to read it. It was fucking. I, I should have gotten it. I didn't. It's, it's Which one? Which one? Uh, they gave it to some guy, uh, some guy Jody. It was so annoying. I was supposed to play a young prostitute. And... <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, back in the seventies. And I, I read <laughs> for it. Do you remember the name of the movie? <laughs> Taxi cab. Taxi driver. Taxi driver, maybe. <laughs> You were that up, was it. You were up for that part. And you I felt was. Like, yeah, some you guy felt Jody. Like you killed it. I won't say it. I know I did well. Jody was a, a young lady, I believe. I believe they went with a young lady. No, but she Not didn't have sure. her lumps in yet, though. Her she lumps. was very, very flat chested. That's right. So I could see where maybe Jimmy would have killed that role. I did really good. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm a hooker. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> I fall for all the the gay lesbian girls. I I had mean? a huge crush on Jodie Foster. Sure, had no Christy clue. Christy McNichol. Christy McNichol. I, I never I saw that one. Had the biggest crush on she her. Was so cute. And I had to say, I had a huge crush on Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, she was cute. When she I was convinced up. when we'd meet. We'd, we would date, and she'd love me, and I'd, we'd have the best time together. It's funny you mentioned Butch Husky. That's every girl I like. <laughs> every girl I like has the headline on her head. <laughs> wow. Ellen DeGeneres? She was very oh, cute. Oh, dude, what, she funny was so up. adorable. Ah, come on. No, she was great. Nah, she was my type. The cute, fun. Yeah. She, she was cute. Yeah, she and had, was it like... because of her sense of humor? That tricked you and a that little bit? Humor? Yeah, that cute. too. She was just cute, though. I was, I was Helps if they have attracted a sense of humor. To her. She was very cute, and, and, and she had like a little like like neck length blonde hair, a little yes, longer. Yes, yeah. yes. Doing that thing about playing like little air guitar in the I was mirror. Was so the brush. attracted to her. Yeah, me too. I remember when do she you, would. Do you like her when 80s. she wears ties? Yes, eighties, nineties. She would wear a suit jacket with yes. her padded shoulder That's pads. What I mean. You yes. liked her when she had the ties on. I did. <laughs> I thought she was cute. Yeah, All right. Me too. Me I too. did. I wanted to suck face with her. I wanted to give her a All kiss. Right. I had no idea that that would never ever be on the table. Me either. I didn't know she'd be an iconic household name either. I, I, you guys who, ever meet her? I didn't, no. When she was coming up, I saw her once in an elevator at SNL. Oh, was she going down? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> I didn't mean it. Back I didn't mean you. to be fresh. And, and I was. I, I had listen. She's one of those. I know it's it's like a weird. Mm. I still really really look. I hold her on a pedestal. So yeah. when we in the elevator. She went, hi, Jim. And I was close to the Yeah, <laughs> oh, my God. Bit, huh? yeah, yeah. She's funny, man. She's very funny. She's very funny. I would have said, hey, uh, EDG, how you doing? You know, you a little abbreviation. They <laughs> like that. It's casual. It's comfortable. It shows my, that you're in the biz. My kids watch her, and I. Uh, you want to you hear, you want to go, this is when you know you're becoming a dad and you're becoming, you're crossing over the fag hill, the faggy hill. Yeah. I was uh, on the road, and I'm watching Ellen. And she's doing some show where she gives away, you know, her sister's this, and then she needs a home, and she's sick, and she's the biggest fan. She did it, and she ends up getting. I'm, I'm sobbing like a baby, <laughs> like a baby sobbing, watching this. Like this is the greatest thing and, anyone could ever do. Man. I was mangled. And then your phone uh, rings. It's face FaceTime time. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> really, my wife calls. Like, what's the matter? Are you thinking of your father? I'm like, nope. Watching Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Watching Ellen, she's giving away cars and helping people. Someone's out. actually asking how your dad's doing. I mean, oh, uh, uh, he died, I, he uh, died uh, last August. Last August. 
Yeah, so. Uh, He's in a spiritual world now, so I don't know. How, how are your daughters? I love asking you about your daughters every time you're in here because, you know, I've, for us people that have younger kids, you, you help us out with what, what to expect. Well, you always have a good story or two. I, t- Where are they at these days? T- t- the old, the, <laughs> the, 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 what age is now? Almost 17. Wow. Fuck, one's 14. Fast. One's 14 tomorrow. And one mm. just turned 11. Uh, the little one is, is still a kid, big time kid uh, into ACDC, very much like baseball. And the, into hanging out with you still. Into hanging out. The middle one is belly laughing hilarious. She, she, she's all me. So she knows how to imitate. She knows how to mimic. She knows how to. She knows how to get out of situations by just being funny. You think she'll get into the business? I wouldn't be shocked. I don't think she. She's also very shy, like me. Like if I don't know who I'm with, yeah. I'm very quiet. Very quiet. With the oldest one, I this. She's. She's. Um, Does she love hanging out with you, the oldest one? Yeah, we're very cl- we're very very close. We don't really hang out. She got a boyfriend, all okay. that But she, <laughs> like for instance, she'll she doesn't she's wants to. I know she's sneaky. She, she's the one where every time she says something, I go, I don't believe one word you're saying. I always think she's plotting yeah. something. She's always plotting something and i it drives me nuts that i don't nail it every i nailed it 80 percent of the time yeah, yeah. i've nailed it like for instance um during the summer right we rented a place in woodstock and this house had a uh had a, a barn they redid the barn and when i first get to the house i check out everything i check out every room they have a fridge in the barn I open the barn and there's a big bottle of vodka in the back of the fridge. Wait, there's nothing in the fridge but vodka and about seven beers that I've never heard of. So I'm like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm not going to mess with that. So a couple, she's planning the things with teenagers, and I don't know why certain parents are like, oh, uh, I wouldn't do that. The, the key is their phone. Their phone it's is their like world. when you're when you're at, when you're at war. You want to get the control of all communication. When you get the kid's phone, sure, you own every. You got all the information you want right there. Yeah, believe me, I've gotten a lot of calls from angry parents. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, thank God she's not super street smart. So the one day she said, her cousin's coming, who's the same age, and and. Uh, she comes up and she's planning something. She's like, my friends are coming. They're very desperate. Oh, my friends are coming. Yeah. Can I definitely have them sleep in the barn? Her friends are going, yeah, 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 sleep in the barn. So her cousin comes. Can we just uh, sleep in the barn? Go ahead. I think it's a great you and your cousin. It's, it's like 10 o'clock at night. She comes walking up about 1030 in the dark. And we're getting ready for bed. She goes, um, can I, can I um, take the orange juice down to the barn? <laughs> <laughs> what do you? You don't drink orange juice. Well, it, it's just good for breakfast, and I don't even hesitate. I just take the phone, and and right there just explains everything. This Saturday night live in the barn, a party with fourteen of us. You bring the booze, I'll bring the pot. It's gonna be on. Parents will never know. And it's like he's right there. Do you realize? Like you can't even don't. Ask me for the orange juice. Wait till I'm in bed and come and that's, sneak that's it. That's a rookie move. It's yeah. such a rookie that's, that's a move. Rookie move. Well, they didn't know. Like they don't understand. Like when we had to do stuff, it was we didn't have that. There was no way to catch all our communication unless you overheard it. Yes. But now that's right. there's a fucking paper trail. There's that's an right. electronic trail. Everything you've just said, it's crazy. And I also. But are they able to hide stuff yes. from you on their phone because yes, they're smarter sure. at that than us? Yes. So here's what you do, parents. Oh, and here's fuck. here's our deal. Yeah. If I grab your phone and I notice you have erased text messages, it's gone for a month. And she's, she only failed at that once because I know for a fact she used to go, she used to go, well, it's to save the battery. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wait, so you want to, wait, so you're deleting Stupid messages. Dad, he'll believe this. Yeah. <laughs> you're deleting messages <laughs> to save battery. battery time. Wait a minute. How can you tell there's deleted messages? Oh, if 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 I start texting you today, Jim, and we text for the next month, sure. Uh, 
it'll go back all the way to our first conversation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I believe yeah, I know that. Off to many but of those, so. I didn't know you could. <laughs> I didn't know Not you could you. see deleted messages though. No, no, no. You can't. But what you could do is. If I if I know like her friend, she doesn't talk to him once or twice. I know certain friends you talk to all the time. If you start scrolling and all of a sudden it just stops and there's only like four words, like, oh, you deleted There was a conversation. You had a conversation, you deleted gotcha. it. Gotcha. Oh wow, you're just you're in lockdown. And I, I'm not a, obviously a parent but unless I, you fess up. My question is yeah. is that not, not to you know, like you're the, is that too invasive in in, in, in the sense that if if you would if they were just talking, you'd never be able to go and grab that back. This just happens to be a communication. So if they erase it, isn't it just like while well, they were talking? No. I, I don't know the I rules. Think, let me ask you this: I think if you're a parent, you should you should no. be allowed to be as invasive as, okay. as possible because until they leave your fucking house. Because what right? you worry about as a parent is addictions okay. and pregnancy. If if like if she did that party, and listen, you know who doesn't do parties, blah blah blah. But I didn't know the people that were coming. She right. just met these guys in like Guadalupe, wherever she was, in some trip. And now for the first time, I'm gonna. See, and I'm like, I I would have, I probably would have lost my mind knowing there were people wasted. I don't know their parents. Right. I don't know if they're trying to, 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 to you know, bang each other. I don't know what's going on. I'm raising my hand because the other thing is like you're responsible too. I'm one responsible. One of these kids gets fucked up, and, and I'm running the house. And breaks start a leg smashing or shit. Oh. The parents are going to come after you. Well, exactly. Maybe, maybe not, but yes. there's definitely no, a possibility. No, we, we actually talked about this last time you were here. Yes. Yeah. We, I remember we discussed this. Yeah. Our last, and yeah. it's the responsibility. When I say too invasive, I don't mean like you shouldn't do it. But I mean if you're, if you're like, uh, if you say like a month with no phone, like is that right. going to make her not delete messages? I guess it uh, might. Maybe uh, I've, I've, it I've, just makes her, it, it, listen, I wouldn't take it away for a month and I haven't. But you need to, it's like a cop on the corner. Oh, it's, it's like a, what's the it, word? Uh, not a diversion, a, uh, what's, no, it's a, oh my if you, God. If, you, if you live in a neighborhood and you see a cop on the corner, you might think twice. Deterrent. Yes, deterrent. that's exactly, it's just a little deterrent okay. and make you think a little more, which right. she doesn't have to do. Here, I'll give you another one. Can I ask you something before yeah, you move sure. on? Yeah, So, but when we were 17, we were doing all this shit and you knew... You know, it was all right to do. So are, sure. you, are, are you tormented inside because you understand it a little bit that at well, that age you were trying to get some shit well, past your parents? I was. I started at 17, 18. Not that that makes a difference, but um, put it this way. you The best saying is, show me friends, I'll tell you who you are. Uh, a couple of friends frightened me. Mm. And I'm like, oh, God. And, and you don't want to there, – there's so many uh, – listen – Boys are easy to approach. You call them a retard. You punch them. You, uh, you whatever. You call them out. You tell a girl the wrong way, and her fingers down her throat, and she's got a razor, and they're cutting oh, themselves. Right, right, right. And you're dealing with a whole different. <laughs> what are you doing in there? <laughs> you don't like my friends. <laughs> 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 All I said was, <laughs> that's all, all I said was, Jeez. you should wear those shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you cutting yourself? I don't feel anything. <laughs> what, what's just? I thought this was a conversation. How, what just went down? <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> what is, so, why are all the band aids missing again? It's, oh my it's, uh, god. And, you, and guys you, and boys just are different, you think? Boys are different. Retard. What are you doing? Uh, 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 fuck, I'm doing that. Uh, yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. They're retarded. It's fine. <laughs> A girl, you can. What are you retarded? Uh, uh, why are you slicing your leg? What are you doing? Oh, wow. Why yeah. are you tattooing your forehead? Dad sucks. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? I don't So. It's it's a whole tip. But thank God. Thank God. I will say this. Um. She's, she's got a great soul and she's all that stuff, but she just, you know what? It's like Star Wars. It really is. It's, 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 she's, she's got the good force, but it's, it's always like, feel the yeah. power of the dark side. Yeah. Just don't come home with a guy doing Vader's voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had that conversation. <laughs> so. Um, here, here's a great one, too. Yeah. They, they went on a cruise. She gets pissed that I talk about this, but whatever. I'm really doing it for the parents. Um, she comes home for the, she's on a cruise with grandma and her cousin. 
I know they're going to hang out. I know they're going to drink. I, 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 when I went on a cruise, I, had a, I was out of control as a teenager. It was a blast. So I wanted her to have a great time. Um, and then and there's this fine line. You go have a great time. Nobody gets hurt. You don't hurt yourself. And you, you don't get arrested. You don't get your attention. And don't get caught, stupid. Don't get caught. It's that easy. Seven in the morning, the day they dock. Now, my wife... She's the bad cop. I'm the good cop. She's the bad cop. I come in, I offer you the cigarette, which today is like, listen, I'm going to try to get your iPod back. I'm going to try to get your phone back. Uh, I'll try to get you to see your boyfriend, but I really need some help here. I need some details where, where she just comes in. I'm taking the door off the hinges. I'm sending you to boarding school. I'm cutting your hair. You're never leaving again. You will be shipped to Asia and work in a fucking village the rest of your life. Look, easy, easy. Easy. Um, D is, oh, man, the nostrils come out. She's hardcore. She wants to take the door off the hinges. Uh, you should have should seen her yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> D, D, D comes over because this big bet. We tra you know, we grew up with money. Well, I grew up with nothing. These kids grew up with money. So for 10, for 10 years, we had maids and shit. Well, now we don't have them. So the kids are like, ugh. I gotta do the kitty litter, <laughs> and you would think I'd had a chain on them with a prod. Like, get on your knees and scoop that shit, you fuck! <laughs> I can't believe I'm... <laughs> I can't believe they're making me do this. <laughs> and um, so <laughs> they're going through a training process. So she just bought a prom dress, whatever, like five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks prom Jeez. dress, right? So D comes in a room. She's like. They are disrespectful. They won't do the dishes. All I asked was for her to put the food away. And that's all she did. She doesn't do the dishes, the laundry, the desk, the bag of dine, and fuck her and take the phone. They're not allowed out for three years. Like, listen. And then the little ones come down. The, my oldest come down. She's making me pay for my prom dress. It's just it's <laughs> fucking madness. But what I was getting to, the, the cruise. Now, D's right next to me, okay? Now, the way the plan we have is, if you're in trouble, come to me, give me the whole fucking lowdown, and I'll present it to the bad cop, <laughs> <laughs> okay? Because I can't hold things from the bad cop. But I'll present it in a way where she's not going to fly off the handle. And I'm with you, see, come to me first, trust me. Well, play, the phone's ringing at 7 in the morning. I'm right next to D sleeping. And she, hello, <laughs> Dad. Oh, oh my God, Jesus no. Christ, what's going? On? Dad, something. I made a really bad mistake. Oh no. Oh my God, this is this is not good. Okay, go. What team does he play for? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. And I, I, my mind was all over the place. She's on a yeah. ship. My mind's all over the place. Um, I go. Okay, what's what's. What's the matter? She's like, are you next to mom? Now, pff, pff, the phone just rang, so these eyes are like, bing! <laughs> She's why is that her? Why is she crying? And everything's good. She's like, I got it. So I can't even hide where I'm going. I go in the bathroom. Like, What's the matter? She goes, I didn't know that when you take alcohol out of the mini bar, you had to pay for it. <laughs> oh, so I, no. I wanted, to, I wanted to giggle immediately. <laughs> And laugh immediately. But um, long story short, she's like, so I left cash in a note, but I, I don't know if I should do that. Like, no, 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 no. She's like, I need your credit card. So I gave it. To, I said, all right, just fill out the paper and, and with the credit card thing. And by the time she got, I had this vision of she went in the room. They trashed the room. People threw up. It was at the end of the day. She, she, her and her cousin, she was the gopher. She'd go in, grab the alcohol, bring it to where all the kids are hanging out, and they drank. The last night, I'm like, that's it? Yeah. That's all that went down? Don't worry about it. That's it's, easy. Yeah, but her her mentality, like she's going to college, and she'll go, what <laughs> she say? The other day, Dad, did you know that um, freshmen in college, the percentage of people that die and get sick from alcohol poisoning is through the roof? Oh yeah. She's like, so that's why I should go to more parties now. So I can 
<laughs> the and, and that's the and that's how right. oh that's how hard I laughed yeah, in her of course, face. Of course. Like where, what do you think uh, you're doing in college? You think I'm paying for you to go have a party? Oh god. Yeah. So it's, what what did D say about the the, the cruise thing? Is she cool with it? Yeah, we just made them go to the grandmothers, give the money back, and apologize to the two of them for breaking their trust and all that jazz. But you know, it was at the end of the day, that's very minor. Mm. If that's all I got to worry about, I'm fine. She's a good kid. That's funny, man. So they're doing well, your daughters. So far, I just I'm always the on ones guard. You're on guard, twenty four seven. So the one is a senior going to college next year. No, junior. Oh, okay. Now we got to start checking out colleges. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's crazy. You can never go wrong with that sound. That's a great no, sound. It's, really funny. it's a great sound. It <laughs> makes me feel like a man when I'm with a girl and she makes that sound. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel like we, she's struggling. <laughs> uh, Judd Apatow is going to come in a little bit. I want to squeeze in this plane story before we get Judd in here. What the fuck happened? A, a, a mini explosion and then the guy got sucked out of the plane? Sucked out of the plane. Was it a, was it Where a, was oh this? Oh, God. Where was this? Mogadishu. Yeah. Enough said. What kind of explosion was it? I wonder if it was a, b a bomb on, on the guy. They're not totally sure. Yeah, because it blew out the side of the plane, not where an engine is. Right. If you see where it is, it was like, you know, just it, it wasn't even the emergency door, was it? That pilot said, no uh, sense. pilot said he thought it was a bomb. An aviation expert who looked at photographs of the hole in the fuselage uh, said the damage was consistent with an explosive device. So, all right. What a retard. Fucking Good guy. for him. There's video. There's video of, there, the, of the plane, right? Not of the guy getting sucked out. Not of the out. guy getting sucked out. Yeah, of course not. But if that's the guy that got sucked out, was he the one that possibly had the bomb, though? Possibly, probably, yeah. Probably was blowing a hole in the side of the plane. Right. And I was hoping the whole plane was going to And then just out. him and getting just sucked him out. Getting and just got dick. sucked out. What? Isn't that great? Do you know how stupid you must feel when you're flying out, all of a sudden the plane just keeps going? Like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, nerds. Oh, nerds. oh, shucks. This oh, didn't turn brother. out the way I expected. Oh, this stinks. <laughs> yeah, let's see the video of the plane they had with the hole in it. Make it bigger. Not a lot of people on the plane. No. And there's the hole. So someone filmed it after the fact, obviously. All right. Everyone's pretty calm, considering. So, yeah, yeah, really. Considering calm. there's a hole in the side of the plane that sucks somebody out. Yeah, there's like a guy missing. Why is everyone so calm? And why are all these people flying over Mogadishu? What the fuck are they doing? <laughs> They're just looking out the window. They got their oxygen masks on. They, a lot of them got their phones up. But they're just chilling. They all moved to the back of the plane, obviously. But once they realized, they moved away from that section of the plane, but it's still flying with a hole in it. <laughs> Why isn't anyone yelling or anything? I'd be out of my fucking mind. Well, this is after the move, I'm guessing. This is probably once they realized, okay, we're going to land. Right. Are they all wearing masks? Yeah. Yeah. But the whole time, no, they're, they're not, not even wearing they're masks. They're not even wearing them. So a lot, this is probably the after summer. the cabin pressure is stabilized. Right. But right. the whole time, you got to be thinking, there's a hole in the side of this plane. Uh, could this get worse? Yeah. yeah. I, would, I would say that's a pretty chill. Going. You probably wouldn't take off, though, like that. Oh, probably not. We'll tweet out the picture of the hole in the side. Wow. It's that Dallo that... Airlines. I don't want to fly any airlines with two A's in a row yeah. in the name. <laughs> 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 but it looks like a cartoon thing when you know, really a, cartoon, does. a cartoon character goes through a wall or something. Yeah. yeah. The side of the plane looks like that. Uh, by the way, uh, you had a, a high school principal saying that you're you're nailing the, the teenage shit. Oh. Nailing it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we just tweeted that picture out. Man, there's a way to see deleted text messages through spotlight searching keywords. Oh, I didn't know that. Or you could see deleted text messages by using the SIM card because some of the data remains. All right. Jimmy, you listen to any new metal? You know, um, not really, man. Uh, I know. Not that it's bad. I'm just no, I know. stuck in my ways. I know. It's there's like a lot of new metal out there, though. There is. Do you listen to any? Not really, to be <laughs> honest with you. I know. It's our, it's, we're, we're, it's our age. I mean, oh, by the way, they're I saying... I don't listen to a lot of... Hey, new, what are they saying? It may have been a terror attack foiled by a flight delay, because they're saying they were 10,000 feet. So I'm guessing it might have been something on board the plane or something that something was put that was under a seat. Something that was supposed to be timed. Or put under a seat, timed to 30,000 feet. Which would have made a maybe big worse. difference, maybe? I don't know. Maybe that's what they're saying. Uh, oh, wait... Uh, witnesses on board described the burning body of a man being sucked through a huge hole that a bomb ripped in the fuselage. All right, so they're saying it's a bomb. A mystery blast which tore through the plane killed one person. It may have been a botched terror attack foiled by the delay. Witnesses described the burning body of a man. Oh, I just said that 
it was delayed leaving Somalia, and this means any potential bombs on board, if set to a timer, they explode at a lower altitude, giving the passengers a better chance. The uh, well, so this guy was on fire. I wonder he might have been dead already. Well, he must have been. But if he was burning. It might have been a second before he was sucked out. Right. They shouldn't have let him board if he was on fire. Dude, I've been saying that for months. <laughs> been saying that for yeah, months. They get a little lazy. Yeah, the guys smoke. They probably, you know, well, I bet when they were doing the announcements, they were like, no smoking in the restroom. I bet they looked at him and said, now you know that means you. Delightful. Put yourself out. <laughs> I, I'm just amazed how calm everybody is. I think if that was a flight in America, people would be screaming. Nah, you, you, maybe initially they were. a hole in the plane? I, I would, that I happened already on Aloha Airlines. Right. right. A big piece of the oh, I remember. Was sucked off. I, I was remember on that, that flight. You were? I was holding on. For dear life? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was fine. It, before break, can I see the NAACP video? Sure. This, is, is, this is, I don't want to tell this. This one's wonderful. What is it? Uh, we'll just have the big reveal on okay. the show. It's, oh, it's quick. very quick. Well, it's quick, and then we'll take a break and get Judd Apatow in here. And here? A little later, we got Zach Wilde and yeah. also Stone Cold Steve Austin. We had a mom once a How few years ago. How long the show? He's awesome. Uh, I know. We're going to squeeze in a lot in the next hour and a half. 10.30? It's loading up. It's loading up, this video? Yeah. It's a five-second. How long I got to wait? Here we go. All right, here we go. How long I got to wait? You called those videos? <laughs> Where's the... Uh... Here's, this is the NAACP leader speaking to a reporter. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, can you can you just talk about the uh, nice tits? <laughs> oh, he's a white guy. Lastly, can you can you just talk about the uh, nice tits? Wow, <laughs> he said nice tits <laughs> with a microphone right in his face. Yeah. yeah. Why is there a fucking an old white guy leading the NAACP anywhere? In Phoenix. And, uh, oh, yeah. I get it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's Phoenix. He had to resign. He had to resign for that. Well, oh, he's seven. Okay. He There's told the Phoenix uh, News Times he was really fucking sorry. That was his quote. Yeah, I'm really fucking sorry. He added, "I'm going to slash. I'm really fucking sorry. I'm going to slash my wrist. Better yet, I'm going to throw myself out a fucking window. Except I'm on the first floor." Dude, he's funny. Yeah, he's very disappointed in himself. Nice tits. Jeez. Yeah, that doesn't go over well. No. <laughs> Maybe in the 50s, but not in this day and age. You, you can't say that. Oh, please. Everyone says it. Uh, true. Everyone, everyone, it's... That's ridiculous, it's right? It's just nuts. It's the, the, way, the way people talk is... Uh, you just can't say it to a reporter with a mic on. You just can't say it to a reporter with a mic on and there's cameras. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's When you're giving a speech, it's a bad time to say <laughs> nice tits. Yeah. You gotta, nice tits. you got to choose your spots better. Yeah. He dropped the ball. That's a part. Bad uh, timing, Hammer. Yep. Uh, you're not following the election. I remember asking you the last time. These, no, but I love are, these, listening to the madness. These choices are starting to scare the fuck out of me. Oh, please. Do you, do you, listen, again, it's it's so goofy. Know, it's such a carnival. I know. It's, it's hilarious deep. watching you people get wound up. Well, nothing's going to... Nothing drastic. Who do you think... Right now, you're going to have to put a million dollars. Right now. Now, who you think, now who you want, a million dollars, you will win that million dollars. Who's going to be the president? I think it, I still think it's Hillary's to lose. Absolutely, I think it's I think it's an easy. It is written in the book, sire. <laughs> <laughs> it has been written for many years. If you look at the great dynasty of the Clintons and the Bushes, they all are the Vince McMahons of this country. However, you shall sit and actually think you're voting while you watch the carnival go round and round and glorified by the lights. <laughs> I would like to believe that. Send the thunder. <laughs> I would like to believe that, but why is uh, Jeb Bush doing right, so that's, shitty that? That's the question. It it's, ain't his, his... It's not his time. No, nah, man. He ain't ready. But he looks uh, ridiculous. Trump's the Bushes are look still ridiculous. people are mad at... Listen, the gas price... <laughs> it's a little nice paying a dollar sixty for gas. Pretty When's nice. the last time you did that? Pretty nice. Dollar sixty. In the end, that's all we care about. We want cheap gas, right? Who, that's it. Cheap gas. Happy. That war for oil ruled. Well done. Well, well done. That's right. Well, that, well, I was <laughs> down to a dollar sixty. Dollar sixty uh, a like gallon. Done, done, done. Dun. I got a piss. Yeah, we could pee. We got lots going on. Jimmy's uh, heading out tomorrow for a big gig in Louisville. Yeah, I don't think I'll be here tomorrow. I didn't Louisville. realize my flight was so early because uh, there's only two flights a day. I guess going there, and uh, one does not get me in on time for the show. 
Uh, right. So I'm heading, I, I like to say it with a little local flavor, I'm going Louisville. Oh, Colin Quinn, season two is up. It is. His show is uh, Cop uh, Cop Show season two is nice. up. Nice. He has a show? Yeah, Dude, well, it's, it's on, cool. uh, online. It's great. Is it him as the star? Yes. Yes. Uh, he's, oh, that's awesome. He's the head police officer. i the head police officer. And, um, I, I, have a, I have a very good episode. I saw it and I was very happy. Oh, does he write it and all that? Yes, he does. He had a very quick episode, for too. Co- what do you mean quick? Five, five, like five seven, seven minutes, something like that's that. It? Seven, yeah. eight minutes. I'm trying to remember. But he's got very Steve, quick. Steve Buscemi in this season, Danny Aiello. He's got some really cool people. Chris Rock, um, you know. He call, everyone wants to do this, so season two is now up. It's, it's only seven minutes. It's really good. Yeah. Good for Colin. Yeah. A lot of the criticism. He's got like is, cameras following him, and he kind of gives you the ins and outs of. Uh, so he's dressed like a cop, and uh, like what? What? He's a detective. He's a detective, but yeah. he's he's he's. Uh, I love it. He's being yeah. filmed, and it's just very uncomfortable at times. It's great. It's really good. Yeah. I, I didn't know the second season was uh, up already. Yeah, it went up yesterday. Yeah, he kind of great. comes off like an asshole in it, so it's perfect. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. All right, we'll tweet out the link, but everybody should watch that. That sounds uh, Colin perfect Quinn's for him. Show. It's really good. Like they, somebody should pick it up and make it. I don't know. Maybe try to expand on it. It's that good. So, uh, so where, Jimmy, where, where do I see? Where do I see that? Uh, where do I, where we'll do, give you the link. I forget the. But what is the it website. called? Uh, Cop it's show. It's called Cop Show. But I can go on Colin Quinn's website. I don't know. He has a website. What? Te- technologically, what is he? Ninety? Yeah, Colin is fucking. He's he's around where the Apollo thirteen was. <laughs> so I, other people do it. YouTube. What is What's it? that? It's a YouTube channel. It's yeah, a YouTube he, channel. I think if you just Google Colin I, Quinn I Cop it, Show. Yeah, yeah, it has to be on. So. Go, go, let, I know. thought it was on a website. I mean, it was, but oh, now it's on YouTube. All right, it's yeah. a, it's a, okay. we'll put the link up. Yeah, we're gonna link it out on uh, put the link on our uh, our stuff. Um, Jim Brewer just fucking killing today. He's got the Wilbur Theater this Friday night, right in Boston. That should yeah, fucking I know. sell out, dude. Yeah, it's it's fucking with my ego there. They're crazy. If it, no, I didn't even look see. at your ticket counts, but it, I'm sure you're doing. I'm fine. not doing two shows like Jimmy here. Bing bang bing. But you're doing fine. Wilbur Theater this Friday with uh, Brewer in Boston. Are you kidding? What else are you fucking doing up there? You uh, can't. You can't. Wilbur in Jersey, then Maryland, Long Island, Paramount. Filming some videos or one video for your music re- videos for your all m- day February 13th. Each show. That's awesome for your metal record, which is coming out in May. Is that it? We're gonna put the link up. Yeah. Uh, for Colin, he it's on lstudio.com. Yeah, I thought it's there was a YouTube. website as well. Yeah. Okay, so it's That's, on. Oh, that. All right, whatever. We'll, we'll uh, we just tweet it out. Yeah. Okay, fine. Why well, we take a break? We got Judd Apatow coming in next. Stay there. I just learned that Brewer's doing a fucking podcast, and I didn't even know about it. It's I'm no, downloading. It's only that like sh- five, six episodes. All right. Well, I'm downloading every very fucking excited episode. About it. I want to do your show, you son of a bitch. Whenever you're ready. All right. It's the metal in me. I think we're going to add it to our channel. I'm not even going to ask you. I'm just fucking stealing that one, and I'm throwing it on this channel. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> I'm going to do that. I was emailing Don. I'm hoping we can make an announcement by the end as to when it's airing. Like, the end of like, today's show. Like this weekend we'll I'm get trying. one? Yep. I, I, fucking A. I, I'm happy you're back doing this shit. Yeah, you know, I had to find something that, that, I'm, that will get me going at least once a week, and this gets me going once a week yeah the, the, uh, weekly podcast yes that's one i would listen to because you do things differently and yeah. you got to do it about something that gets you going yes that's the thing like for me it's being helpful <laughs> right. doing a podcast about being helpful. i like listening to you yeah just a podcast about being helpful and people call in there and like jimmy i got this problem she oh i don't mean that i'm gonna do a new one just about helping people well that's right. why <laughs> that's why i was laughing i, yeah, I, I know helpful. where you were going but jimmy is actually helping people with his uh, I know. show I know, I like that. I listen to it. It's, we're going to rename it. Just called Being Helpful. Being Helpful with, <laughs> with Jim Norton. Call no, now. Just with, being helpful. With your problems. Uh, yeah, so the podcast is very cool. How do they get it? Just the the usual places? You go on my website. It's on... JimBrewer.com. Yeah, Facebook. Action, I, yeah, Facebook. Yeah, I put the link everywhere. I make it very easy for everyone. I swear I didn't know. I can't wait to listen to them. I love it. I think they're... they're f- it's based... It's funny. It's... um. And you're doing a little music me- with it. Music, but it's not, um, like, when I have bands on, I do, it's, and I tell them, too, like, I get a lot of the newer bands. I get listen, man, I don't listen to this music. I'm telling you, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't listen to Screamo stuff. I don't get it. Um, so, and then I would do, ga- I'll do just g- stuff I used to do on, on uh, I used to have Metal Month when I was on Satellite. But it was very frustrating because the crew I was with didn't really get metal, and it used to drive me fucking nuts. And um, I would have, you know, I had Halford in. I'd sing with Halford, and we're doing game shows with these fucking guys. Right. 
And I'm like, is there a mar- you know, is there a market for this? Is there metalheads like, fuck it, I'm yeah. doing. We're just going to start doing the sketches on the metal and me, and the talk is three of my band members are in there. So you kind of get to know uh, the band members, and it's they're funny. They're and, funny as hell. And as long as the jokes are there, which, which of, course, it's funny of, course they, of course they will be. Exactly. It's going to be successful no matter what you're talking about. But good, it, good you, you. you've had Jamie Just on the show. He's, he's, he's very awesome. good. Awesome. Yeah, I couldn't. He's very good. I, uh, he's probably he, listening right he, now. He well, he was, a, a he was on... He came on for an episode. We had a great time. He's big time into Slayer. And then I went on his, and I was on there for over an hour. And I, just, I was like, holy shit, it's an hour? We, we can be doing this for 10 straight weeks. Yeah, he, he knows how to do this shit. Wow. Yeah. He's, I really We've only really had him on once so far, I think. It's been a while, too. So, Jamie, fucking text me, man. So do you tell back them? back on the show. They had, like, the real dog, like that speed metal, which a lot of it I don't get, the screaming. I'll I tell say, them. I'll say, this is too loud for me. Dude, I... Yeah, well, here. I just, don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. It's not it. my cup of tea. I can't understand what you're saying. This is no Ronnie James. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, for like instance, that, what, like what we throat singing? <laughs> no. But one of the, one of the sketches we do, and we're gonna we're gonna film it at the. Um, I'll tell you Apollo? what. Apollo. Okay. Nah, yeah, the Apollo. They're gonna love it. We do metal monologues, so we pick songs mm-hmm. that even if you don't know what the metal song like. And in, in the new generation, they think our music's more like classic rock, like the Beatles, right? Yeah. Like they listen to Priest and Ozzy, and they go, "That's me- that's metal." Where when we grow up, like this is fucking metal. Yeah. But to them, it's a joke. It's like listen to Genesis right now. So we like, for instance, one of the, one of the episodes we do "Living After Midnight," the words of "Living After Midnight." But you have to do it as a, come in as a monologue, and we did it as an older couple, and was fucking nice. arguing with each other. It was hilarious, Very and you cool. would never know it's the song. Right? Okay. You'll like it, man. Okay. I, I we will uh, definitely check it out. Uh, is Judd here? He's, he's on, on his way. Ball. Oh, he's on. All right. So we can't really start anything else. Uh, don't forget, Jimmy's hit, hitting the road, uh, Louisville this weekend. Yeah, I don't know if it's just. Uh, I guess people are buying tickets. I hope Louisville uh, Laughing Derby, and then the theater tour starts next week. Yeah, what are you doing Chicago. in Louisville? What are you doing in Louisville? The you Laughing can't come Derby. Come see North. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. We do. Me. The Laughing Derby. Get your tickets now. Uh, and then Brewer's going to be at the Wilbur uh, Theater this Friday. And with that, we uh, we say good morning to Judd Apatow. What's up, Judd? Hey, Judd. Welcome. Hey, hey, Judd. How are you? How are you, man? What's going on, buddy? I saw the first two episodes. Oh, excellent. No, actually, I saw... Uh, no, it's even better. I saw, I saw the first four. I saw so, the first I mean, four. Oh, good, good. That, that means I liked it, because usually you, you try to see one so you can talk about it a little bit, but I was like, this is all right, man. I it's, like it. It's uh, it's built to, to watch in, I think, two sittings. How many episodes total? We're on the air now, right? We are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a casual attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we like that, though. <laughs> we like that. We try to get dirt out of people as soon as they can. Yeah, good, good, yeah. <laughs> so Tell us your dark sex secrets. Right. 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 Anything could have happened in that one moment there. Oh, yeah. Could have been a career ender. I, I guess that was a weird way to start, but I, I, I watched four episodes last night. I was excited to talk to you about it. It's, uh, it's very good, man. It's called oh. Love, and it's on Netflix. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's weird. It's like making a five-hour movie, which is what I've always been trying to do, <laughs> <laughs> minute by minute. <laughs> it's people always say, you know, why are the movies so long? And I always feel like, because I'm trying to go deeper with the characters, and I need, I need that extra 12 minutes. It's only like eight minutes or 12 minutes, and people say they're long, and then they go home and they'll watch like 11 episodes of Breaking Bad right. in a row. <laughs> yeah. And at some point, I realized, oh, I should be doing that thing. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's been really, really fun to be allowed to. Is it hard for you to, like, is it, do you like going long because you get married to the materials? Like, it's hard to, like, ah, I like that, I like that. And you just, it's really hard to, to chop anything. I, you know, I don't know. I think it's one of those things you decide later whether or not it was a wise choice or not. Mm-hmm. Because when you're in the editing room, there does come a moment where you think, if I lose this scene, you won't understand this about that person. Right. And, and you go, I can't cut it. But then you also know, I'm past the line that people want to be in a movie theater right. next to kids texting. Right. At home, you'll watch a four-hour movie. You don't it's care. all that. No one right. has ever said, "I saw your movie at home and it was long." Right. It said, "Go to the movie theater." Sucks most of the time. Everyone's loud and making noise, and, well, well, and things are flashing on their phones. So, uh, but, and I like long movies. Someone said to me, "You're you're showing respect for your characters when you think they're worth a little more." 
more time. So I don't know. I'm probably a bad judge because if a movie's good, I'll watch it all day. Yeah. I, I don't care. I was surprised right. Hateful Eight was, uh, what, over three hours, but it, you didn't care. Did you see it? Hateful I haven't Eight? seen it yet. It's really I'm pretty good. bad this year. I haven't seen You haven't seen a lot of it's movies. Really good. Much. I, I enjoyed it, but yeah. I was surprised that they said, yeah, we're just going to put it out as a very long movie. Well, do you use the same age. editor every time? Like Tarantino used the same. Uh, she was she passed away, and she was apparently a really big part of his success. Yes, because she would chop things that he didn't want chopped, mm -hmm. and they would argue. But you know, they said she was usually right. Do you yeah. have one person you usually use? Uh, two d different people. There's a great guy named Bill Kerr, and and he edited Super Bad mm -hmm. and and Trainwreck, and then this this guy Brent White who did Knocked Up and. This is forty and right. and uh, forty old virgin and and they're great. I mean, it's it, it's really fun. And then you, you know you show the, you know the funny thing is you'll show your movie to a test audience. You know we'll go do that. You go out in the valley and you show it to three hundred people, and uh, sometimes it tests better longer, where like mm -hmm. you cut eight ten minutes out and suddenly they don't like it as much. So it's it's a uh, it's a difficult thing how, to figure out. How nerve wracking is that? And are you just in the back of the theater? I'm, in, their I'm in the middle of the theater because if you're in the back, you can't hear the last because they'll right. go forward. But then they you want to be in the center. I but, ask that because oh. then they know you're in the center, and then are they laughing a little harder because they know you're right there? Is that? A, it, I don't know. I try to slip in, but you sneak in. I I don't think anyone would laugh extra to help me out. <laughs> <laughs> right. What are they getting out of that the other day? Like he saw me laugh. I don't. Know, I don't know. I, I, I think that caught, might last for like a minute. He might like, put Dude. Me I think you get caught up in the energy though. I've been to a whole bunch of these, and you feel like you're you're caught up in the energy yeah. and you're like, it's like stand up though it'll die so fast if it's not working yeah right. like there is that energy and you feel it sometimes like you're in a preview and the place is like rocking like the who we're about to come out <laughs> but eight minutes in if you don't have the goods that room is so disappointed like it, it'll drop so fast it's like when seinfeld goes on like you know they give him like, i think he's even said they give him like five minutes of yeah. like you're a celebrity and an icon and then it's like okay now what and yeah, that's that's why they like going on in places unannounced because you want the honest reaction and material to sure. test it so yeah you yeah. want an honest reaction yeah like last night of the cellar i Disappointed the crowd. Oh, did, you <laughs> oh, did, you have, did you eat one? That's I, nice. No, no, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't eat it, but you know, it's like the end of a show, and then Hannibal's there, and Todd Barry, and, 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 and uh, Judah, uh, and and you just feel like they've had enough. I'm the last person. I shouldn't. I'm not going to bring this home, like tear the house down. Yeah. Like, it just said to the crowd. This is going to be a slow landing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to come yeah, down be nice a little and smooth, bit. Yeah, this, is, right. no, this is going to be a <laughs> Somalia <laughs> Airlines landing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> With the hole in the plane. Yeah. Uh, tell the worst, man, when you're fucking eating it and you know that they all agree. Like, like there's been times when you'll hear somebody say something like, uh, uh, this is not good. You'll like overhear it uh, because the room is quiet and yes, you know the, other people. But, uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but all you guys, uh, you're not bothered by bombing, which I've, well, always I don't like found, it. I've always found fascinating. But you, you accept it like it's just part of you know the process. You get used to it, yeah. When I was doing the book, Sick in the Head, which yeah. is the interviews with all the comedians, John Stewart talked about leaning into the bomb. And I never thought about that because I always didn't want to bomb. Yeah. I was terrified of it. I used to enjoy watching Norm MacDonald on Weekend Update because when he would eat it, he would slow down. Right. He would start punishing the crowd. And you could tell he wasn't yeah. feeling bad. He was yeah. getting angry. Right. And John Stewart said, yeah, you got to lean into it. you got to, like, love it. And it really helped me change my head and go, oh, yeah, I guess you can kind of luxuriate in it. You can own it, I guess. I've seen Norm take some beatings, and it's the funniest thing yeah. you've ever seen. He, I think he enjoy, when he's doing it, he enjoys it. He oh, absolutely sure. enjoys it. Yeah. Yeah, go thank you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us about love. So love is, um, you know, I was working uh, with Paul Rust, uh, who was actually in, um, he was in uh, Tarantino's Nazi movie. Right. Oh. Uh, Glorious Bastards. Glorious yeah, Bastards. I was thinking, I was going to say, I was going to say Intolerable Bastards. I don't know what. <laughs> and, uh, which, guy, which guy is he? Uh, the Jew. Oh, shit. No, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah There's one guy they CGI'd him all over the fucking yeah. film. Yeah, he, he's one of them. And, uh, and Paul, um, you know, is a great writer and a great actor. And, and his uh, wife and him, Leslie Arfin, were saying they wanted to do something about relationships. And I said, you know, I have this idea in a notebook. Actually, I, I called the idea train wreck. I just stole the, I the idea for the name and gave it to Amy. But the idea was for a TV show that would follow every step of a relationship. So if they met each other mm -hmm. and talked for 10 seconds... That would be an episode, and then if he thinks about calling her but doesn't, 
that maybe the whole episode they wouldn't talk. And if, and if they broke up, maybe a, a whole season they wouldn't even see each other. Right. And then maybe another season wow. they would see each other like again. Like in real time almost. Yeah, like a real time relationship, almost like knocked up as a series, but a real time thing. Yes. And that's what we did. And I think it came out great. It's, it's Gillian Jacobs from Community. She's great in it. And uh, it's really, it's, it's, it's really and, interesting. And it, it's weird because you, you do put it on and it's hard to shut it off. They do that thing in Netflix where they, they almost start the next one yeah, before the other yourself. one ends. Yeah, it's the worst because you automatically go, right. right, there's no way to turn it off and go, all right, fuck it, I'll there catch it, is. it tomorrow. Just, just click on play. Yeah, it's great. They added very well there. for another 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. I like Paul Russ a lot. I didn't really know much about him. He has kind of a McLovin feel to him a little bit yeah, in, this, it, in this. And he's a big, you know, he's been on uh, a big kind of legend at uh, UCB for a long time. And, and he's really funny. And it's, it's, it's a simple show, but hopefully it works. And, and we're doing the second season now. It, it shot beautifully, and I, I like how you use uh, music in it. Yeah, I love your music picks. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's the most fun part for me is is picking music. I right. just the fact that you get to do that. You kind of feel like you're collaborating with bands, even yeah. though you never meet them. Yeah, you know, you're just like, oh man, I feel like me and Van Halen just had a moment. Together. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been priced out of a song? Like, I want to use this, but the band is just not going to be reasonable and let us use it for a price that we think is appropriate. Yeah, and the one that breaks my heart, it kills me. As we were doing Freaks and Geeks, and we were canceled, but we had a Neil Young oh, in, the, in the punk episode. So when the show ended, it, right now it's Dean Martin, but it was only Love Can Break Your Heart oh, nice to this montage. Okay. It made you ball. It was incredible. We send the episode to Neil Young. He approves it, and he wants a fair amount of money, but not like insane. Yeah, you know, on the higher end, but fair. The show gets canceled. But now we're fi finishing the show, and we know maybe it'll be somewhere someday, but maybe not. We didn't know people would yeah. put it out on TV, like a canceled half-a-season show. And they said, well, Judd, if you want the song, you'd have to write the check. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was thirty grand or fifteen grand for a show that may never air again or go on DVD. And I was like, yeah, I guess that's not a good idea. Oh. And I, I lose oh. sleep in the middle of the night. About because it's been canceled, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we would have been great. What and song did you end up using? A Dean Martin, uh, uh, you're nobody till somebody loves you. Oh, oh right, 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 okay. Which works pretty well. Uh, but there's, there's some of those every once in a while. Right, right. In the new show, Love, you, you turned me on to Jet by Paul McCartney and Wings. Oh, that's right. I haven't heard that song in a while. I'm like, fuck yeah. I remember, I remember how good this song yeah, at, was. At a party, like a dad band plays yeah. Jet by Paul McCartney. They just went like, around. But the guy who's the lead guy in that dad band is E from the band the Eels. Oh, I didn't know that. Who is unbelievable. So yeah. He's trying to play bad, but he's great. He's good. It's a good scene. And, and, and you know, I got to say, you show tits, too, which isn't bad. <laughs> you know, we're on Netflix. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you're, you're on Netflix. I, I've had this discussion over the years, like, Showing tits in movies was turned out uh, became a bad thing for some reason. Well, there was nice. a moment where it became almost like a Porky's type of idea, right. yeah, yeah. and uh, or like a, a Skinamax thing. But I feel like I've shown enough penises <laughs> to balance it out. Not a boy, <laughs> <laughs> but you get to see a little out of I'm respectful. I show all the parts. Good. That's nice. Women always complain. How come there's no dick? Like women, women have always complained. Like you'll see a boy, but you never see a, a guy's dick. And there was a there was a good sex scene in uh, one of the earlier episodes, and uh, my son was next to me on his Minecraft, and I'm like, oh fuck, this is really awesome. Oh. I had to turn down the sound though. <laughs> How old is your son? Five. Oh, I, I have, I have to be responsible. This, I've done made this mistake. Like I'm watching Louie, and I'm with my daughter, and I'm trying to think. Maybe she was, maybe she was four, fifteen. Maybe she's fifteen, and it's the episode with the Chloe Sevigny like masturbates under a table in a coffee shop and we're watching the show and the scene starts and i'm like okay i'm not gonna just run and shut it off like a panic dad like she can't handle it it'll probably be like seven seconds yeah. and it goes on <laughs> And uh, it's a really long scene, and I finally, I said, I just had to turn to my daughter and go, I'm really uncomfortable right now. I should be shutting this. But it, It's funny you say yeah. that, because that's exactly what happened last night. I'm yeah. thinking, all right, how, how long can she possibly moan for? Exactly. He's distracted, and then about 10, 15 seconds of moaning, I'm like, oh, fuck, all right, got to turn this down. But you got to give them a better, because they don't understand it. Five, just give them a different reason. Like, what's wrong with her? Oh, it's just cancer. You know, keep it like that. <laughs> <laughs> just get you anything. He never looked up, but I was like, I got to I gotta do the right thing. But I went back and... Uh, I turned up the volume and watched it again, just so you know. <laughs> just I so did. You I did. I did that. Well, that makes you debate like, 
Is masturbation bad? Should my family understand what this is? Yeah. You know what I really... I, I Everyone think, does it. <laughs> I, I think it's a future... I, I don't think it's the first episode, but uh, when they're hanging around and just doing theme songs for movies, mm -hmm. that's some nice writing right there, Judd. That was oh, yeah, awesome when they're figuring out the song for uh, Perfect Storm. Yeah, they do this funny thing. I guess Paul Russ does it in real life where they'll have like a party with all these guys who play instruments and they try to write the theme song to movies that have no theme song. Like such <laughs> yeah, titles. Wow, song. that's freaking brilliant. <laughs> I, 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 I looked at that as a radio bit. I'm like, fuck, why don't we that's think of that years bit. ago? Like Isn't the closing it? song to Carlito's Way. <laughs> right. <laughs> So the perfect storm. You should have been nicer to Benny. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. They're sitting around Funny. just drinking beers and doing bong hits, trying to figure out the theme song for Perfect but, Storm. I, I really enjoyed that scene. But will it? Would, would it do happen with like Apocalypse Now? Like they had this is the end. They had the yeah. doors, but there's no theme written around it. So would they do it for for movies that already had a song, or it had to be with no song at all? I don't think they have very tight rules. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I really am acting like this is a fucking official radio contest. Someone comes. <laughs> Someone comes up with a movie, they start laughing like, oh, yeah, this would be perfect, and then they go, they go with it. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think you got a nice show on your hands, Joe. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad. It's on, it's on Netflix. It's called uh, Love. What we, else about it? They did a lot of pot smoking, and uh, dialogue's good. It's, when it's you write fantastic. an episode, too, like you said, you write like you, this is an entire relationship. So will you get like, uh, okay, I see this scene, I see that scene, or do you kind of go chronologically in your head, or can you jump from episode to episode, write a scene, okay, that'll be episode seven, or this will be earlier? How does your head work with that? It's almost like, uh, you know, we do the same thing at Girls where you just you just get a big whiteboard and you list every character mm. and then you just put the numbers of episodes across the top and you just slowly try to figure out, like, the arc of what would happen to them each season. And it's like a oh. checkerboard that slowly gets filled in, like, oh, then in episode five, she needs to meet that guy. Then in episode nine, she punches him in the face. And, and then slowly it there. fills in. And then you change things as you write. But... Uh, but that's usually how it happens. So it's a basic outline. So this way you're not writing in episode one. Uh, okay, you know, and then she goes to Zimbabwe. And you're like, no, yes. that's stupid. <laughs> yeah. I'm cutting out all this stuff. Exactly. Have. Okay. I mean, it's best, even more with a Netflix show, I think uh, you're thinking, oh, people are watching like five of these in a row. And you have to think about the experience of sitting there watching five. Because if episode two and three feel very similar... You go, oh, that wouldn't be fun. It has to, right. it, it, oh, wow. it has to be like evolving and changing, but being the part of one organic thing. And I've never thought that way before, so it's been interesting because I'm a fan of it. Like I love Narcos, and, oh, and you know, there's a lot of these shows that I will. So you got to start past. thinking that people are binge watching, and you, so you yeah. have to put it together in a, a different way. Well, that's why FX is again. That's the only way they can do it. That this OJ stuff. Uh, yes, it's, I, it's I've really seen six great. of them. Yes, yeah, so, so, so have we. Yeah. You like Excellent. it, right? It's really good. I mean. I always feel bad watching things like that because I know it's real. I yeah. live like right around the corner from all of it. Like that's exactly where I live, and uh, I feel bad that like it's become light entertainment. That's what Brewer was saying. Yeah, Brewer. That's what he was saying. So when I we started, started off. Like yeah. I, it, that's if that's my sister. Yes. Or if that's someone in my family, I don't want Hollywood making money off that shit. Even though. I know it's entertaining. Sure. It pisses me the fuck off. Yeah, I think it just that pisses me off. It's it, dark and dirty. It's tough. But the difference between me and you is I still will enjoy every second of it. <laughs> yes. Right. I'll yes. watch it. I'll know right. it's wrong and I can write an essay why it's wrong. But at least you said it. But I but I do have that feeling but it is part of our history sure. yeah. and it is about larger issues in Los Angeles and race in, in, in California. And, and the trial. The it's more well, about the trial and, and, and what they went through the, the, the I'm I'm interested to see what these attorneys went through, all these yeah. giant ego attorneys. But but watching it week to week is going to be hard, like because you're so used to Netflix now, where a show like Love comes on, you watch him. It's hard to wait another you week. You get mad now. Yeah, yeah. Like when a new show ridiculous. comes on, you're like, I gotta <laughs> wait. <laughs> and I think some people will wait to the end and then to binge it, so the ratings get all screwed up because yeah, people right. are just waiting. But yeah. it's very well done, and uh, and John Travolta as Shapiro is I love hysterical. Him. I fucking <laughs> love him. <laughs> Shapiro didn't act like that at all, by the way. Oh, he's, he <laughs> he's like a real kind of a, a, a almost like a. Like, he had, like, kind of a tough edge to him. He's playing it very, very kind of, like, trippy light. But it's an amazing performance. It's really fun to when watch. When he first hits, he took me out of it a little bit. I had to get used to him <laughs> yeah. as Shapiro at first. But uh, I'm yeah. liking it. Whose performances you really like in this? I mean, Sarah Paulson as much amazing Clark is incredible. She is, it's so <clears throat> fun to watch. And I remember that from the trial. You know, I was only, you know, I was writing in, and I guess I wasn't even doing stand-up then. But the year of the OJ trial, I was just home. 
Mm -hmm. And I saw every second, literally every second of the trial. And I remember that feeling like, oh, these are two, not young people, but they're not... They're not like these mega rich lawyers. Yeah. And this is about like two scrappy people who aren't getting paid much money, who don't have this life trying to beat the, the, the dream, powerful, team. dream team. And you felt for them like, come on, you can you can get this point across. And then they, they just got beaten at every turn. And what's interesting in that uh, the miniseries is when OJ is doing the freeway chase and he's got the gun to his head, we all forgot that at that moment we were like, well, obviously he did it. If you didn't right. do it, you don't like drive around in your car with a gun right. to your head, <laughs> right, and right. money with a and a cash, mask right. and stuff. Right. And, well, and, I, I can disagree with that. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and that all got tossed. I mean, if that didn't get tossed, yeah. it wasn't in the trial. Mm -hmm. uh, he probably would have been convicted. You would assume. No, maybe not. No, maybe they, not. They, they, the jury didn't want to convict him. I think what happened was well, that wouldn't have made any difference because would but he just didn't want to get railroaded by the police. That would have been the way they they sold it to themselves. I think this the jury just didn't. I think they they wanted an out, and I think that there were so many mistakes with evidence handling. Even though we all knew he was guilty, it's almost like uh, it was giving them the excuse. It's, it's like it it gave them the excuse they wanted to go. Uh, they, they, there was room for doubt. Because there's that one detective who took some of the evidence home. Oh, oh the Adder. shoes. <laughs> he took the shoes yeah, home. Yeah, that's, that's where they get Ben Adder or he's, Dennis Fung didn't handle things well. They were like, did you ever take the evidence home before? And he's like, no. no. Oh, God. Not your whole life? Yeah. yeah. Just that day? And Furman hurt them, too. <laughs> yeah. Furman hurt them a lot because, and Chris Darden was right, don't put this guy in the... So they, then, they made a lot of mistakes. The glove not fitting. The glove not fitting is a biggie. And then oh, Marsha Clark wonder. and them are just in shock. Like, wh why wouldn't you tell them to try to uh, put the glove on differently? Could you put the glove on? Like, what? why would... And then they, would you see OJ that? had plastic on his hand to begin sure, with, yeah. so that would make it a little tighter fit. And But they couldn't work out of that one. It's yeah. like Furman became the most successful of all of them. He really yeah. did. He was just a, like a confident guy who just afterward yeah. was had no issue just being out in the public... Being that guy, yeah, and the way he writes novels or, or, or no true crime books is that what he writes? Oh, I don't even know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I haven't I haven't followed him much. But I was I was only saying that the it's weird to watch something that way as opposed to Netflix. I have no desire to wait a week. Like yeah. I want to watch things in a row, binge watch them. Yeah, but do we appreciate them as much that way? I don't know. I like that when I girls so. is on, you got to debate it for a week and you know talk about what you liked and what shocked you. And yeah. I, I feel like and Sopranos was like that. It would have been bad to bang through Sopranos. I think we all needed to think about what happened. Yeah, and so good yeah. We, we were saying this the other day. Remember the season would end and you you knew you had over a year. Oh. Absolutely, to be a new president in office when the president came back it, on. It was way over a year sometimes. No. Like Eighteen months. Brutal. Can you imagine well, that in this day and age? That was the longest well, one. Now, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. For a show on network, it's like you wait from like May to September, October. Not, that's Our show that's drops tough, in either. February and then uh, next February. So, And if you watch it in one day or two days, you're really waiting a year. It's not right. spread out over watching it over we, four months. We, we were talking to Bill Burr about F is for Family, and he's like, I worked for years on this, and you could, you could swallow the whole thing up in a weekend. <laughs> Does that bother you that... You, you put all yeah. this time and effort in, and people are watching it within maybe two, three days tops. I think that uh, I have a larger issue, which is there's so much of everything, sometimes I feel like I shouldn't do anything. Like, I feel like everyone is eating everything so fast, and I don't know if it's in my you know, head or not. I was watching these documentaries about Mike Nichols, and they were talking about The Graduate, and that really mm. stuck with us all. I mean, we've talked about it for 45 years, and... I don't know if we will ever do that again about anything. And I started to go, what's the point? Even if you love it, if you forget about it two days later for me to put in that much work. But that's, you know, that's our job. I mean, it's, uh, but it's weird. It's weird that, you know, like my kids, if they like a band, they'll go online and in one <laughs> night listen to every song they ever recorded and then never do it again. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's right. it. Right. right. That's it. So yeah. I don't know. So you're like, if it's not going to resonate for, for 30 years, it's almost like it doesn't feel like it's worth it. But then again, more people will see it immediately than would have seen it at one point, so maybe it all balances out. I don't a know. A little bit, yeah. but as far as music goes, when we were growing up, you had to, you had to wait and, and, and build up your money to go to the record store to you know sure. get another album to listen to, and not these kids, man. Like my whole childhood, I think by the end of my childhood, I might have had 80 records. After yeah, you know, about right. 13 years in yeah. school... I had a, it was like that wide, yeah, about a foot, yeah. foot of records and a, a milk. That's you know, about milk. Yeah, maybe Chicago two. greatest hits. Linda Ronstadt greatest hits. Yeah. Kind of hip record. Wow, do we have different records. <laughs>
<laughs> I didn't see that coming either, Jim. <laughs> 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 but yeah. It, but yeah, and you would play them over and over. And I just bought a you know a, a turntable for the first time since I was like seventeen. Does it sound different? Because you get like people say, yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. I can't can tell. you can you hear the difference, or do you just like the nostalgia of it? I don't know because I never had good speakers since I was seventeen. So I don't know if it's the speakers at the turntable, but it is the. And I bought a really good system. I hadn't had one in ever. And you know, you put on a Led Zeppelin record, and you go, "Wow, it really sounds like they're in the room when you have right. the sound right." And right. and I don't know what what part of it is that. So you had somebody come in and do it for you, right, and and fix it the way you wanted it, and acoustically. I I was just I I was at Jim Carrey's house, and he had this stereo system, and it sounded amazing. And I just said, "Oh, I'll just I'm just gonna get that." I'm so dumb, I would never figure out what to do. Right, right, right. So I just said, "Okay, I'll get what he has," and uh, and it's been great. But you also. You forget, like, oh, each side's 20 minutes, and i got to get up like you're constantly. <laughs> <laughs> you're all used to this loop that like never turn ends. it over. Right. Okay. So what album did sounded better on vinyl than it did on? I don't you know. I never used to listen to Radiohead, ever. I, I, you know, I don't know. I just didn't get into it. Then you put it on in a good sound system, and you just go, I, I think I understand what everyone's talking about. But, yeah, a lot of the old stuff. There's old Queen albums you put on, and you yeah. can't believe yeah. how good they sound. Radio the Crackle. Radiohead, the bands, is one of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah. You've gone through that. I'm yeah, sure, but all I'm, that stuff in rainbows. It's, it's amazing. I got into Radiohead late, too. Way, way late. But I'm, I'm not that smart. I never. I, it takes me a while on certain things. I'm like, always late. Yeah. I discovered the Ramones two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I really did. I should be fucking beheaded. Yeah. Two years ago, yeah. I'm like, wow, we're a happy family. It's a great song. Yeah. But once in a while, you just, you know. In 15 years, you're going to hear the Buzzcocks for the first time. <laughs> um, who are the Buzzcocks? I've heard of them. Uh, Marin hosted, there was a show called Nevermind the Buzzcocks. Yes. Not connected or is? Uh, no. Well, no, not okay. connected. All right. I don't think so. Cool. So I'm, I don't know TV or music. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how, uh, how's Amy doing? She's gone through a little, little shit lately. Well, well, so and we were, all, we were on it. Jimmy got to interview her. Oh, yeah, I listened to that. And she uh, defended her points. It's a funny thing. I mean, because Amy and I talked about it. I talked about this with Lena before Girls aired. There's just a cycle of build up and then attack in the media because you could only praise people for so long. And almost out of boredom, it all shifts to looking for something. Sure. And it's the most ridiculous issue. Ever, I mean, as you know, as comedians, you know, we've we've seen every joke. There's not a night I'm at the comedy cellar where I can't trace premises to other people, right. whether they saw it or not. I mean, there's right. only so many things to talk about and ways to say it, and we all come from the same media culture, and so there's definitely like moments of overlap. I remember Fred Stoller being really mad at me because I did a bit about my phone having a speed dial. You know, you used to have like 10 speed dials on your phone, and so I had some joke, this is like 91, about uh, how I didn't have enough friends to fill my speed dial, and, <laughs> and uh, so it would be like... A, you know, three friends and mom, dad, nine one one four one one operator, <laughs> and it wasn't a great joke. And, and, and so, <laughs> it wasn't a great joke. <laughs> you know, it's a good joke for it's a good joke for ninety one. But my, but I remember Fred Stoller walking up to me and saying, "I have a can't fill my speed dial joke," uh, and and he was furious and. That alone is funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Fred, Fred funny. Fred furious is a much more low energy, uh, but that thing. It definitely, it's impossible to avoid. I, in, a, in a TV room, if you're trying to write a sitcom, I could trace every sitcom episode to something from The Simpsons. Any joke I think any comedian tells or any show says, I can find you that joke on one of the like hundreds of, of Simpsons. So it's very tricky and we're all obsessively trying not to do it. Right. Um, and uh, but there's certainly some parallel thinking. And what I thought was most interesting is Amy has been on TV so much. She's appeared in so many places. I mean, I've watched her. She writes thousands and thousands of jokes. She's one of the great joke writers I've ever seen. And it took them so much searching to find four tiny things that didn't seem like they would connect in any real way to stealing it's so far from stealing it's crazy well i'll say I'll, I'll say when you heard about carlos yeah everyone everybody in the entire community would always say 
Yeah, of course he does it. He steals. He steals. Yeah. He steals. And I and I at first I I didn't see it. I didn't, I don't pay attention to anyone. I'm like no, this guy steals. He steals. He steals. And then finally, years later, it came out. Right. I've never heard that about Amy whatsoever. That was the first yeah. time. And and I gotta say, like I I looked at some of the jokes and I'm like, um, yes, yeah. that's, that's a little vague. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. That's was... a little vague. I've never heard that about Amy at yeah, all. Yeah, you, you get reputation as a comic, and uh, you know, kind of comedians kind of know each other, like you said, long before it, something becomes public. At least comics, whether they would admit it or not, right. talk. Right. right. Or, or you know, what I mean, and it's like I would, I would know it to myself if I ever heard anything like that. You guys that. would have been thinking it way before this Without hit. Obviously, a doubt, uh, yeah, I yeah. think so. I mean, unless all of us I, would just didn't. But how could all of us not see it? Doesn't make any yeah. sense to me. Uh, not with comedians. We're bitchy old ladies. Yeah, well, oh my god! Exactly. You hear about so I, and so. And also having sat in rooms with Amy for years now, and on the set to see how fast her, how fast she is, and how. How inventive! There's that scene in the opening of uh, Trainwreck where the guy takes his pants down and he, and he has a big dick, and we have this on the Blu-ray where she's just making jokes about how big his dick is, and for like an hour, Amy's just riffing. both writing during breaks and riffing so many uh, right. jokes. Uh, I think the one she uses is. Uh, have you ever had sex before, and where is she buried? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's as good a joke as you're doing. Right. Yeah, so I, I've just seen it so up close, and she's just one of the great joke ever, writers of all time. I'm getting a lot of shit lately, by the way. People are saying that I, I'm fucking doing this thing. It's, it's like the, the seven words you shouldn't say on YouTube. <laughs> and people are like, man. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had an issue with that when you're writing your movies where someone will come to you and go, uh, John, yes. you know, this was always, done before? Yes. Always. I mean, I think that's the and process. And it's not frustrating. Because you know, oh my God, I, this is I my this, this is yes. my thing, and now I can't use yeah. it because someone really knows it from this past yes, movie. Yes, we've had to kill things. In fact, in Bridesmaids, there's this whole sequence where they go to Vegas, and Chris and Wig and Annie Mumolo wrote this really funny sequence where they go to a male <laughs> strip club, and uh, it had an amazing joke in it where like they put Chris and Wig on a chair, and the guy's dancing above her and shaking his falls above her and one drop of sweat in slow motion falls <laughs> off of his shorts into her mouth and it was an incredible oh. sequence it was so funny but it was like 20 minutes of the movie in vegas and then she makes out with some guy who turns out to be a college student and and we had hired brie larson to play his girlfriend oh, wow. and then chris and wig was supposed to get in a fist fight with this college girl <laughs> but then the hangover came out and something else in vegas and we just said everybody's in Vegas now. And we just did get him to the Greek in the first half in mm -hmm. Vegas. And so we just cut it all out of the movie and oh. replaced it with the scene on the plane where mm -hmm. they will let her visit first oh, class. Yeah, right, right. It was a um, great scene. Uh, so, yeah, it happens all the time. What a pain. Frustrating, yes. yeah. I fucking had to scrap a movie idea. I was so irritated. What was it, Jimmy? <laughs> it's embarrassing now. Yeah. It's called Apocalypse in a Little Bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's been done. <laughs> We got Stone Cold outside the studio as well. Are you sticking around? With, what's your schedule? You busy I'm here today, until Joe? someone pulls me out, but I think I'm here for a little bit. Okay. Uh, we'll what do you want? Uh, you want to bring in Stone Cold? Do you, do you want like wants to come here? What's that? Do you like wrestling? Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm a friend of Mr. Cena's. Oh, okay. Well, then oh, bring, you bring him in. He was really, really good in train wreck. John Cena killed us. It was a little crazy how funny he was, and he annoying was in some good. way. When like, when you bring in a guy. That's that good. And right. You want to teach him, and then he doesn't need anything. Yeah, it's frustrating when a guy is really good-looking and an alpha and talented yeah. and fun. Right. It's like, oh, fuck. Stone Cold <laughs> Steve Austin. Hello, Steve. Good morning, sir. Good morning, gang. How are you? Fuck, you're in great shape still, Thanks, you dude. son of a bitch. <laughs> I just feel like I just got off the holidays. Me and my stupid buddy, Ted Fowler, were drinking about a half gallon of tequila every day. Really? I think I'm still detoxing off that. No one light a match, I might go up in flames. <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know Judd Apatow? How are you, sir? Hey, man, how are you? Nice to see you. Nice Pleasure. to meet you. Hey, big fan. Thanks, buddy. And Jim Brewer? How are you, Jim, Steve? How are you? That's good, man. How are you? Outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> What's going you know, on with you today? Well, I'm still on Pacific Coast time, so I don't, you know, I'm not a morning person, so yeah. I'm trying to snap out of it. It's not fun. a hard time. Did you just fly in yesterday? Yeah, and everything was great. I slept the whole time, then the pilot woke me up. 
uh, malfunction out there on the wing, crawled out with a pair of pliers between my teeth. <laughs> 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 Fix the engine, probably saved 250 people. Another nice. day at the office, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, so I'm here talking to you guys. Uh, what are you doing in New York? We're talking about the Don't... Broken Skull Challenge. It's the toughest show on television. Yes. Spreading the word, creating a little bit of uh, awareness. A little buzz. Jim, you got to get out there on the Broken Skull Challenge. We'd love to have you. Uh, I'd love to be a part of it. Anything, uh, anything with a camera in front of it, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you out here pushing, Jim? Uh, broken Skull Challenge. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. Forget about my thing. We're just promoting right now. what do I have to do to be part of it? What do I? What yeah, happens? What, but, what, but it's straight. The different names. Judge got love, and you have the Broken Skull. <laughs> Talk about different men. <laughs> we love this, right? Yeah. He's got a Netflix show called Love, which is really good. I saw the first four episodes. And, uh, uh, and it's about relationships and, and just how they develop and, yeah. and break up. Up yeah. and <laughs> I'm a sensitive man. I am too. Hell, I've been through. Don't want to see three divorces. No. Yeah. Have you really? Wow. Love. That's, That's what love will do you. Yeah. Love and broken souls. Your bank account. Three times. <laughs> I'm done. You're done. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, done. I'm, done. Okay, I'm a judge. <laughs> so what happens on the show? I'm fascinated. Yeah. Broken Skull Challenge. Sunday's at eight o'clock. Yeah. By the way, was it CMT is country. CMT country music television. Country music television. Okay. Yep. What kind of challenges are there? Man, there's all kinds of challenges. Yeah. And it's and. Each week we bring uh, eight people out there. You know, we shoot the men out first, and then we shoot the women. And eight people, three rounds of competition. If you win, you go to the next round. If you lose, you go home. You don't get squat. We ain't got no parting gifts. Yeah. If you win, you're the last person standing. The next day, you come back to take on the toughest obstacle course in the world. It's called the Skull Buster. Nice. Call it the Skull Buster because it's designed to whoop a man's ass. Yeah. It will chip away at every different part of your body and make you wish you would have stayed home. So it's absolutely epic. We set the table for these athletes to come out here. And I've got some of the best uh, obstacle course racers in the world, uh, CrossFit people, national champion, amateur wrestlers, MMA people, some pro wrestlers. And uh, man, it's just off, off the wall. Oh, sounds uh, perfect for me. Brutality. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. right up your alley. You're going to do it, Jim? No, I'm not going to do it. Why? Because I can't, there. That's not my world. I know that. I admire people that can do that. I'm, just, I'm not a very athletic. I mean, this. I, I, you look at me and you think, you've, obviously, I do this a lot, but I don't. <laughs> you, you work hard to get that. Exactly. It's a lot of work. Yeah, That's... he's basically saying that I've really spent three years looking like the tub lady in The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, hate, I hate all exercise, and it's not even like... You hate all exercise. exercise. I hate, I find I hate hard counting. To like, I don't even like counting <laughs> in, in the workout. It's not even the physical part. I stopped counting. I just <laughs> pick up a weight, do it a couple times, and when it feels good, just put it down. Yeah. Yeah, or when it gets heavy, put it down. Do you, you still do it all the time, every day? Well, yeah, I'm trying to. Like I said, I'm trying to rub about 15 pounds. I'd put on drinking all that tequila. Over the holidays. Over the holidays. But that's what holidays are for. Yeah, you can't. And you can't do the side challenge? of that. Right. Huh? You, you train like a like a bastard all year to get impeccable shape, and then you blow it over the holidays. Right. Yeah. That's a good question, though. Have you done the challenge? I've created, uh, I've done a few of the challenges in slow motion. Okay. Here's the thing. You know, people, people say, hey, Steve, you were a badass in the world of pro wrestling. Do you do the skull buster? And be like, well, no, you know, the Patriots are out of the uh, playoffs now. But it's not, you'd be like asking Bill Belichick, the greatest coach of all time, arguably. Hey, Bill, are you going to get out there and quarterback the uh, Patriots to a victory? You know, Tom Brady may put him on the sideline. No, he's out there to come up with a game plan right. and, you know, rally the team and try to beat the other team. So basically what I do is coach these guys up. They come up with their own strategy, turn them loose, and you, motivate but them. But you don't some, actually do the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I, I, you're I like ride around, husky. Yeah, but, Jim, oh. I, ro I ride around on a Kawasaki mule right behind him on the scroll <laughs> and yell at him. <laughs> Go faster. <laughs> you're, you're doing great. <laughs> stuff like that. Okay. Encouraging stuff. Someone got lazy in the yeah. last few years. Someone <laughs> yeah. got lazy. It's, it's a great. Would you rather walk down a hill or ride down in a UTV? Fair enough. Right. I'd rather help someone else down. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ever going to wrestle? Are you ever going to wrestle again? I got no business in a wrestling ring. Yeah, I had a good time doing that job. You know, last uh, match I had was in 2003. I got wow. to go it that long ago now. Yeah, it took me about three years to get out of my system because I love that business. That was what I wanted to do with my life. And yeah. boy, I've got three years of uh, hunting, fishing, and drinking and making bad decisions. I figured it's time <laughs> to go out to LA and start doing some uh, work out there. And <laughs> I'm done. I got nothing to prove. What makes guys come back? Like after years of being out of it, you hear about like uh, they say GSP is coming back to MMA. It's like, is it just you can't handle not doing it anymore? You missed the ritual. I've been able to. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it, it took me a while. I still because like when you're in a business pro wrestling, the schedule is such a grind, and you're kind of living uh, three three different lifestyles. One, you're living as a pro athlete because what you do in the ring is hard. Then you're training in the gym, and then you got the rock star part of it because hey man, everybody wants to hang out with you. There's 
everything available. Then on the other hand, you're a truck driver. You're, you're driving yourself. You're flying, catching all these damn uh, vehicles to get to your show. So, man, it takes a lot out of you. That, that's what I find amazing about your your old business, that only a few of you guys got to get on the private planes with the boss, and everyone else had to drive themselves around, carpooling. Mick Foley is a good friend of ours. He tells the stories Mick. where he would fucking sleep on the couch of of fans' houses. Well, you know, Mick used to be he's one of my travel cheap. partners. He's very cheap. Yeah. We yeah. like to save a dollar. We, 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 we like to use the word frugal. Yeah. Frugal. <laughs> but, yeah. Me and Mick were two of the cheapest guys in the history of the business. But I never hissed a ride with any of the fans to go to the show. He did. Mick did, yeah. But he's notorious for that. When he was the one of the biggest stars in, in the WWE, yeah. he would do this. That's why he still has money. And he would sleep on people's couches. Yeah. How, how do you trust someone? He did. Uh, well, I mean, but look at Mick, and, and he's a dear friend of mine. But you're not gonna you're not gonna fuck with Mick. I right. mean, you know, yeah. he's an, he's a sweetheart, but he looks like he's crazy. Yeah, yeah. he's a yeah. yeah. He's right. a problem. I didn't know you were frugal as well. Do what? I didn't know you were frugal. Oh, oh, legendary. Ask Mick. Ask any of the boys. Yeah, man, I know how to save a dollar. Give us one example of being frugal. Besides like, the travel like, like one time, I think it was back in the heyday, and uh, we flew into Vegas. All the boys were staying at the same hotel. I'm, I rented like a like a Geo Metro. It was like a little. St- it was like a bigger version of their hatchback for fifteen dollars a day. I rolled up in front of the hotel in this brown piece of shit, and, it, and I did it as a rail. And the guys were looking at me like, "This, this guy's making a jillion dollars. He's driving that hunk of shit." So it was stuff like that. And back in the day when uh, Kevin Nash and myself were in WCW, we would purposefully go out of our way to stay at the biggest shitholes we could find, <laughs> just as a rib. Right. So just stuff like well, that. Well, you see bed bugs? That's what I, I'm like a prima donna. But this was pre bed bugs. Bed bugs didn't exist back in those days. Jim, oh, kind of okay. like this new thing. That's uh, how all of a sudden they got started. What did, did these bed bugs just start? Yeah, we you don't know, have they're being brought in. Dude, they're, they're, yeah. But yeah. bed bugs have been a phenomenon over what the last ten years they've really caught on. So I, I was in the business before the bed bugs. <laughs> well, a different kind of bed bugs came around. Yeah. Do you spend money or are you are you one of those guys that always panics about it being taken away too? Well, I have found uh, that you know, money does not make you happy because there really is nothing to buy. All I ever buy is books, CDs and DVDs. And I, I can't even think of anything to do with it. Oh, so you're not like a big get, get extravagant shit guy. I know. I bought it. The only thing I ever did that was done with money is when 40 Old Virgin hit, I got a Porsche. I leased nice. a Porsche. I drove it twice, and I got scared of it because it only really drove well if you're driving like 90 miles an hour. <laughs> right. And I left it in my garage for two years. <laughs> and it. I realized, like, oh, that's like the jackass made some money right. move. But it wasn't fun. Although I guess it's, I mean, people enjoy their cars. They do, uh, but, but I, I scared, it scared me. It was like, a, I felt like this is a death machine. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to die in this. this. Uh, yeah. Are you a buyer's remorse guy? Like I, I buy stuff. I, I'm very compulsive. And then I'm like, why did they waste my money on that? I didn't want it. I hoard. Like I buy, I'll go to a bookstore and buy like 20 books at a shot. Uh, it convinces me I'll never die. So I just keep buying just, books and keep buying books. I don't read any of them. Yeah. <laughs> where, where do you live? Do you live in LA or New yeah. York? I live uh, out in Santa Monica and yeah. I, I I actually think that buying books is enough. Like it makes you smarter. Just uh, yeah. Just I, 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 I want you to practice them. And my them. kids notice it. Like Dad, I see all your books. They've never been opened. Right. But if I see something interesting, I'll just I'll just buy it. Books and on, you can't throw them out. It's like keeping them for why books do you on keep tape. Them? Yeah. I'm, I'm all about books on tape uh, recently. But do you I don't listen to them. Yeah, at the, gym, at the gym. I've been trying to get into that, because I'll, I'll get a new book. and Something will intrigue me, <laughs> like the last one is The Death of WCW. And so it's been sitting on my desk for I don't know how long, and I'll see another book. And you know, I'll say, man, i got to get that book. I really want to read that. And, she, and my wife will look at me. She goes, Steve, you brought five books in the last three years, <laughs> yeah. and you ain't read none of them. And so and I was like, no, nah, listen to her. I ain't going to read it. So I've got to try the, the audio books for yeah, something. Yeah, if you're in the gym or something, it makes the time go by a little faster. Yeah, but I like to have some headbanging shit on so I can crack well, that's true, too. That's What's true the last too. book you read? That's a good, good question. Uh, it was something to do with wrestling. wrestling or something. Yeah. yeah. For me, it was probably a biography. Someone we interviewed, I read half. Like, yeah, you read as much as you can as you go along, and then as soon as the interview's done, I'm just, I'm, then you don't read the rest George of the book. George the Animal Steel no, autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I was like, fuck, I'd love to read that. What the uh, Shoemaker's book, David Shoemaker, the, uh, he wrote about, uh, about, about, about a lot of wrestlers dying or something like that. I brought that book with me on this tour, but I was on airplane last night. Yesterday morning, it was like a six-hour flight. Right. I slept the whole way. Do you that, have any well, that's, a, that's a depressing book to read. Yeah. Well, I know. That's why I've had it for like three yeah. years and yeah, haven't yeah. read it yet. You probably know most of the guys in the book. Yeah. 
Why oh, would you I, read that? Oh, I just want to see what his spin on it was. Oh, okay. There's a new documentary about Jake the Snake. Isn't I loved there? it. Yes. I Did you see it? it? I haven't seen it. Is it yeah, great? It was pretty good, man. It was yeah. very good, yeah. Because he was in that other documentary, wasn't he? The one about wrestling that yeah. was like 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, What's what, it called? Beyond well, the Mat. Beyond, Beyond the, the Mat. Oh, Beyond the Mat. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I liked it. They did a pretty good job. They did a good job, and then they based that movie The Wrestler off of it. And then I remember, you know, I was sick, and I went to the theater in Santa Monica. That was the last movie I've seen inside the theater. And uh, just because I was sick and in a gray mood to begin with, I was like, man, that movie sucked. But then after I was able to digest it and watch the way Aronofsky shot it, it was like it did a kick-ass job on that. Mickey Rourke was awesome in that, in that movie. So it was a great movie. But, yes, it was basically loosely right. based on, you know, what Jake's Jake life was on the road, right. but the resurrection, the resurrection of—if you haven't seen it, it's it's awesome. It's a great documentary. Did you Absolutely. have any concussion issues? We've been talking about that so much with with this OJ thing happening, the, all these ball players that the, get fucked up. The CTE, yeah. yeah and I say what the game of football starts to disturb me, you know, now because the game is played out in so much space. I think everybody is, uh, you know, running full speed. It's not like the game used to be. Uh, don't right. get me, don't get me wrong, guys are getting lit up back in the day, you know, playing football. But now more so, and these days when these guys are taking their shots, I mean, they're starting to convulse and get you know get shark eyes and all kinds of crazy stuff me i think maybe only two or three concussions in a ring because i think if you're concussion prone in the business of pro wrestling you're doing something wrong right because you, you should be a flat back landing i got dropped on my head one time that was probably one of them in that bad pile driver incident but no man concussions in wrestling well back in the day when guys were taking all those chair shots and not putting up their hands you know that could that can light you up but by and large I think you're doing something wrong if you got a bunch of uh, concussions in that business. So it's not a major problem. I don't think it is. It's a Someone major else problem. Might tell you there is. It's a major problem in football. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do either. Quit the game. Well, you can make those, they've over-equipped the game. I mean, you get these gladiators, and the guys are all bigger, faster, stronger than they used to yeah. be. And you can make the, the helmet as good as you can, but it's still the no. brain hitting inside the skull, right. stopping, and it is what it is. There's you, no way to stop the brain from no, moving, than moving around speed. in there. Uh, we're being told Judd has to go. Uh, Come on, Judd. Stick around for a while. i got to get on that Broken Skull Challenge. I was trying to get the invite. It's not happening. There's got to be kind of Santa like a Monica, nerdy I'm guy version. I'm going to take the road from you and Marina Del Rey. Yes. Don't, don't think yeah, I'm we can do the you. Broken Sweat Challenge. <laughs> Quick question, though. The HBO show, when's that going to hit? It's uh, called, what is it called again? It's called uh, <laughs> Crashing. Right? Crashing oh, with Crash Pete Holmes. The Pete Holmes uh, yeah, show. Yeah. yeah, we started shooting it in May. And uh, it, it went really great, and the big uh, guest star in the first episode is Artie Lang, right, who right. was unbelievable, like, really funny and a fantastic actor. I don't think he had been acting in about 14 years and just was, killed it. it killed He's it. That's what I heard. Yeah, so, we, so that would be next, probably next oh, so, so, year. Oh, it's a little uh, ways down yeah. the road. And we got a Pee Wee Herman movie in, in yes. March on Netflix, which is also came out great. It's like a big... Pee Wee Herman movie, like what you wish there was another one of, he just made. Oh, and wow. So that's, oh, I'm that's excited about March. that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we got to check that All out. Right, well, thank you for having me. But Love is on uh, Netflix. Like I said, I saw the first four episodes uh, right on. Judd's got another. Is it available now or is it, when's it coming? I don't know. February 19th. Okay. Oh, okay. We got a little yeah. ways And the away. new season of Girls are the same week. Great. I know All you're right. going to watch that. We're going to take you're quick, damn right I am. We're going to take a quick break <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we'll continue with uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stay there. Stone oh, Cold, nice. Steve Austin in studio. Does a fine podcast, by the way. This guy knows how to talk. But I mean, most of the, most of you wrestlers know how to talk. But you're one of the you're one of the elite. You always were on the mic. It was you and uh, The Rock was really good. And uh, who else would I put in? Uh, I put Mick Foley up Mick there. Mick Foley's up there. CM Punk was awesome. CM Punk was awesome. Right. Let's uh, finish out the top five. One more on I mean, you gotta go. If you go back and you watch some old Jerry Lawler stuff, you got to throw he Jerry Lawler great. as a talent when he was wrestling. And, you know, as a commentator now that he's gone back to some of his heel ways on the SmackDown show. Yeah. Did you ever, when you, was, when you were doing one of those, did you ever just totally bomb? Like, oh, boy, this is falling apart. The wheels are coming off immediately. Yes, when you first start and they yeah. stick a microphone in your face and, like, you don't really know who and what your character is or, you know, your persona. <laughs> and you're green. You know, it'll be like doing a stand-up thing when you're green. And he's like, oh, man, I'm shit in the bed here so you know but you gotta have you, you gotta get to the plate and take some swings because sure. that's the only way you get experience and and they want to script everything these days but i'll tell you what there's there's no better way to learn than going out there and falling on your face a couple of times and then it's like hey well 
Th you got to give us one. Do you remember one or one line that you worked on and you're like, I know this is fucking going to kill and it just fucking <laughs> laid an egg? <laughs> no, I remember one time I came late late to a show. We were doing a Monday Night Raw and I had a uh, pre-tape interview. No, it was a live interview in a hallway with Vince. And I got turned around, and I was always an early bird. I'm a time fanatic. I'm never late. And so all of a sudden, we go into this promo, and I get lost, and I cut, I, I drop an F bomb. <laughs> and assuming that, that's taboo. I can drop sure. a lot of language on TV, but that's one of the ones you stay away from. But Vince jumped right in because he's such a pro and picked me up. And so I can't exactly remember the promo, but it was just like dead dog tired from being on the road. I was late, frustrated, didn't know what we was talking about, and there was Vince to pick me up. That's what was great. your go-to? Would you have a go-to? Like, if, if, if things aren't going well, like the stand-ups, you have, like, a certain thing you'll go to or a certain technique to get out of it. Was there a, a go-to thing when you're like, this is going poorly, I know i got to do this now? No, because I no, because I was always listening to the crowd. And, and, you know, man, if you're not listening to the crowd, man, you're, miss, you're missing out on everything. Yeah. So if they're tuned in and if I can get them uh People always say, man, Steve, we wish you wouldn't have uh, never invented the what chant. Well, if you speak at a cadence and don't put the pause in there for, to give them the what, they can't do it. So, you know, if, if I got lost or things weren't on track, if I just started pausing, they'd come with that what, that would work off that, start naming off a bunch of liquor. Or, you know, give them the old razzmatazz that way. Right. But always, it was always listening to the crowd, knowing, knowing where I had them. But I, I always had material. You did. You know but I mean, and, and it wasn't because I went out there with it. I just make it up on the fly. I'm fascinated with how wrestling is able to keep the stories going and constantly change. It's it's like like days of our lives. Like these things, they happen every day. There's so much work and so many storylines, and they, they, you just keep managing to branch off, to branch I, off, to branch off, to create new characters. It's amazing, like the longevity and just how I, much they can they I, can do. I well, just I, I'll get. No, no, just just with social media and the way everything is sped up so fa so fast these days, it's hard to get a slow burn on everything and to get these long lasting angles that can last you know more than just from pa from pay per view to pay per view, and then that three hour you know raw. I mean that's such a long period of time to do one show of live television. That's hard. And is there a head writer that works on most of these guys now, or, or yeah. does each event have different people? There, there was. I mean, and they cycle those guys in and out. And it always seems like they draw uh, from people that come from, uh, like, like a, a comedy background. And I'm like, man, this ain't funny. If, yeah. if we're trying to draw money, it ain't funny. So it should be some serious shit. But nonetheless, I'm not real up to speed with the writing staff, but they have a bunch of them. And back in the day... I remember stories when Vince and Pat Patterson would be at uh, Vince's mansion in Greenwich by the swimming pool, and, you know, they always wrote everything in a pencil because you could erase things that, you know, guys dropped out or something happened or, no, let's change this. So it was a pencil and a pad. And they booked the territory. So in, in booking the territory, you'd write TV, but it would be matches, promos, and everybody else would fill in the blanks. These days, they fill in the blanks for everybody, and it's it's very produced. Right. And it's it's it's... The, the level of spontaneity is not what it used to be. I, I agree with you. That's when I started tapping out, when you guys started retiring. The spontaneity you guys had was incredible. You knew you were, you were just making a, a whole chunks of, of your, your mic time up on the spot. And it's interesting because, you know, when Vince would go out there and, me, and we were feuding, or if it was myself and The Rock, who were just were great chemistry in the ring, or Bret Hart, hey, man, he'd go out there and say something and be like, if I'm having a conversation with Jim, hey, based on what I tell you and we're building a match and I run you down, I'm going to give you props and it's going to be in business yeah. you're just going to listen to what i say and give it right back to me that only makes sense right right because that's what we're doing here mm -hmm. same thing with the promo you're trying to build a match and you spend off what each other's saying so so these days with too much memorization going on it's that like it up. You, you, you see in the eyes it's like okay I, I think i'm getting all my lines in that that's not selling tickets. You got to feel that shit. Right. You can't say it. But it's also hard to find those type of guys that could do that. But you know, true. But if you go out there through, you know, sink or swim, once you fall a few times, you learn to pick your ass up. Well, you're survival out, yeah. of the fittest. Right. So what would you do if you were doing it back and forth with some guy and you he was awful? I'm sure you had those too, where you were so much better. Would you try to pick that guy up, or were there times where there's like I can not help this guy? He's horrible. Uh, yeah, there is a time if you but, like but him. You can always make chicken salad out of chicken shit. <laughs> <laughs> you always can. You, you know. But I'd rather hear about the other side where you just didn't like the guy and he's and he's fucking you know he's failing basically and you just let him die in front of everybody. I no, know you guys did that from time to time. No. Don't tell me you did it. No, man, but it, you, you want to pick the guy up, and then it, if you got to take the most, the, the biggest part of the promo, then you do. Yeah. But and they try to 
put steps in pro in, in place so that that does not happen. All right. Uh, you know where you're not going to just – it's going to be 90% you and 10% them if they're not yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the last time I went out there, I was just going to do a podcast. I think I was there to uh, interview Brock Lesnar. And they said, well, hey, all of a sudden, they got a text message. We want you to open the show. And they can say, can you – are you ready for all? Give me a hell yeah. Are you ready for WrestleMania? Give me a hell yeah. Uh, 32. All right, I got Brock Lesnar coming up later, and now it's my pleasure to introduce The Undertaker. I'm like, and they wrote me a script for that. And I'm thinking, it's four fucking lines, you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, I, you know, I said my four lines and went backstage. It was kind of anticlimactic. You go out there, you get this gigantic pop, and then you got to spit out four generic lines. And, hey, I could have went 20 minutes with that. Why didn't you just do it? I, because you got these young kids back in the, in the back, and it's oh, all you don't want to give up their time. Yeah, gotcha. man, it's their time. Hey, uh, have you talked to Bret Hart? You mentioned him in there. He's he's fighting cancer, man. Prostate. Yeah, I just heard oh, about wow, that. He? Prostate cancer. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I gave uh, Bret a call yesterday and left a message, and then then he called me back and left a message. So yeah, I have been in touch with him, and I wish him all the best. I, I love that guy, and I got so much respect for him. He truly is one of the best ever, and an absolute artist in the ring, and. I hold him in very high regard, and he's a very dear friend. Do they it, find? Do they? Do they know if it was something that he caught earlier? Or they? They're not saying. I don't know. I haven't heard this. This, this kind of just hit yesterday, got, right? Yeah. Um, Scary. Bret, one of the greatest uh, moments ever in wrestling was Bret Hart and uh, Vince McMahon. Um, mm. That I when the, when he he fucking knocked out uh, Vince McMahon yeah. and he yeah, walks out of the locker that, room all all woozy. Well, before that, that was on a screw job, but just that one time when he pushed him on his ass. Yeah. And he said, everybody in that goddamn dressing room knows I'm the best there is. I mean, that's when it's like, holy, this this is real. This yeah. is a shoot. And so, like, everybody's eyes in the back were, like, this big. And that's when you, and the people buy in. Right. Because it's, I mean, it was a work, but it was real. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, but they were talking behind closed doors, and Vince oh, comes yeah. out all groggy because oh, Bret Hart gave yeah. him a shot. Well, yeah, I mean, it was a Montreal screw job, and, you know, hey, but it, to his credit, Vince went in there because he was going to settle it man to man with him. Brett didn't want to drop that title, and he was mad. So I mean, Vince basically, you know, let him have that shot. Right. So props to Vince for taking the taking shot. A shot. Yeah. And, and they he really... didn't get rid of him after that, did he? No. Well, I mean, no, because I mean that's when he went down south. But I mean, he he cold cocked his ass. Right. Yeah. He hit him with a shot. Yeah. He, they he lost his title in uh, Canada. Yep. And that and was didn't not, want to. That, it, did he know he had to lose it, or was it a surprise that they flipped it on well, during the match? Oh, yeah, it was a surprise. You know, oh. they, they, yeah, it was a screw job. Uh, Sean put uh, Brett in his own finishing move, and the referee signaled for the, hey, that's it, he, he tapped out, but he didn't tap out. Right. And, boy, that's when Brett started going ballistic, throwing the monitors down, spitting Vince's eye. And he, he was mad. And I can understand him being mad. He got screwed. He gave everyone great TV, though. Oh, of course. That was amazing TV. But, you he, know, man, not, I tell you what, that, and people think, oh, you know, you, it's a championship belt. It don't mean nothing. It's all fake. Bullshit, man. You take that belt very seriously. Well, see, so one of those things, like, I always wondered, like, like if, if you knew in advance, just don't do it. Like, when actors die in a show, like, I would just refuse to die. <laughs> like, every time they shoot you, like, oh, he's gone, I would just go, like, no, get me to the hospital. And I'd be like, cut, we can't use this fucking asshole. <laughs> I was reading rumors that uh, uh, I always get these stone cold uh, Google alerts and said I was supposed to be in the Expendables and I was like uh, allegedly killed off in the first one when Randy Couture shot me twice, kicked me in a lake of fire. And I'm thinking, first of all, I'm not going to be a number four. Second of all, I mean, like shooting me twice, kicking me in a lake of fire. I mean, that would be like going to the, uh, you know, like maybe a, a emergency room visit. But I, <laughs> no big deal. A couple of third degree burns. <laughs> right. I'm good. Yeah, yeah fine. Yeah. I can come back from this. I'm fine. Yeah. I used to swim in the lake of fire when I was a kid. Yeah. Crazy shit. Hit an urgent care, get some neosporins, some gauze. Bam, I'm back at the house drinking beer. Are, are you uh, following this election? I see we have Donald Trump up on the screen here. What do you think of this whole circus? Yeah, man, I thought. I mean, was... a not just Donald Trump. I mean, the whole fucking thing is a circus. Oh, uh, dude, well, that's a circus. I, I thought he. I thought he made it. If you want to talk tactics, and I don't really talk a whole lot of politics, but he screwed up when he no showed in in Iowa. I, I agree. So. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I if, you, last if, debate. You, if you're running for president, and all of a sudden you got the the chance to go out there and debate, and you skip. Hey, man, if all of a sudden, and I don't think, uh, I think Megyn Kelly probably rubbed him the wrong way or whatever. That was his big beef. Yeah. And maybe uh, he thought she, he, she was attacking him. Hey, man, if you can't handle Megyn Kelly, who's great at what she does, and all of a sudden you're across the table from a Putin or whoever, they're going to punk you out like nothing. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I thought a lot, a lot of what he said sounded good at the time, but at the end of the day, man, 
he's such a knee-jerk reaction kind of guy. Yeah, you can't say it. And, I, and again, I feel the same way. Like, I would vote for him, but you can't call. She's not fair. Like, even if you're right, just deal with it and make her look right. stupid. And he's been dealing with everybody else. He can't handle her. All right. But, you know, it's just some sort of things. I mean, uh, 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 yeah, a skirt. Yeah, come on. Not alone. <laughs> what, 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 what about the other side? Because uh, what was it? It was tied. Uh, Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders and, and Hillary yeah. were like 50-50. Did anybody win? Hillary ended up uh, okay. by three-tenths of a point. Yeah. Okay, so she may be in indicted uh, by the FBI What's with all the security I don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, come on, that. dude. I mean, Those are the rumors, can buddy. you trust this person to run your country? <laughs> I don't trust any of them. Who's your guy? I don't are you one. saying? No. I don't have one either, really. I think it's hilarious Trump didn't show up. <laughs> I, I think it's the but, funniest but, shit I've ever seen in my but, life. But I think it was I think he messed up. I, I, I do I think his fo like, I don't follow politics, I don't give a shit. Right. So I stand from above. Right. I enjoy watching the circus. It makes me laugh that there's a candidate going, I ain't fucking debating. I'm out. I don't need to do this. And, and then runs his own event. And then run, <laughs> runs his own I'm doing my <laughs> event over time. here. Yeah. And but, at the end he doesn't lose any points. It's just it's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. But Cruz beat him, and I think he would have won had he showed up. And now Cruz beat him. So, but yeah. let's say he'll win It probably would have been uh, a bit closer. Yeah, they say Iowa does. Oh, what do I care? I'm sorry. But I, yeah, know, yeah, I, I know, know you hate it. it. But you, like on the podcast, I, I don't like to talk about politics because it's such a divisive yeah. thing. And so if, if I'm trying to entertain somebody and take uh, a load off their mind for an hour, an hour and right. a half on a podcast, I ain't going to start talking politics because I don't want to split the audience. No politics, no religion. We, yeah, no it's politics. It's a general religion. conversation in life. Well, Johnny Carson politics, was the master no of that. Remember yeah. Johnny Carson? You never knew where he stood politically. He'd make fun of the Republicans. He'd make fun of the Democrats. Right. But he was very subtle about it. He was pretty fair. Right. And uh, to me, that's the way you should be. That's the smart way to be. And I fail at that a lot. But I, I admire guys who are really we, smart about we that. We do try to find the silly shit, you know, yeah. and, and make fun of that and have some laughs over that. Yeah, but Johnny Carson was the king. Oh, he, he was, was the good. best. He was the man. Yeah. He really was great. Like, just, just to be able to have the entire country paying attention to you and, and not split them, like you just said, was, was miraculous. And, and the thing, he would actually, you know, he'd laugh at his... Guest jokes. A lot, a lot of guys won't, won't laugh at their. They put hey, put you put put my shit over, man. I mean, help me. And jo Johnny would play right into that. He had that self-deprecating sense of humor. Mm -hmm. He was just a master, and he was so at ease. And he would just sit there smoking cigarettes as he's interviewing yeah, but, yeah, these guys. Back when smoking was kind of cool, they right? Would but be yeah, drinking on like, set, yeah, drinking, having right. a nice little party. And he would, but he would never try to top the guest. And he usually was, he was saying. faster than yeah. most of them. A lot of these guys, like you're setting up for something, you're going for two lines in a row, and after the first one, they kind of like. <laughs> clunk in and fucking ruin it. Yeah, and a lot of times just, you say something, they'll try to knock it over the park. It's like, hey, man, I'm working on something here. Yeah. And then you just try to you know, try to knock it out of the park. I mean, I wasn't really finished. Yeah. They uh, let me, let me one-up you because I'm the host of the show. Man, right. come on. Yeah, his instincts were amazing. <laughs> watching him do that and watching him laugh and watching him, like, help somebody or just nudge when they needed the nudge. It was, it was perfect to watch. And then you interview people on a podcast or on a radio show, and you're like, oh, yeah, there really is a, a way to do that. Yeah, he was a master. Help. Yeah. A master at it. So what else is going on with you, Stone Cold? Man, uh, shoot, man, I just had another show start on CMT, Redneck Island. It's on Thursday, Thursdays. What is that one? Redneck Island. Island. About Manhattan. We go down oh. to the, we, we go down to Georgia. I got a house on a lake. I got a Kawasaki jet ski. I'm out there for a month. And we bring in 24 people from the south. I like to, to call it like a, a countryfied Olympics. It's kind of like, uh, you know, they go through these challenges, and if you lose these challenges, you get eliminated. It's uh, off to, I think we're in our second episode right now, and on Broken Skull, I think we're going into episode five or six. What, what kind of challenges? Oh, man, just water-related. I mean, they're running off ramps, like this a 200-foot ramp, and sliding off into this lake, and they've got to swim their ass off and get on these canoes and come back. Just crazy stuff, and there's booze everywhere. So, right. like, on one hand, I have, you know, national-caliber athletes at the Broken Skull Challenge, and then on the other end of that, I've got these hell-raising kids from the South, so it's the best of both worlds. They'll do anything, those yeah, kids, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Have, have you ever done any of that noodling? What's that? Where they you, you catch the fish? What is it? Oh, the, man, the catfish? See, what is it? The uh, yeah, what, like catfish. Of, is it catfish? It's where catfish. You, you put your arm down here, in these here, holes. Here's the and, thing, man. You walk around the riverbank and you're sticking your hand underneath the bank to try to just stick your hand in the mouth of a catfish yeah. and pull him out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, man, dude, there's water moccasins down there. There's all kinds of bullshit <laughs> in there. I have never, ever, in, in all of my days, had the desire to do that. I so no, I've never done it. I don't know how you would do that. 
How would you get? Uh, how how to get? To, They're just to not the afraid. Point, for to get to the point of, where you just yeah, life. You're trusting. There's right. Nothing. I mean, even the catfish going around your fucking arm would freak me out. Here's the what's wrong with that. In the best case scenario, a catfish bites your arm. Right. right. That's what you're looking for. That's the best thing that could happen to you in that moment is a giant fish grabs your arm with its fucking teeth. That's a terrible scenario. And they don't even really have teeth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got some, uh, they like sandpaper teeth. A little but, bigger, you know, but sandpaper, still, but still. You don't know what the fuck's under these no things. I ain't got no desire to Look at this guy. He doesn't give a fuck. But see, look, there could be a water box that's laying right there to bite his ass. Right. I, I, I don't to understand me, that not, one. I'm not a thrill seeker or no. an adrenaline junkie, and the last thing I'd want to do is be walking around in a bunch of muck. <laughs> and then maybe some other guy was there before him and put some damn beaver trap at the bottom <laughs> of the damn river, and he steps in that. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's bad. 84-pound yeah. uh, catfish. Wait, you're not an adrenaline junkie? Well, that I'm surprised at. No, oh, well, really I mean, got... you know, in, in, in the world of wrestling back in the day, you know, that was a, 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 a kind of adrenaline when your music hits and the crowd goes crazy and you go out to entertain them. But sure. to just go jump off a building and then, then pull a shoot or something like that, yeah, Jim, no, wow. not my cup of tea. Yeah. So when you when you get out of it, what do you do to make up for that lack of uh, you know energy that you were putting out? Well, it took me three years to get over that, so now now I don't even miss it. But but it's it's kind of like you know I, I would imagine like very similar to you going on stage and you crush it with a great set, and then you're kind of high when you come off stage because you know you crushed it. Yeah. And so it takes a little bit of time to come down. Yeah, it, it, it does take a little while after a good set. You're like, fuck, man, I felt so good, and now nothing I'm doing is comparing to that. Right, so you just kind of chill out, let, let it wind down, and wait for the next, right. next one to go. Yeah, I get the pretty girl. She comes back to the room, then my erection fails. I'm like, oh, boy, uh, you know, there's always a letdown. <laughs> E-Rock texted me. He just writes Jericho. Uh, does that mean anything to you? Uh, why would hey, you Chris, just... he's a wrestler. But why would you uh, just write Jericho? Do you have a beef with him or something? No, like, I got a beef with Chris. Man, Chris why would you just write Jericho? Like he wants me to... The to... answer is because E-Rock is stupid. That's that's why he's Does a dumb boy. Does that mean anything boy. to you? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, yeah, I know Chris, and he's back on the uh, the show. But I mean, if he just writes he just Jericho, wrote Jericho. I, I didn't know if there was a question about that, Jericho. Well, that, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. If, you think if you're going to text someone that's live on the radio uh, back? All right, now he's writing for something because now he heard me say that back when you were talking good on the mics. Oh. Yeah, Jericho. Oh, me and Chris uh, yeah, Jericho had some... was a, He was a good one, too. So. Yeah, he's good on a stick. So we had a bunch of uh, good right. back and forth, tossing beers and stuff like that. It's total. You know, you go out there and you get a chance to ad lib with the guy because he's he's very quick on his feet and uh, a fast thinker. So we had a lot of great times with some exchanges on the microphone. Yeah, okay. Where's so, the but, 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 but whoever sent you that text, text more than fucking Jericho. Exactly. Well, it's stupid, Eric. It's Give Eric. us a little direction here. He's a bit. Uh... <laughs> Vague at times. Well, work with me, okay? Yeah, he's Come a on. bit vague at times, and then it gets my attention because I'm wondering if there's a beef or something. No, no beef. Now he's now it's my problem. He goes twenty minutes ago. <laughs> well, I'm, all right. I'm not checking my phone every second either. They're saying you got to go, uh, Stone Cold. I ain't got to go. They're lying. No, you have to be live next door. Oh. Where with Sway? Yeah. yeah. Now I'm boycotting. We're not lying. No. no Somebody no. try to throw me out of his fucking studio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you guys very much. Good seeing you, Steve. So what? Thanks, guys. The plugs, the plugs, real fast. What are the two shows again? Okay, you got a uh, Broken, Broken Sk Skull Challenge, yeah. uh, eight seven Central, five p.m. Pacific. It's the baddest, toughest athletes in the United States of America coming mm -hmm. to my ranch to do battle. Only one can take on the Skull Buster, the toughest obstacle course in the United States of America. The other one is Redneck Island, ten nine Central, uh, twenty four. The rowdiest kids we could round up from. Uh, the South. It's Redneck Island. They party, they drink. I put them through challenges. Melissa Rycroft is my host, and it's an absolutely hoot if you like that kind of television, which I do. All right. Hasta la vista, baby. All right. We'll, we'll see, see you me. next time, man. Thanks, guys. Stone Cold Later. Steve Austin. He rules. And Zach is here. Zach Wilde's yes, outside the studio, man. so now wow, we'll just I continue. Forgot we keep going. I'm going to hit Zach and have him steal chair. He's been dodging me for two years. You guys know each other, right? Good oh, yeah. Absolutely. Good Take care, man. Okay. Nice to meet you. Thank you, bro. Yes, Appreciate we'll see you next time, buddy. Oh, All right, there goes Steve, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Looks like he could still that? fucking oh, wrestle, I wouldn't too. mess with him at all. He rules. Where's Zach Wilde? He was all wound up. I don't know. Well, he's got the Red Bull. That Red Bull is dangerous. Dangerous shit. Is that coming in? Nope, he's in the green room. He's not waiting outside. Well, then why... why... Yeah, we would have kept... Well, actually, those... Well, no, Steve... he had to be He had to be out there. He really did have to go. But, I mean, why do we get this... Why would we, we go get Zach? Him down at 10.30? That's, uh... All right. Well, listen, uh, what, did we figure out the podcast for Jim Brewer? Jim Brewer's podcast. Uh, I told is, you we were stealing it. Wow. We're, we're going to air it, I think, tomorrow night. Thursday night, 8 p.m., Sunday, 9 a.m. Sick. Uh, Sunday, 9 a.m., and it says Monday, 12 a.m. Damn.
Monday, 12 a.m. Monday, 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 That's probably late, Sunday late, night, Monday. That's a shitty time. Yeah, I don't give a nice, that. though. But yeah. definitely Thursday night, 8 o'clock. That's a good time. That's yeah. a hot one. Yep, that's a hot one. Brewers podcasting. Yeah, what, so what happens? You, you do the first episode? I think, I think all that's one episode. They're going to give it a few. I'm finding out. I'm getting all the we'll details. Whatever. Yeah, it doesn't just, matter. We're just throwing this together. We'll, right. we'll figure it out. All right. And we'll organize it better. Awesome. Uh, do we have time to take a break? What is, where is he? What you're out, we you're out of break. They went to go get him in the green room. Yeah, they should have. They, right. We got the rolling text. Zach is here. All right. At that point, you, maybe you start walking him down the hall. He's scheduled for 1030. Yeah, so. or you could just have him come in at the end. They know are you, Those yeah, guys yeah. always know each other. I love when they, uh, yeah. Crossover like that. It's I fun. do too. It's very interesting to see fun. B people who know each other outside of uh, what they're doing. Here, yeah. All right. So I don't know what Ron is doing. There's nothing else we could really start if he's walking down the hall. Well, very quickly, you guys were talking about. The Trump's like sex. There you go. All right. You all right. guys were talking about concussions before. There's a big NFL story that broke that Ken Stabler's. They tested his brain, and he had severe CTE. So it's a, another black eye for the NFL. He's not black. He's not black yeah. eye. Oh, black, black eye. eye. I, I thought you were being racist. I was right no. behind you on that one. Fuck. Yeah. Not a black eye. Black <laughs> eye. When did a Stabler die? When did the snake die? He died in I didn't July. Know he di I actually didn't know he died. Yeah, he died of cancer last night. Oh, July. colon cancer. Can't they test back. that while you're alive or no? Uh, colon cancer? Sure. I, I, have you guys brought up, I mean, the concussions before before he walks in here real quick. Yeah. The whole, like the Oscars with, like, uh, with the blacks? Yeah. What, what's, is there any, are they totally not coming? Like, what's going on? No, there's, I don't think the, the boycott, the people, the actors have mixed feelings about the boycott. I think some people kind of agree with it. Like, you know, it's been a little shitty. Other people are like, look. But is yeah. it an overall thing or just because someone's not nominated this overall, year? Overall, there's no nominees this year or last year for Best Actor or Best Actress. Like, like who should have, though? Is there anyone that, yeah, like, well, legit? I, I thought a couple. I, I thought the, there was a lot of good stuff about Straight Outta Compton. I thought the kid, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Kid from uh, uh, Beasts of No Nation was really good. Right. So you, you might find, I didn't see all the other films, but I'm sure there's a couple of people that could have at least gotten a Best Supporting Actor or right, something. Right, just like some that. type of nod. We had, yeah. no, we had Cuba Gooding Jr. in here yesterday. He said he's gonna, it's going to take a couple generations to balance out, get the, the right people as uh, you know, part of the academy. Wow. That's what, that's what he said. So it's one of those, like, listen, I'm sick and tired of the you-know-what's <laughs> getting in this goddamn, walking up there, hooting and the hollering, playing that hip-hop nonsense every time to win a goddamn reward. That's right. It's like they don't know up. how to act civilized. They're asking for goddamn chicken wings, and I'm tired of it. Zach. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Zach Wilde, oh, what's up? Yeah. You saw oh, man, where? What's up, buddy? Oh, no. Everybody's here in the house. How are you, Zach? What are you doing, brother? How are you, man? Here, my buddy. What's up, Zach? I What's wish I looked guy? like him, man. Huh? I wish I looked like him. I couldn't even try. Oh, you wouldn't. Your kids would leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah, we we can't pull that off. I've just <laughs> never I've just never seen Zach not look cool. I even go I go to PTA meetings like this. That's how we go? Man. Really? Yeah. And then they kick me out. <laughs> no, are, are you, are you no like a really like uh, are you like a really like in, in touch with what's happening, parent? Where you show up and you get involved and yeah, you know, like when we're the kids, you know, J Man and stuff like that. You know, going to UCLA, I just go. Uh, Is okay if you know, Dad, Dad, and the Uncle Jim's come down to the. <laughs> to, can we go down to Shadow Day? <laughs> like that. That was when I was like eight, man. <laughs> like, uh, it's okay if we go down. Can we hang out? <laughs> there you go. I don't know who you are, and what are you doing in my house? Uh, you know, they, they, no, they're not down with me. Are they, so they, are they, they think you're cool, or are they embarrassed? Like, oh, it's just my fucking dad, or they're like, they know, kind of understand your, in, uh, your impact. No, they go, he's a lame piece of shit, but he's my father. You know, Wait, so, what, no, but you're about cool. I mean, my kids are cool. Eleven, right? twelve. I mean, no, no, they're well. The Hendrix the is no Hendrix is thirteen. Sabatini, Sabat Page, he's three. So okay. and then you have. Uh, Ray, our daughter, she's the oldest. She's twenty three, and then Jesse, John, Michael, Ozzy's the godfather. Him, he's he's twenty two. Wow! Because that's so, a, I remember when we had. I, I remember you had one around five or six. When yeah, we first, that was Hendrix. That was Hendrix. Then, wow. and he's thirteen now. That's when we did that little the, the yes. skit thing and all that stuff, the crapshoot thing. And Jesse, John, <laughs> Michael, obviously he's named after Ozzy. The, the yes. Little, yeah. Wow. Yeah, with the John Michael and everything like that, and that was a great day at the church that day. You know, what I mean, so it was awesome. <laughs>
<laughs> no, because the whole thing is, you know, being the fine Irish Catholic that I am, you know, I, I was going down and I just go, this is an awesome way to get, you know, people to go, kids to go to church. They go, dude, right. Ozzy was at church the other day. I, dude, Van Halen's coming in next week. <laughs> and then after that, Led Zeppelin will be in next week. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, church is cool. Yeah, yeah I, you know, but, uh, you know, and then, you know, because everybody, but everyone would always ask me, they go, Zach, he goes, how does that work being with Ozzy and being Catholic? I go, well, no, I mean, after, you know, after a couple of satanic rituals before the gig, you know, and then after we do the gig, I mean, it is quite the balancing act, and then you convert back to Catholicism <laughs> after the show. I said, yeah, it's quite the production. It's like, you know, like a, it's, it's something that's like a Liza Minnelli change, you know what I mean? You know, just a, a clothing change. But it's funny, uh, though, people, like, when they see what goes on behind the scenes, it's so, it's so like, yeah, eh, you just, before the gig, you're just eating, you know, drinking tea having whatever. some tea. If you right. see Sabbath before thing, they just have, they're like, oh, there's a cheese platter. Yeah. They're just like gentlemen. But, but it's also a different but, time, too. Like, we're, it's, everyone's growing up now and families so it's you know we can only do so much it's we well, can, you know i mean god bless his soul father lemmy trust me it was still backstage at a motorhead concert it was still exactly the same as it was when he was 27 years old you know what i mean yeah there's so, not a cheese platter backstage at motorhead. <laughs> <laughs> tons along with the jack daniels and everything else that's going along with it you know but uh did you guys spend a lot of time together you and lemmy no actually i mean obviously but you know Father little Saint Lemmy now, but uh, mm. no, on the No More Tears tour, you know, what I mean that's. And, but him and Oz, obviously knew each other from yeah. the seventies. Between I, probably when Lemmy was doing Hawkwind and everything like that, you know, they rolled together. So, uh, but um, no, we'd we'd run into Lem, you know, just having friends would, like run into the bars, like on when it would be like days off or something like that. Motorhead was staying near the same hotel. We'd run into Lemmy in the bar before the guys headed out or whatever. But no, I mean, you know, I look cool. Lemmy was, he just, and you know, the one crazy thing about Lemmy, you know, I mean, first off, nobody has a bad story about him, but Lemmy never got into brawls. Like I'm talking about as far as handling his booze, never brawling with people, never doing dumb shit ever. No, you know what I mean? Like you right. never heard stories about, Whatever, right. whatever, dumbass stuff. You know, right. he was loaded or whatever. You know, what I mean, ever. Right. Ever like, and you know, because let me just be like, if anyone was wasted or whatever, even if they're in, it's like, dude, seriously, amateur night at the Apollo doesn't roll around me. You're like, <laughs> either either handle your booze or just <laughs> leave. <laughs> right. Get out. You know what I mean? Right. Like, were you on the last? Were you on the last motorboat? Yeah, we did the last one with Lemmy, and then we played at Lemmy's uh, his birthday bash. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, for that. That's so, right. you know, we did the, the Zach Sabbath thing, you know what I mean? We had, you know, Father Roth, Do you Father Matt playing the drums. Yeah, we did Fairies Wear Boots. We did Little Wing because Lemmy Doug Hendricks and stuff like that. So we did Little Wing and everything like that. But uh, I, uh, I laughed at the, mo the, the Motorhead. I, it, I've seen them before, but to see them on the boat, to me, was one of the coolest things ever because I, I it, it felt like I was in the 70s. But yeah. the funniest thing I saw was... You know, if the set started at 8 o'clock, Lemmy would start, hey, we fucking motorhead, we play rock and roll. Yeah. And then the guitarist would come in and he'd be like, hey, man, you know, everyone have a great fucking boat. And Lemmy would go, all right, that's enough. <laughs> and just start the next song. He, he cut him off like two or three times. I was howling in the back, and I didn't know if it was a shtick, but... He, he seemed generally like, hey, hey, is everyone make sure you're good? And Lemmy, every single time, would stare at him go, right, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the best. Yeah, the, the, M, the MC's just coming up going, well, listen, everyone make sure that you go out and buy those pamphlets that are out front because, it, you know, it, it talks about rock and roll awareness. And I'll shut the fuck up. You know, I mean, it's just like, as you talk about that, I remember, you know, the rock and roll awareness, I remember. I remember Vince Neal, uh, God bless his old father Castillo over there. I remember Randy when we were actually we were doing no more tears. It's just like, I guess Vince Neal was doing a thing for uh, Rockers Against Drugs, right? Yeah, that's right. Rockers Against Drugs. He goes, hey, this is Vince Neal, Motley Crue, and you know. I still party, but I party clean or whatever. And then he takes <laughs> off on his motorcycle and says, Rockers Against Drugs. And we had to get to where I'm pretty ready to drink a beer. Randy's like, he goes, Rockers Against Drugs. He goes, that's like Christians Against Christ. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's just like, dude, that's the best, man. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yes. I think now I party clean. Like, what? Is there a cookie puss after scary? <laughs> like an ice cream party? Like a party you have for your kids, you know? I mean, that's how I party now. How 
are you doing it? Because you seem to be doing well. Well, you know, I haven't had a cocktail in probably seven years now, but I mean, I, it does not stop me from the glue and the paint chips, man. <laughs> <laughs> and the results are the same. I wake up in the morning with my pants around my ankles, and you know, you guys could go, Zach, last night was friggin' awesome, dude. I'm telling you, man. I, but I have no recollection of anything. And, I, and I still can't feel my legs. <laughs> so, but I mean, but hey, I'm happy. That's all that matters. You don't miss it now? No, just I, I, no, just, you know, I mean, put it this way, when the doctor, you know, he was just like, Zach, look, this is when I was 42, he just goes, look, you, well, he goes, I don't mean to be like Debbie Downer over here or anything like that, he goes, but, uh, Zach, he goes, I mean, the side of the blood clots, I go, well, what happens if I keep drinking, he goes, well, if you drink the way you tell me you drink with the fellas, you know, a case, a half a day or two cases or whatever, and... Whatever, if you guys are going to go berserk in a bottle of Crown Royal or whatever, you know, between you goofballs, he goes, Zach, he goes, I mean, the blood thinners make your blood thin. And he goes, and then you're going to throw alcohol, which is a blood thinner as well, on top of it. He goes, dude, he goes, put it this way, I hope the hooters you go on Monday Night Football is like a good hooters because he goes, you'll be pissing out blood out of your ass, Jesus. your dick, your eyeballs. I mean, you'll just, you'll just be bleeding out. He goes, so, and that's just, you know, make sure it's a good hooters. But he goes, uh, he goes, but yeah, but we've been doing your liver count, your pancreas count. He goes, Zach, he goes, I'm not telling you you're going to die next week or you're going to die a year from now or two years. He goes, this one I was 42. He just goes, but I'm telling you right now, before you're 45, you'll definitely have to have a liver transplant. And then he goes, and then the pancreas thing behind door number two, he goes, guys, either die on the table, Zach, or four days later they can say goodbye to everybody. Or door number three, you could just, as you're looking at me right now, you could just quit drinking and walk out of here and you can continue listening to your Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath records and fist your prostate while you're listening to them and oh yeah and hang out with your family and your dogs and all that other good crap you like doing. And I said, Well I definitely dig Zeppelin and Sabbath and I <laughs> definitely dig fisting my prostate. <laughs> and I like hanging out with my family and the dogs. I go, Yeah, I guess I guess door number three ain't too bad. I got to go fist my ass now. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, so I, you know, I just went on a steady diet of fisting, and you know, how hard was it? Ends up at no, first. Nothing. You just you, stopped, well, he needs to your ass. <laughs> I got to fist my ass. It's just I went right, right well, to made, it, right you there. You make it sound easy, but for yeah. a lot of people, it's not. Oh. it's not one of those. I, j I just stopped. You, you got it, dude. I mean, no, I mean, it, it is what it is. If yeah. I'm gonna get you ready for, I'm, I'm your agent. I got you ready for this movie, and you got to have ripped Bruce Lee abs. Nice. And you get no, but you got five months to do it. Yeah. Then you just stop eating the junk food and everything, and then right after the movie, then I'll I'll order you 15 pizzas, and you know we'll go to White Castle, and you can order you know 500 burgers. I you know, but I mean, but just at least have a set of balls, dude, and just you know you got a job to do, do it. Right. So for you, it's basically, hey, I had to, so I did. Yeah, well, yeah. What what more is to be told? But I mean, you have to uh, you have to surround yourself anywhere. Like anyone come they, and yeah, help everybody out. Everybody goes like this. They go, well, Zach, you're going to surround yourselves. They were like, well, maybe you just swap out things. You know, replace it with something. You know, like maybe Zach lift weights or something. I go, I already do that. And I go, actually, we'd bring beer to the gym. <laughs> I'm not joking. It just like we'd bring beer and like in between, you know, sets or whatever, we take a swig of. Right. Bex or whatever, whatever bottled beer we brought with us to whatever gym we were, went to when we were on the road. Found a powerhouse, we'd go down there, and then I'd bring a, a gym bag loaded with beer for us. So we'd be drinking, you know, and obviously we keep it on the down low, but I mean, the whole thing is, yeah, we'd be drinking beer in between sets. So, I mean, the whole thing is, no, I'm not going to replace it with, I mean, put it this way, the only thing I've changed my life is the fisting is constantly continued. I was fisting myself while I was drinking, and now I'm not drinking. I'm still fisting the prostate and making sure I'm regular. But, I mean, but the whole thing is, uh, no, I haven't replaced it with anything. I still listen to Zeppelin. I still listen to Sabbath. I still like football. I still like hanging out with my friends. And the guys are just like, well, look at it this way, Zaggy. Bro, it was a good run. 20-plus years. Even more, we figure, since we were 15 years old. Till, you know, till I was 42. And then, like, look at it this way, man. It was a good run. We won a couple Super Bowls. We went to, we went to, we went to 11 Pro Bowls. And look at it. It was a good career. But look at it. We lost a drinking partner. But listen, we gained a designated driver. Asshole, we'll be at the Irish pub. Come pick us up in about maybe six hours. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's the support system I have. So, yeah, it's, it's very, uh, very positive.
Good. Very positive. Good. Yeah. yeah, you look you look uh, good. You look uh, healthy. Yeah. Oh, I felt healthy before too. You no, know no. I mean, so, but it's you didn't just, look good. <laughs> well, well, I just uh, you know, I looked a little more mutant esque, but I mean, you know, I still feel fine. Awesome. But, you yeah, because everybody's like, "Oh, do you feel any different?" I'm like, "No, not really. It just." No, I just don't have. I mean, put it this way: when I never woke up with a hangover. Jesus! Wow! No, I you? just we, I just woke up with a nice glow on from where we were last night. Right? right. See, you know, you see weren't a big puker. Well, if we did puke, I just we'd puke and then continue right on out of our ass and then just keep going like a Viking. I just I'd set yeah. you up with another cocktail, you know, and then just Amazing. go, okay, cool. Yeah, you know, like you'd go, I'd you'd puke right there. I go, you, well, yeah, you done? You'd be like. Yeah, I'm done. I go, what do you want? You're like, that, Zach, get me another crown of ginger. All right, no problem. You know, I, actually, while you were puking, I'd be ordering you another drink. And then we'd just put it there, and you'd, like, wipe your mouth, and you go, better. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? So, oh. no. I mean, that's the way we rolled. I mean, it was oh. just that. But it was I remember the one Ozfest we were doing. I remember Barbara Ann called me up, the Immortal Beloved. She was, uh, so we get word from high command. And she's like, I guess the, the credit card bill and the big drink. You know, the only drinkers were basically maybe the four of us out of the 13 of us rolling, Right. Right. We're the only ones that are the the big boozers. I mean, the rest of the guys is steroids, Viagra, then whatever else they can get their hands on. You know what I mean? So the whole thing is, uh, I was like, she was like, listen, I just got back from seeing the accountant, and the corporate card, it's the berserkers are shut down. I mean, it was it was out of us. We were on double secret probation at that point. You know what I mean? If you don't put a lid on this zoo fraternity of yours, Carmine, you know, I'll have your legs broken. <laughs> you know what I mean? So real, I was like, well, how bad could it be? And she was like, I go, what, 10 grand? And she was like, are you joking? I go, 15 grand. I mean, mind you, we've been out for about 28 days. And I go, 20 grand. And there's dead silence on the other end of the phone from high command. And I just was like, 25? <laughs> 30. I was like, come on. 35? 40? Oh, my God. And it was like $41,000 or something. 41000 Just change. booze. Just booze. Just and but booze. mind you, we, we mind you, there was a couple, you know, Ruth's Chris and Morton's in there that we'd hit, right. and then you know, I mean, that was usually maybe a three thousand dollar night or two thousand dollar night. I'm just saying between the booze, the steaks, and the rest of the wow. fellas, you know, what I mean, but sure. uh, that's a but the whole yeah, but every day pretty much it was a, about almost a twelve hundred, two thousand dollar day. I'm just saying, us pulling up to a liquor store on the Ozfest. Going into the liquor store and coming out with carts of just booze, of just Crown vodka, uh, you know Johnny Walker Blue, whatever the hell is it, you know. And it's just like, and obviously you're getting the good stuff. We're not gonna chintz. We're not getting, you know, we're not getting Schaefer in cans. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, we're we're getting all, you know, all bottled beer and everything like that. But it's just like, uh, but yeah, it was something like forty-one grand in like twenty-eight Jesus. days. Wow. But, uh, Wow. That's yeah, a, it, was, it, was, it was good times. You know what I mean? That's Vikings, good, right? Good times. Good times. Vikings. What's, Vikings. What's the, uh, I know you're promoting uh, Book of Shadows, too. It's coming out April 8th. Anything else besides that? Um, no, well, we got that. Between cleaning the dog run and splitting the atom, which doesn't need to be split, but we decided we're going to do it. But in between all this other crap and doing the laundry and the dishes and everything like that, uh, <laughs> I guess we got... No, I'm good. We're going to be doing uh, the Hendrix Experience Tour. I'm going back out on that again, which is always good. To oh, no. Stone uh, Cold. He and said. Late, late. He's got a problem with Father you. Steve is in the house. This you guy know? has been dodging me for two years. Uh -oh. Why don't you return my phone calls? Well, I was trying to set up Warrior Stone Cold for this WrestleMania coming up, but apparently... That's not going to happen now. Jesus Christ. You owe me a phone call. Now let's continue your interview. <laughs> well, well, hold on. Why have you been trying to get a hold of him? Me and Zach are, all, are really good friends, and he won't return my phone calls for some reason. We got heat. I, haven't, I, haven't, I don't even have the number. you got to give me the number. You, say, you want to stay? You stay. I'll get it. No, i got to go to my next right. Oh, okay. I'm going to a guitar around your head. Take care. Good seeing you, my brother. Yeah, take care. Yeah, uh, so... All right. Hey, get, you know what? Here, I'll get the number. I'll give it to Jim, and Jim can give it to you. Or, or give it to... If Barb's out there, you see anybody, give me the number. Got it. Later. All right. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, aside of that, just, um, you know, getting ready to do the, the Hendrix Experience Tour, and I guess we start in May with, uh, in London with the, you know, because the album comes out April 8th, actually two years since, on the same day as Catacombs of the Black Fat, the last album. So, uh, which I can't believe was already two years, right. but, uh. Yeah, and then we'll then we were out rolling, and then <clears throat> I guess sometime around Christmas we're gonna crank out another Black Label album. 
So we're doing festivals in 2017. So I, we probably pretty much got the next three years mapped out. Wow. What? What? Crazy. The the, the guy who plays guitar in my band coming out is, is on your crew. Do you know Metal Mike? Polish Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, what's Metal Mike doing now? Well, he's he's uh, gonna. Hopefully, he's gonna come out and tour. I, I'm not gonna turn. Well, you gonna be gonna... doing your yes, your gig. Yeah, yes. You have the band and everything. Like I that. finally get the band, all that jazz. Very Took cool. forty years, but well, it's finally pulled it off. Yeah, but you always, you, I mean, you always had the band rolling with you. Yes, and then stop while and then uh, so bringing it back. Bringing it back. Oh, that's good. I had to do it the right way though. I was gonna reach. I was gonna reach every. I was, I was dying you to reach to you, just, dude. Like, I was dying to reach like, you. Stone but... cold, you know. He could just avoid the calls, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you throw that in there as well. That's what I knew. You were like, you were like I'll go to Jimmy. And then uh, <laughs> Jimmy would give it to Frank. Jimmy would go to yeah. Guy. Frank, Frank, Frank three year old. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. 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 No. Exactly. He's not getting the number. I already have. I, it's funny. Zach always texts in all capital letters. It's like, it's, it's, it, you never, I've never, I don't, never don't know it's your text. When I first Plus, because half my buddies are blind now, you know. <laughs> I mean, and they, they, they don't wear glasses, you know. So it's just like, yeah. Well, Make it, it looks like you're them. shouting all the time. I go, no. It's because you're blind right. and you can't read. All my buddies are like, read, and uh, you know, that's with the little text. That's yeah. why I just write it in capitals all the time. Now Smart. you can read it, dude. You know Smart. What, I mean? so, what are you gonna play? Um, this is a song um, that I wrote while uh, me and Barb. Well, some people call it making love. I call it battle <laughs> in the black label love dojo so you know it's all about submission moves and everything like that so and it's about pain which they say brings pleasure but, yeah you know. some, to some of us <laughs> i can't picture you being a big submissive <laughs> uh, well uh, it depends you know i mean when the fisting of the prostate and the fondling of the man root is good and you just submit to the pleasure. Oh, all right. You know what I'm all saying? Right. All right. Zach might like a little something in his hiney. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least I can check and make sure I'm regular. <laughs> yeah, that's all that matters, man. But uh, no, just uh, these are just some tunes off the new record. I guess, you know, with the Book of Shadows thing, everybody always, always asks, you know, when we're rolling, and just like, uh, Zach, you ever going to pump out another one of those things? And I remember... Uh, I, I, once again, I was like 20 years ago. I mean, I mean, you know, when we did that crapshoot thing, that was like... Ten years ago, way Probably longer. Even lo 11, 12 years ago, maybe at least. That's which is insane. That's nuts. How fast time flies. But I mean, uh, well, I was just saying, even when Ozzy talks about certain things, like him or Robert Plant, must go. Nineteen seventy-two really doesn't seem that long ago. Oh gosh. I'm saying for those guys, <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Right. Or, or Ozzy when he's talking about Randy, you know, with St. Rhodes or whatever. Like that's thirty years ago. You know what I mean? It's crazy like, to even wow, think about that. I can't believe it's you know. That long ago, Nuts. yeah, but, you know, but like for Ozzy, just like a doc, it doesn't seem that long ago. I mean, the same thing with my dad when you know he's a World War II vet and everything like that. I remember when my dad was eighty, he was just like, I do not feel eighty years old. You, you know what I mean? He's just like, I can't. You know, it's just like crazy. But to him, like World War II was not that long ago. Right. You know what I mean? To him, my dad used to say the same shit. It's like I can't believe I'm seventy five. He was amazed <laughs> by that. He goes, I don't feel it. Yeah, no, because I mean, I'm just saying. I mean. Physically, you know what I mean, but right. mentally, you know, you feel mentally you feel like he's twenty nine years old. Yeah, so, yeah. You know what I mean. His body's fail, failed him, but his mind was still there. Where, and where, he didn't feel like he was that old. Where was your dad? Oh uh, well, dad passed away. No, he passed away. Actually, when no, but where, where in World War Two? Oh, uh, he was Omaha Beach, man. He was there. Wow. Yeah, D Day, the whole nine oh, yards, shit. man. Yeah, Holy without crap. a doubt. Did he talk about it? A lot of those guys just didn't talk about it at all. Was he comfortable? No, my dad didn't really go into like you know like killing Nazis and the whole nine. You know what Same I mean? I'm mind. just saying that like yeah. I mean, yeah. but he said you know about talking about a bunch of his buddies getting their brains blown out and stuff like yeah. that and legs blown off. But he, he was just like, well, yeah, it was what it was. He said we'd be like getting. He said, he said, when they were jumping into the water and they were going to half of them, he said, dude, we would just take our stuff off and right. just praying that we'd get over, get onto land first off before right. getting shot. Right. And then, screw it, man. I mean, I'll get, I'll get some weapons off of some dead guy when we get, if we make it out of here. You know what I mean? I'm not even worried. About, you know, they just dump yeah, their backpacks that and everything. everything. Yeah, it's just like, dude, I'll get it. I'll get stuff when we get past this. Wow. You know what I mean? So it was just like uh, crazy. Yeah. yeah, but my dad said when when uh, after after that was over, with him going in Auschwitz, he said when well, when they were going in there with the tanks, he said all the roads were white, and they were like, man, what is this with the smokestacks and everything? You know, right near the concentration camps and everything like that. When they were going down there, he said he was just and as obviously the, all the ash from the bodies and everything like that. So, um, but after that, my dad said he goes and they were they were on a plane after that, 
And my dad, you know, he had a hearing aid and he had a uh, steel plate in his leg, right? And shin, because he was under a tank shooting, one of his grenade went off. And obviously all the shrapnel went off and everything like that. My dad said he thought he was dead. You know, he woke up, he was just like, I was a concussion from the grenade. And then all the shrapnel, that's the reason why, he, I mean, he almost lost his leg. And, his, and his, you know, he had the hearing aid, but, which worked well with my mom. Because the whole thing is... He, then he had selective hearing at that point. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear right, either right. whatever you were asking for, you know. But uh, but no, he said one of his, his buddies died with him under the tank when they were shooting and stuff like that. So, uh, but he, they didn't send him home. They just glued him back together and sent him back out again. That's crazy. And then <clears throat> he said uh, when they were flying over to, they were getting stationed in Japan. After that, it, after they, you know, after Germany surrendered in the whole nine yards, and it was over there. Then they were on a plane, getting ready, to, uh, flying over to Japan to get stationed right. over there. And he said all the guys were going, man, when is this thing going to end, man? You know, because they've been over there f over four years or whatever. Sure. And he, dad was just like, then the pilot came back. And he was like, dude, they just dropped some crazy-ass bomb. It's over. You know, they didn't even know the name of the bomb. You know what I mean? That was an atom bomb. They didn't They didn't even know the name of it. You know, because it was uh, nobody. Right, you know, talked, right. You know, it was all top secret stuff. So, But they just said they just dropped some crazy ass bomb. The Japanese surrendered. And those guys, it's amazing when they talk about that stuff. Like, <clears throat> those, those old school guys, they don't. They, they're, they're tough. Just, they, you, yeah, you ask them, like, how was it to watch these people get killed? They're like, ah, that's what it was. Like, they just have a very uh, quick way. That's my just, dad. Yeah. yeah. He'd say, well, they shot at me, so I shot back. I'm like, uh, yeah. Okay. Did, did your dad. Do, did you do a military funeral? Yeah, yeah, like I mean, at that funeral and stuff like that. Yeah, the guys were there and stuff like that. That's but, uh, the thing that beat the shit out of me. Like, yeah. when my dad went, I was fine. I was good. I was fine. Until the military the old, comes in the and flow guys, the flag. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, well, they did, you know, we're oh. all, all veterans. Did, oh. you have, did you have some of the old guys? You see general? you see them show up, and oh, it's just, yeah. it's lights out. You're like, done. Oh, yeah, dude, it's, it's a, oh, the fraternity of the old oh. dude, you know what I mean? For sure, A whole different man. beast. Yeah, when that happens. 80-year-old you know? guys there oh. for your dads. Like, but it's the truth. I mean, with the World War II generation, because they said they've they've seen the most things. No, I mean, you know, from World War II to, you know, the, the first car, to World War II, to uh, man going on the moon, TVs. the space shuttle, That's TVs, right. you know, the, of, of, like, the evolution of everything. life. Yeah, yeah, of exactly. everything. Exactly. Like they, they said they've actually everything. seen the most of mankind. Like, wow, the most design. change, yeah. Yes, they've seen the mo the World War II generation specifically. I've seen the most of mankind changing, you know what I mean, of, of, of historical events. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, all the way down to, you know, World War II, you know, President Kennedy, the whole, you know, like wow, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And then Woodstock, you know, I mean, I'm saying like how everything's changing, you know what I mean? And then all the wars, you know what I mean? Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, I mean, you know. The Blacks. The, the Twin Towers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So terrible. So, so terrible. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the Mets winning a World Series, you know. <laughs> I actually did. You did better than my beloved Yankees this year, man. I did. Good. I had money on that with Jay Diesel. They so, look yeah. good this year, though. I like that. Bird kid that on the no, Yankees. but it says, once again, it all comes down to pitching, man. And health. You stay we, healthy. Do we have to wrap up? Sorry. But, sorry. Well, we but have, without sorry. pitching, we sort of have to wrap you, up. You don't need to show or, up. Or we can uh, replay so a lot like of this stuff. It's like playing in the NFL. So. If you don't have a, a, a top yeah. eight quarterback in the NFL, yeah. you better have either the. 85 Bears defense or the Ravens defense or yeah. it, or when LT was at his in his prime. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Because you're not going to win. Who do you got in the Super Bowl? Well, if we coach Denver, you got to go with pray that Peyton can – I mean, his, his arm strength is gone. No, I'm just saying between throwing short to guys, throwing over guys' heads, and I, you know how accurate he's been forever. Right. So I mean, so to see him like that, it's obviously it's it's not it's like him no, having a hundred and four mile hour fastball. Now he's throwing eighty seven miles an hour. He's not going to get his ending. No, but but the whole, well, put it this ending. way: the the D we know how good the Denver D is, right? But like even if you rush Cam, Ca Captain America can can't. Move. No, but Captain America can't run like Cam. So what I'm just saying is, right? If you rush Cam, obviously he can run. Yes, so can. I'm saying that's the that's the the problem there. And yeah. then but the only thing I'm saying is. Every time Denver gets the ball, I w I w the third down conversions are going to be huge. Huh? I'm just saying, like, hopefully, you know, and just set it up for Peyton where it just easy plays. I'm just saying. they got to slow down the game. Maybe just get John Witten on the team and just say, you know, <laughs> put, him, put him in a different jersey, <laughs> yeah, right, right. have a different name on the back of the jersey, and just right. say it's Frank Anderson that snuck on the team. You know, 
He's not on the roster. You know, I mean, right. we just say he's here, and it's John yeah. Wenton. Because I'm just saying, you know, with Wenton, you just, you know Tony Romo throwing to him, and we have ten guys on him, and he will catch that ball, you know, when, he, when right. you need a third and five or whatever. Right. So what I'm just saying is make those easy, very easy Easy throws and easy plays, and don't make don't make these way downhill. And then he's got to throw in a triple coverage. Where, I mean, I'm just saying, and you got to have a bit of a running game, just a slight running game. But I mean, otherwise, if it's three and out, three and out, three and out, three, it's over. This game could be thirty thirty eight to three by before halftime. Yeah, right? I say twenty seven points. I take Denver, and I'm tw Denver <laughs> twenty seven. That's my prediction. No one will listen to me. I'm, Denver I'm, will win by. I'm calling points. a blowout. Denver's gonna win by twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yes. <laughs> Wait, I know you said you stopped drinking at 19. <laughs> Wait, or maybe you've gotten into my glue and paint chip stash. You know, you know, no, but I mean, I they got to grind it out. They got to slow this fucking game down. But I, the I'm saying if me and you were coaching, right? We can actually we know exactly what we're talking about right now, and I think make the plays as simple as possible, like the, how the Giants played the Buffalo Bills, right? And the Giants held on to the ball for fifth. It's a sixty minute game. The Giants had the ball for fifty nine minutes and eighteen seconds, and still <laughs> yeah, almost yeah. lost right. that game. Pretty much, right? The Father Scott would have kicked that field goal. Pretty much. But the whole thing is this: we can draw it on paper, but we need you guys to execute. Right. It, it's, it's we can draw all the simple plays. But if Peyton's throwing underneath guys, and I mean, put it this way, that Seattle Super Bowl, mm -hmm. after the the safety, that's no big deal. It's it's no big deal because it might have been a you know. I thought the snap count was on. I thought you were yelling a snap count. That's why I snapped it. I it was I couldn't. I didn't hear. Right. You know what I mean. So, but as far as I'm saying, you guys get to the sidelines. We all go. All right, we spotted them two points. Mm -hmm. We get the ball now. We go down, and we score a touchdown. Peace has been restored in the kingdom. We're just, uh, it's no big deal. So it's no, because everyone was like, oh, that was the collapse, right? I go, dude, it's two points, man. And right. we get the ball back. Even if we score a field goal, we're winning 3-2. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I said, but they, you saw Peyton in that game. He was throwing underneath guys, yeah, over yeah. guys. I mean, and w what I'm saying is we've seen him through the years. Yeah. I mean, we all know he's, he's the minute he says he he's done he he goes straight from there to Canton, Ohio. I mean, it's 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 a Hall of Fame career. I mean, right, hands yeah, down. Of course, you're, right. you're witnessing history. Seeing one of the, and not only that, he changed the game. I'm saying with the audibles and everything like that. Wait till this big win. Wait till this big 27 hey, well, point victory. Put it this way. <laughs> put it this way. I see Cam and theirs with this team. If they keep it together, they'll be around the next year and maybe the year after. Oh. So I mean, it would be kind if you know, if it would be great storybook ending if Peyton could squeeze this one out. And just fade into the sunset and just go, good night, ladies and gentlemen, like Elway did. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, like, I'm yeah. done and see you later to a, a Hall of Fame career. Cam is going to get hurt. He's going to pull his eyes. Uh, he's, he's, he's not going to want to. He's a little knee injury, maybe. He'll be fine uh, the day after. And then there's going to be a four touchdown, uh, but there's going to be a point. It's either that. 27 points. It's either that. Are you going 27 or somebody? No. Somebody okay. puts a New York Met. Hat on Cam Newton. <laughs> he, looks, he looks at himself in the mirror, goes into bouts of depression, and doesn't even show up. It, it could happen. We, I, we definitely want to get a song in before yeah, we, we have get to out wrap, of here. We're Unfortunately, actually, we're, we're real. We're late. gonna lose the channel. Um, so yeah, do you want to play something? Because we want to. Uh, you, you well, I mean, we promoted it, so I mean, we yeah, got it. Then I mean, you guys let me come on the show. I mean, we, you know, I would love to hear a song though, for real. Okay, yeah, I can yeah. do it right now. We'll but, squeeze it in. Uh, Book of Shadows two, new solo record out April eighth. Zach Wild. Yes, yeah. Zach Wild. Oh, great God. And uh, that's what probably Cam Newton saying. That's the last thing you're going to take from me, Peyton, is the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. Very um, good. So it's uh, ZachWild.com yes. and ZachWildBLS on Twitter. And uh, Book of Shadows 2 comes out April 8th, which is the uh, second solo record. It's a follow-up, obviously, to the first one, which was 20 years ago. And there's going to be a tour supporting that. When does the uh, the Hendrix uh, tribute start? Oh, that's coming out, I think. Uh, but we're actually doing this... Uh this cruise coming up right now. That's even oh. before the the Hendrix thing. I guess the uh, Axis one. Yeah, right? the Axis cruise, man. So uh, yeah, me and Daryl will be out on that one. Mm. So that'll be cool. I'll be uh, you know going to people's cabins, making meals, <laughs> filming their uh, sessions in the Black Label Love Dojo. I I do that as well on the side. Yeah, the music business isn't what it used to be. You, know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, gotta, you gotta do what you can. But listen, at the end of the day, it's all about the art. Right. But anyway, so yeah, we're, we're doing the Axis cruise. And then after that, then it'll be the Hendrix thing. So, uh, yeah, just work, 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 bro. Okay. So, you know, which, is good. Move. which is good, good, good. And yeah. Stone Cold was promoting uh, his show, which premieres tonight. Uh, 
It's uh, I'll tell you right now. Steve Austin's <laughs> Broken Skull Challenge Sundays at eight on Sundays CMT. at eight, and then Redneck Island uh, Thursday at ten on CMT. Yes. Uh, Judd Apatow uh, was promoting Love. Love, which is now on Netflix, and oh no, it starts February what? Uh, February nineteenth. And uh, Brewer, what are you promoting? Uh, gigs, and now oh, he's got the band the back together. And, that's right, I got the band. We got the guys back, <laughs> and then uh, the Metal and Me podcast is. We're going to start guess. running it on our channel. But uh, the Wilbur Theater this Friday for Jim Brewer. Yeah, yeah. A couple tickets available, maybe. And then the Paramount. If you go to Paramount, I'm filming my first music video at the end of each show. That's pretty cool. Hot rocking. And, and I got uh, Mike Dockin. Louisville, uh, Kentucky this weekend. And then uh, my theater Louisville. tour starts in uh, the week after in Chicago, February 11th. So just go to JimNorton.com for all my shit. Exciting times for Jim Norton. Zach yes. Wild, thank you so fucking much. Hey, guys. Man. Always great seeing you, man. We could talk to you for hours. hours. Sky is a legend. <laughs> Yeah, so we yeah. metal Mike talks. This is my, <laughs> this is my son Steel. Yeah, that's why when every time when I come home from the road, they're like, Uncle Frank, did you bring us anything? <laughs> Uncle Frank, it's Dad, Dad. <laughs> and then not, only that, not only that with Barb, it's just like, oh, Andy, and, Andy, <laughs> that is me. Whatever, just keep going, keep going. <laughs> Fuck, man. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.